Chapter 786. Return Journey, Earth Dragon Beast. The journey on the way here was considered peaceful and at least for now, the journey on the way back was still peaceful. However, what was awaiting him next was the heart of the barren land which ran for tens of millions of li. It was also the most dangerous spot of this journey. On his way here, he had dodged a few large-scaled flying demonic beasts and now that he was heading back, King Shui's cultivation level had gotten an increase. However, it was still insufficient for him to be able to go up against those demonic beasts. The firebird flew low in the valley as countless black spots, there were densely packed and flying in their direction. King Shui knew that they were not something which he could go up against. The valley was very deep. After all, the it was between two tall mountains that had reached up to the clouds. The plant vegetation in the mountains were very messy, filling up the place. There were even a layer of grass and vines, many of which were covered with sharp thorns, on the mountain rocks. The air smelled of a humid grass scent, but it was a nice scent. King Shui looked up to see the countless black-colored flying demonic beasts. There were really too many of these ferocious demonic beasts in nature here. Such barren land was very common across the world of the Nine Continents, and there were also some which were located out of the world of the Nine Continents, such as the west of the Green Cloud Continent, the back of the Wisteria Continent, the immense eastern sea region to the east of the eastern Victory Divine Continent, as well as the boundless southern sea to the south of the southern viewing continent. These were all unknown territories and no one knew how dangerous these places were. After all, no one could even find out how deep the waters in the world of the nine continents were, let alone checking out those unknown regions. Black Feather Rock King Shui tensed up as he looked at the flock of black feather rocks which had covered up a large stretch of the skies. Before such large-scaled demonic beasts, a human's power was very, very small. All along, it has always been humans who were battling against the demonic beasts in the world of the Nine Continents. Where there was people, there were generally no demonic beasts which were exceptionally powerful and the barren land would be the world of the demonic beasts. The black feather rock was a kind of rock-typed demonic beast. It was about 50 meters in size, its body pitch black like ink. It could absorb sunlight to strengthen its cultivation and its attack contained a fire-attributed poison. If it was just one of them, it would be nothing to King Shui. But with such a tremendous number of them, there would be no end to them even if he were to start to kill them. Kang Wuya and the others were no match for the black feather rocks. Ning Ning. Countless sharp cries filled up the sky. Ordinary people would not be able to withstand those cries. After the time taken for half an incense to burn had passed, they flew off. King Shui had wanted to knock a few of them down as he didn't like how arrogant they were appearing to be, but he didn't do it. It might potentially infuriate them and bringing out their violent side. If all of them dashed down to him without a care, it would not be good for him either. The flock of black feather rocks flew off and after taking a look at the surroundings, King Shui then continued flying in the direction of the green cloud continent on the firebird, together with Kang Wuya and the others. When they came across small-sized demonic beast groups, they would simply charge through. The firebird was also considerably strong. Prut! Suddenly a soul-throbbing cry rang out in the valleys before them. Just from its cry alone, King Zun knew that this was a peak martial saint demonic beast. There was then a deep knocking sound, followed by the cry of another demonic beast. It sounded like two demonic beasts of the same kind were fighting each other. King Shui hesitated. He didn't know if he should fly past them. He didn't wish to get involved with such powerful demonic beasts even if he'd be able to get his hands on some good stuff after killing. 
Just as he was about to fly past them, two huge yellow demonic beasts dashed out from the valley. King Shui realized that they were actually two huge earth dragon beasts. King Shui had seen earth dragon beasts that were like them, ahead of their packs. Now that two of them were fighting with each other, it was clear that they were fighting to be the leaders of their packs. This was a battle to the death. There can only be one leader. The two earth dragon beasts were about a hundred meters, with a yellow-orangey color that shone under sunlight. They had huge heads and extremely power bodies. The earth dragon beasts were of the earth elements and were also known as earth dragon beast. Their greatest trait were their powerful defenses and when battling on the ground, their battle prowess would be two times as strong. But why would they fight in the air? With their big bodies, although they still appeared to be a little agile in the air, it was just barely so. Now, both of them were covered in blood. This was a unique way of battling between peak martial saints, relying only on purely physical strength. Furthermore, they were battling in the air. Since both of them were earth dragon beasts, it was still considered fair. The level of these two earth dragon beasts were about at three stars and was considered the weaker beasts amongst martial saint level beasts. If it was in the air, even the firebird would be able to take one of them alone and would definitely be able to kill it. King Shui didn't plan on letting go of the unexpected fortune. He must finish it in the air. If they were on land, there would not just be a large group of earth dragon beasts, but their abilities would also multiply. He didn't have the time to delay either, since the earth dragon beasts on the ground might also dash up while these two escape toward the ground. Another thing that King Shui had the advantage over was that both of these earth dragon beasts were injured and heavily injured at that. King Shui's mind quickly turned and he let the firebird stay here. Cloud mist steps. He called out the diamond gigantic elephant, and with a mighty elephant stomp, stomped toward the other two. At the same time, he also called out for the thunderous beast. Violet lightning strike unleashed. The fiery golden eyes and emperor's key had also reached them before the mighty elephant stomp did. It was because it took a little time to activate the mighty elephant stomp. This little time was enough for King Shui Du complete the other actions. The two earth dragon beasts noticed King Shui very quickly. However, one of them was hit by the violet lightning strike and was unable to move. Although the other was not hit, it was weakened by King Shui to be left with only slight above two stars worth of strength. A pitch black flame wave that had the darkness of dark clouds and yet was terrifying like a hurricane in deep abyss spread out toward the two earth dragon beast. It was the mighty elephant stomp. When the earth dragon beast which had not been struck by the violet lightning strike saw the terrifying mighty elephant stomp, it quickly headed for the ground. After giving it some thought, King Shui chose not to pursue. Just then a loud explosive sound rang out. King Shui then followed to see the earth dragon beast's corpse, which was a horrible sight. The huge explosion had smashed the earth dragon beast's body into pieces, leaving only the core intact. King Shui was thankful for that. If it was any other demonic beast, there would be probably nothing left of it. The mighty elephant stomp had the power of seven stars. Initially, he had wanted to use the earth dragon beast's corpse for refining demon. The chances of getting essence pill from peak martial saint demonic beasts were higher. But now, he could only get a core and some hide. King Shui kept the core and hide and quickly left on the fire bird. The stench of blood was already spreading out and very quickly, other demonic beasts would be attracted over. It was not a safe place to stay. Although the journey was boring, most of the time was spent in the air. However, at night, he would still look for a place to stop for a rest. 
One reason was for King Shui to enter the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal for his cultivation, and another reason was for safety. Demonic beasts who appeared at night tended to be bloodthirsty and vicious. There were many times when he had to dodge from danger and there was also one time when he was surrounded by the demonic beasts and had to forcefully fight his way out. There was also a time where he was pursued for quite a while by a group of demonic beasts. Those were green ants and were only about one foot in size. However, they were extremely venomous and their flying speed were very fast. He had only managed to shake him off after a very long while. Green Cloud Continent was within reach and King Shui was extremely agitated. Although he was nearing Green Cloud City, it would still need to take many days. However, he could now stay in inns. Back in the Green Cloud Continent, King Shui felt that the place was very endearing. Although the weather was very different from that in the southern viewing continent, Green Cloud Continent was where he grew up in and where his family and friends were. They said that one would feel lonely when in a new place as there would be no familiar people and people one cared for. If his family and friends were all in southern viewing continent, in southern sea city, King Shui would also feel that the place was very good. It was just like now, Hundred Miles City was not as endearing as Green Cloud City. The population in the world of the nine continents changed very quickly and the flow was large. These people tended to be those who were developing. Those leaders of an area and clans who were deeply rooted to a place would not move easily. It was because the place was their base, just like how for a huge tree, if its roots were moved, there would be a large possibility that the tree would die. King Village now felt very far away. He should consider if they should go back to spend the new year. King Shui remember that his grandfather had always missed King Village and decided to return once every few years. Happiness Inn. This was a higher-end inn in Chu Central City. This was King Shui's first visit to Chu Central City. In fact, King Shui can't even remember all 81 countries in Green Cloud City, let alone the 81 cities in each country. He felt that there was no need to remember them, as there would be people who would do so. Some coachmen who would travel long distances would be willing to bring you there if you spend some money. Another alternative was to spend money to let them tell you how long the journey was and to travel by yourself asking for more directions when nearer to the destination. Do you guys know that there's been many things happening at the continent's capital recently? When King Shui was having a drink at the Happiness Inn, he could not help but listen to what other people were talking about. Now, the biggest players in continent's capital were Heavenly Palace and King Clan. If there were any major events there, they would probably be after Heavenly Palace or King Clan. King Shui looked toward the person who spoke. It was a man about 35 to 36 years old. He was wearing a grey long-sleeved top, was thin and tall, had bright eyes and gave one the feeling that he was intelligent. Of course many things have been happening. It's the same for this place right? Three days ago, the boar my third aunt was keeping had given birth. Fuck off. I'm referring to big events, not insignificant things like yours. The man from earlier interrupted before the second person finished. Third brother Wu has some new. Another middle-aged man smiled and asked. Uncle Xiang, this time around, I've received the latest news. The intelligent-looking man smiled and said. Aren't you just trying to get yourself a drink? Just say it. I'll pay for the drinks you order today. The middle-aged man smiled and replied. All right, two bottles of Mantura fragrance. The intelligent-looking man smiled and snapped his fingers before saying to the waiter. You can share it now, right? All right, I'll speak. You know Heavenly Palace? The man smiled and asked. Of course. Which cultivator in Green Cloud Continent doesn't? 
the middle-aged man said. Heavenly Palace might be in trouble soon. Chapter 787. It's so nice to be home. Something will most likely happen to the Heavenly Palace. His words shocked the people around him. They curiously looked towards to that man. Even King Shui, Kang Wuya and the rest couldn't help, but to look over there in panic too. All right, stop keeping us in a suspense. If you don't tell us, no wine for you. The middle-aged man said with a smile. Am I not telling you right now? My cousin just came back from the continent's capital last night. He said that a new aristocratic clan has emerged there. Something by the name of Bima aristocrat clan and something may happen soon. They seem like they want to compete with the heavenly palace over the title of number one strength in the green cloud continent. Wu Laosun summarized his story, in fear of not getting any wine. Bima aristocrat clan. Are they very strong? The middle-aged man frowned. I have no idea. My cousin said they are something like a supreme aristocrat clan and have moved here from another continent eight months ago. The slim man who appeared to be somewhat shrewd replied. Could it be this Bima aristocrat clan had no idea how the Zuoshi aristocrat clan died? A middle-aged man named Uncle Xiang asked the other middle-aged man with a frown. I asked my cousin the same question too. But apparently they knew about it, but felt like that is only a rumor. On top of that, they said the Zuoshi aristocrat clan cannot be compared to them. They have already done their investigations on the Heavenly Palace over the past few months and are preparing to challenge the Heavenly Palace within these few days. But they seem to be waiting for something and keep delaying it. Lao Wusan continued. You are saying they only want to challenge the Heavenly Palace, but not forcefully invade the Heavenly Palace, right? The middle-aged man unknitted his eyebrows. If the Heavenly Palace doesn't accept it, then maybe they will use force against them. One of the sons from the Bima aristocrat clan was killed by a woman from the Heavenly Palace. They are going to challenge the Heavenly Palace under the guise of seeking for justice. Wu Laosun explained while he sipped on his wine. He loved the bottle as if it was his life. As long as he had wine, he was willing to share any information. Wu Laosun, you are saying that the Bima aristocrat clan is purposely provoking the heavenly palace and not for that disciple that had been killed. Uncle Xiang asked him. That's what my cousin said. That disciple that had been killed was a lecherous guy. He was brazen enough to harass a woman from the heavenly palace, but he was instead unexpectedly killed by her. Wu Laosun downed another bowl with a single gulp as he explained with a flushed face. King Shui had been holding his breath as he sat there and eavesdropped up to this point before he finally sighed in relief inwardly. The other party shouldn't have made their move yet. Since someone had said that the Zuoshi aristocrat clan was destroyed by him, they'd further consider their move, too, so they would most likely wait until he was back before making any moves. After all, knowing one's own strength and the enemy's is the sure way to victory. Sir King Shui concluded that they wouldn't blindly make their moves. Big clans were more cautious in their way of doing things compared to small clans. That Wu Laosun mentioned earlier that they seemed to be waiting around for something. They must be waiting for him. But even so, King Shui still decided to head back first by himself. Kang Wuya and the rest had flying beasts. Besides, they were at the interior part of the Green Cloud Continent. It was still very safe to travel from here to the continent's capital. On top of that, it wasn't like Kang Wuya and Fei Wuji were inexperienced, so there was no need for him to be worried about them. After sitting for a little longer, King Shui saw that Wu Laosun was already drunk and had fell asleep lying on the table. Since he knew he wouldn't be able to get more information out of him, he'd rather hurry back as soon as possible. 
He rode on the Firebird and flew in the direction of the continent's capital. He put away Firebird when he reached to a high altitude. Nine continent steps. He couldn't use this when there were a lot of people but it was an extremely convenient skill. He was able to forge more than a hundred thousand li ahead within a flash. Then he summoned Firebird and continued forging ahead. It should be the time to enter the realm of Violet Jade Immortal right now. But King Shui wasn't in the mood to do so. When one o'clock at night had just passed, King Shui once again used the nine continent steps. Fortunately Firebird's speed was much faster now compared to before. With it and the nine continent steps, the heavenly palace mountain was already in King Shui's sight at the dawn of the third day. In less than an hour, Firebird had already flown into the sky above the heavenly palace. King Shui breathed a sigh of relief in his heart when he saw no indications of anything happening down there. With him around, to hell with all those nonsense supreme aristocratic clans. If they got annoying, he wouldn't mind destroying them. Many cheered when they saw the gigantic Firebird hovering above them in the sky. It was a happy cheer. King Shui was the patriarch of the heavenly palace and also its pillar of support. He was also the spiritual dependence of many. Nowadays, he was kind of like a god-like existence among the heavenly palace's disciples. It was because of his existence that this place could have such a morale. He waved at the people below, and then flew in the direction of the king residence. The king residence was situated at the peak where the Star Moon Hall was. King Shui landed when he was about to reach there and walked on foot towards the king residence. On his way there, there were endless of people greeting him respectfully. It had been more than a year. The heavenly palace had changed a little. Buildings had shrunk a lot and the amount of houses and pavilions in the vicinity had reduced by a lot too. After all, only less than one-tenth of the population before remained. But he was actually very happy about the current situation. The remaining ones were basically all elites that had a strong and fearless heart. They had their own goals to pursue as well as their own principles. They were also more determined than others so naturally, they were also stronger than those people who had left. Furthermore, the building of those aristocratic clans that had stayed were much more enormous now. Just like the current king clan. Their manor were now way bigger than the one that they had exchanged from the high clan. Very soon enough, he arrived at the entrance of the king residence. King Shui who hadn't returned for a year felt a little excited. After all, he was going to have two more children. He was looking forward to it yet he felt guilty at the same time. With a complicated feeling, King Shui stepped into the king residence. There were four guards by the entrance, but they were just some idle old men who guarded here in the morning, but they were allowed to chat over tea. By night time, they would be replaced by younger people. Besides, this was the heavenly palace. There were already guards on the heavenly palace mountain, the internal guards were just for show. King Shui, Wenren Wushuang who had just came to the front courtyard from the back was startled when she saw King Shui. She greeted him happily before quickly walking over. King Shui smiled as he watched the woman walk towards him. He then immediately pulled her into a tight embrace. Have you missed me? No. Wenren Wushuang laughed happily. Is that true? King Shui smiled as he slid his hands downwards from her delicate waist. Wenren Wushuang blushed and immediately admitted. I missed you. You're not honest at all. King Shui joked. His hands immediately fondled those two perfectly round globes. The indescribably pleasing sensation jolted his mind. You rascal. Someone is coming. Get your hands off. Wenren Wushuang trembled as she quickly said in a soft voice. 
Someone really came after that and she appeared from behind when Ren Wushuang so King Shui was able to clearly spot her. The other person had also clearly seen King Shui caressing Wenren Wushuang's perky rear. This person surprised King Shui greatly. So much that he forgot to retract his hands. It was Dai King. It was actually her. The last time he left, she was still in the central continent. But now she was actually here. Wenren Wushuang pushed King Shui away as she rolled her beautiful eyes at him before looking at Dai King. Dai King instead looked at King Shui with a faint smile on her face before looking at Wenren Wushuang. Sister Wushuang, so you and King Shui are all ready. Sister King, Wenren Wushuang called out embarrassedly. King Shui rubbed his nose in embarrassment, but only saw Dai King looking at him in bewilderment. He thought that she was looking at his face, but it took him a moment to realize that she was actually looking at his hand and his hand was at. She couldn't be thinking that he. You're back. Dai King looked at him with a smile on her face. Her graceful appearance were peerlessly gorgeous. She had some of Dai Chen's extraordinary grace but she was a little more elegant and a little sly. Just like now, King Shui could sense some teasing in her graceful smile. But he still nodded at her with a smile. When have you returned? I arrived just when Shijuang was delivering. Dai King smiled at King Shui. Oh, he he, I'm going to see the child. Staying here would only make the atmosphere more awkward so King Shui quickly said that and fled. Besides, he also really wanted to see his child so he ran towards the rear courtyard. King Shui was dumbfounded the moment he arrived at the rear courtyard. Many of the King clan members were gathered here. Dai Chen, Kang Hai Mingyu, Huoyan Lu Li, Mingyu Gelu, Shi Qingjuang, King King, Luan Luan, King Yi, King Bei. The female members and children of King Clan were basically gathered here. Many of them saw King Shui too. The atmosphere quickly turned lively. King Shui smiled happily. King Shui, King Shui, Big Brother, Daddy. King Shui cheerfully told everyone he was back. He gave King Yi a hug first, then King Bei, King Luan and Yu Chang clung onto him. Hurry and go see the child. King Yi smiled as she pushed King Shui towards Mingyu Gelo and Shi Qingzhuang. Shi Qingzhuang's hands were empty, but Huoyan Lu Li was beside her, with a small baby that was as precious as a crystal in her arms. Shi Qingzhuang was looking at King Shui with a smile. King Shui was startled as he discovered that her smile had lost a trace of that coldness that she used to have in the past. On top of that, it was brimming with the brilliance of a mother. It was a very gorgeous. Mingyu Gelu, who was a few steps away from Huoyan Lu Li was also holding a baby. It was a baby boy that was like a jade sculpture. Her gaze met with King Shui and she showed him a very happy smile. This was the child of King Shui and herself. King Shui knew that Mingyu Gelu had only now truly became part of this clan. Before, she would exclude herself. But now this child had connected her closely with King Shui and the King clan. The rest only looked at them and smiled. King Shui took the little baby into his arms from Huoyan Lu Li first. She wasn't four months old yet. Children of three or four months old couldn't really recognize anyone so they'd let anyone hold them. Although King Zun and King Yin were still very young, many things could happen in the span of one year. All of them walked towards the, the big lounge at the front yard as they chatted and laughed. Everyone seemed very happy. King Shui could still feel a low-spirited atmosphere the moment he entered the room earlier but it seemed like the mood had turned lighter now. He couldn't help but to chuckle when remembered the news he heard at the Happiness Inn. What's the deal about the Bima aristocrat clan? Oh, so you know about it already. 
Huoyan Lu Li exclaimed in shock. Go on, Lu Li. What is it about? King Shui asked Huoyan Lu Li. He still had the baby, whom he had no idea what her name was yet, in his arms with a smile. Chapter 788. Children, the strength of King Clan. King Shui took the baby from Huoyan Lu Li's arms. She was only a little more than three months old. He cradled her very carefully. Her delicate little face was very similar to Shi Qingjuang. She giggled out loud when she saw King Shui. Her laughter was extremely melodious. It was like the voice of a fairy to King Shui. Although it had only been a little over hundred days after she had delivered the baby, a cultivator's body was very strong. Furthermore, the spiritual key of this world was abundant, so her body had already recovered completely. After holding her for a little while more, King Shui passed her back to Shi Qingjuang. He then took the little fellow from Mingyu Gelu's arms. However, the moment King Shui held him in his arms, the little fellow shamelessly peed on him. The few people around started laughing out loud at the scene. God damn it! This brat! How dare he not give me any face! I've just returned and this is the gift he gives me for our first meeting. King Shui laughed as he retrieved two jade pendants. He had already prepared these a long time ago. King Zun and King Yin were given a present when they first met back then, so these two would naturally receive one too. He put them on the two little babies. This jade pendant was like the lock of longevity that carried good fortune. King Shui unintentionally caught Huoyan Lu Li staring at him in a daze when he put the jade pendants on the two little fellows. TL Note A lock of longevity is an ornament shaped like a lock that is worn by a child as a symbol of longevity. Huoyan Lu Li immediately blushed when she saw King Shui looking towards her. She turned her head away awkwardly. He suddenly realized that this foxy lady had become a graceful lady. She was even more charming than she was before. She had been wishing for a child, but her wish had never come true. Let's discuss about the Bima aristocrat clan in a bit. Where are old master and the others? Huoyan Lu Li told King Shui with a smile. They'll be back very soon. I was worried, so I hurried back here first. King Shui passed the little fellow back to Mingyu Gelu with a smile. Have the children been named yet? He asked. Not yet. We were waiting for you to return and give them a name. The little lass there hasn't been named either. Mingyu Gelu answered with a smile. In addition to her dignified and holy face, the motherly expression on her face was extremely breathtaking to King Shui. More than half of her sacredness had been concealed by that crimson mark on her forehead between her brows, but her dignified aura had made it up by a lot. She was unlike Tan Tai Xuan, whose aura and grace alone were enough to make King Shui felt that her sacredness and holiness made her unapproachable. Then he shall be named King Ming. The little girl will be King Yan. Oh right, who is the older one between them? King Shui said after thinking for a moment. Oh, this boy is older than the girl by three days. Mingyu Gelu happily said. King Shui looked towards Shi Qingjuang. She was also smiling happily. Since no one had any objections to their names, the decision was final. King Shui about the Eastern Palace aristocrat clan. Dai Chen walked to King Shui's side and whispered. Even so, everyone around them could hear her clearly. Yi e Jiang looked at King Shui, while the rest were also cautiously looking. King Shui had returned. Dai Chen saw that the expression on his face was very relaxed, so she already had an answer in her heart. She still wished to get a confirmation from King Shui himself though. Ho ho, that issue has been settled, and it went quite well too. The old ancestor should be able to rest in peace now. King Shui chuckled.
Dai Chen was dumbfounded, but she also breathed a sigh of relief in heart. She had stayed at the Heavenly Palace for quite some time. The old ancestor could be considered her senior. During her long stay, she had always been very lonely. She would find this old man to talk from time to time. King Shui glanced at Ye Jiang. She still looked otherworldly as usual. There was a warm smile on her peerlessly beautiful face, yet it was also a smile that would make one feel inferior. No one could tell what troubles she had, but of course he knew that she carried a heavy burden of a blood feud. Even so, he still had no idea what the woman was thinking in her heart at this moment. After hearing about King Shui's return, people had been coming to the rear courtyard. These people were all from the King clan and were direct blood relatives to him. After seeing so many people come, he decided that they might as well move to the big lounge. Looking at the people around him, who were all his next of kin and his most beloved people, King Shui very warm in his heart. He held King Zun and King Yin in his arms, but quickly found that his arms were unable to fit the both of them in. Over the year, the King clan's manor in the Heavenly Palace had expanded quite a lot. Its grandeur and lavishness were quite decent. Although the King clan didn't want it to be this way back, then, they were the green cloud continent's symbol of identity now. After all, they weren't a reclusive aristocratic clan, so they still had to follow certain customs on the surface. King Shui didn't particularly feel anything about it. Even a powerful clan like the Tantai aristocrat clan couldn't escape the secular constraints, much less the king clan. Even so, this wasn't too bad either. Lu Li, tell us what kind of a clan is this Baima aristocrat clan? After King Shui took a seat, King Zun and King Yin came over to him and wouldn't stop pestering him for something delicious. King Shui always kept it in his mind, so he had prepared quite a lot of fragrance fruits as well as some precious roasted meat, fish, or seafood. These were quite similar to the snacks in his previous world, but they were of much higher grade. These were personally prepared by King Shui with the best spices and most impeccable ingredients. King Shui's talent was the special methods in his culinary skills. It wasn't just the two children getting food, he took out a large amount of food and served them on plates for everyone to enjoy. King Shui felt even happier in his heart when he saw how happy they were after eating his food. This was human nature. Many were subconsciously not living for themselves. To put it better, they were influenced by many other people. This made King Shui think of a murderer. A person who lived to kill had no friends and no relatives. There were only two types of people to them, a living person and a dead person. They were cold-blooded. King Shui had thought about a murderer because he felt that they perhaps lacked people who loved them or people whom they loved. Their heart wouldn't be so cold otherwise. If their heart wasn't cold, they wouldn't be murderers. Well, the Baima aristocrat clan is said to have hailed from the central continent since eight months ago. No one really knows which city they're from exactly, but they can be considered a supreme aristocratic clan. That's what people said, so I don't really know if it's true. Three months ago, they came to visit and seemed to be quite well behaved. Elder Ji had politely received them as guests. After they left, he said that they didn't come here with pure intentions, they were probably here to gauge the strength of Heavenly Palace. Huoi and Lu Li laughed as she explained. King Shui had returned, so she no longer needed to worry. I think I heard that one of the Baima aristocrat clan's disciples had been killed. Is that true? King Shui smilingly asked. Luin Luin killed him. That trash from the Baima aristocrat clan had the audacity to act so high up and mighty even after seeing Luin Luin, but he was instead killed by Luin Luin instantly. Huoyan Lu Li huffed. 
Good kill. King Shui laughed. Daddy, Luan Luan called out softly. King Shui saw the worry on Luan Luan's small face. She knew that she might have gotten everyone into trouble. After all, she had been hearing a lot of things lately. They all seemed to be discussing about how the Baima aristocrat clan was a supreme aristocratic clan and the current heavenly palace wouldn't stand a chance against it, or things like that. Everyone had been comforting her, telling her that people like that deserved to be killed and she shouldn't feel guilty or worry about it. But she still couldn't help but to feel that she had caused a big trouble. Luin Luin, it's daddy's fault for not being around. Why don't I bring you to the Baima aristocrat clan to slaughter them all? Who do they think they are to be bullying my daughter? Daddy is back now and will get even with him for you. All right. King Shui patted on Luin Luin's head. The lass was only just half a head shorter than him now and somewhat resembled Yi A Jiang. She also had Yi A Jiang's temperament, and she had already grown into a kingdom toppling beauty. Daddy, Luin Luin latched onto King Shui's arms and smiled happily with tears in her eyes. A father's love was akin to the mountains. Every father was a hero in his daughter's heart. It was like an enormous mountain to them. Although King Shui didn't have a father in this world, he had one in his previous world. He understood it well, so he had been telling himself to play every role in his life well. He had to be a good son to his mother, a man to the women he loved, and a great father to his children. Yi A Jiang silently watched King Shui from one side. She felt very warm in her heart and she was the only one who knew the emotions she felt in her heart. She had thought that she would spend her entire life in the Sky Sword sect, but it seemed like her life was about to change with this man. Regardless of how things would be, she knew that they would still be 10,000 times better compared to before. She had came such a long way without realizing it. She had only realized now that everything she had was closely linked to this man. In other people's eyes, she was even a wife to him. Their daughter had already grown into an adult. All this had taken a form without any of them realizing it. They had known each other for 15 years. Although they didn't interact much, they were very familiar with each other. That subconscious familiarity was an indication of what he had said, they were already closely related. King Shui scanned around to check. Many people's strength had once again improved tremendously. Although a year was like a finger snap to cultivators, especially those above the Xianxian level, sometimes a year could also be life-changing. Over this one year, Dai Chen had attained grade 5 martial saint beginner level from peak grade 4 martial saint. Yi A Jiang, Kang Hai Mingyu and Mingyu Gelu had actually reached grade 2 martial saint from grade 1 martial saint. Their improvements over this one year could be considered amazingly rapid. Or perhaps it was because they had broke through the initial bottleneck, since they were already at peak grade 1 martial saint. It seemed like their innate talents and those medicinal pills were effective. Before King Shui left, he had left quite a lot of medicinal pills for them. Huoyan Lu Li was still a peak martial king, but her strength had been increased by almost a country. Her pace was considered very fast, more so godlike. In the King clan, the people here all seemed to be a little special so their speed of growth could only be considered as decent. King Bei was already a martial king grade 2 now. When King Shui left, he had promised to help her break through to martial king. Now that she had entered the realm of martial king, her strength had been growing steadily. King Shui was a little puzzled when he saw Luin Luin. He initially thought that she would break through to the martial saint level but it seemed like she was still a peak martial king. Although, it could be said that she already had a foot in the martial saint realm. King Shui expanded his senses and smiled. 
It wasn't that easy to break through to Marshall Saint. Besides, people would usually require some sort of special object to break through. It seemed like Luan Luan had no need for that and King Shui was certain that it would be two months at most before this little lass steps into the realm of Martial Saint. She'd be a 20-year-old Martial Saint cultivator. Shi Qingjuang didn't seem to be very fast in her cultivation. She was a Martial King Grade 3 for now. King Shui had decided to give her some special treatment in the future. There was someone who had greatly surprised King Shui. It was Wenren Wushuang. She had only just became a martial king grade 9 when he left, but now she was already a martial saint beginner level. The king clan had gained yet another additional martial saint cultivator. At the same time, King Shui sighed in admiration. The innate talent of the lady on the portrait of beauty was indeed very formidable. The strength of the other disciples in the King clan had also improved by quite a lot, but they weren't as powerful as King Bei. King Hu was now a Xianxian grade 6. King Yu was a peak Xianxian who could step into the realm of martial king any time now. This fellow had been waiting for King Shui to assist him in breaking through. King Hui had been raised to Xianxian grade 7 from Xianxian grade 6. King Z, King Shi. Well it couldn't be helped. The King clan lineage was this way. They never had very spectacular innate talents. King Shui was the reason why they were able to achieve their current results. Lass, let me give you a present. You will definitely like it. King Shui smiled as he retrieved some crimson pellets of the nine-headed moon wolf's core which he had set aside. He remembered that Luan Luan had tamed ten earth-devouring mice when he left. As long as they were fed these powerful crimson pellets, their strength would no doubt advance by leaps and bounds. Luan Luan accepted the porcelain bottle that King Shui had passed to her and looked at him in curiosity. Daddy, this is. There are fifty crimson pellets in there. Let your ten earth, devouring mice ingest up to two pellets, and two pellets for your heavenly fire armored rock bear too. This thing is extremely precious. Save it for your most precious demonic beasts and let them eat only two at most. Go now, and you will know what I mean. King Shui smiled. Luan Luan's eyes lit up. The things that King Shui gave her would naturally never be inferior. For him to say it was good, it would naturally be even better than what he claimed. She happily gave King Shui a hug before she left. Chapter 789, Luin Luin's Great Strength, Alchemy Recipe for Beast Taming Pellet. Brother King Shui, when will I be able to have my own ride? King Yu asking King Shui with a bitter look on his face. King Shui knew that what he was referring to was a flying beast ride or those land-based powerful beast rides. However, he probably yearned for a flying ride more. After all, when making an escape or to be rushing on the way, a flying ride was the best choice. That's right, brother King Shui, King Bei also pouted and asked. After all, Seeing how Luan Luan had so many demonic beasts and rides, they were both very jealous. It was hard not to be, especially when their talents were not comparable to the lass either. The ride must be tamed by yourself. It's said that there are beast taming pellets in the world. Apparently, after taking it, it'll increase the chances for one to be able to tame the beast. It's a pity that I don't have the alchemy recipe. King Shui shrugged and smiled helplessly. Ha ha, brother Shui, if we can get you the alchemy recipe, does this mean that you'll refine the medicinal pill for us and will help us to tame the demonic beast as well? King Bei grinned and asked. Stunned, King Shui nodded and smiled, saying, of course. There, brother Shui, King Bei took out a piece of beast parchment and passed it to King Shui saying, 
King Shui was stunned for a moment before he received it. On one look, it was really the alchemy recipe for the beast-taming pellet. Moreover, it was one that was of a higher grade, too, having increased the chances of taming the beast by two times more. The beast-taming pellets were segregated into third, sixth and ninth grade, each of which had only a small percentage of being able to successfully taming demonic beasts. Usually, if the person's cultivation level was higher than that of the demonic beast, the chances of defeating the demonic beast and taming it would be slightly higher. And when the beast taming pellet was used, it could further increase the chances of success. King Shui slowly looked at the alchemy recipe and the first ingredient was, violent spirit grass. The, violent spirit grass, was a type of precious medicinal herb and could be taken directly. After taking it, it could increase the user's berserk aura by 30% for 15 minutes. During this time, the user's abilities would increase and his aura would also increase by a lot. The increase in aura, especially to the violent aura in the body, it could increase the chances of taming demonic beasts. However, after taking it, it was very damaging to the user's body. Looking at the rest of the medicinal herbs required, although they were also very precious, they were now nothing to King Shui and could be easily found. As for the violent spirit grass, he had gotten his hands on some on his recent trip to southern sea country. It was because King Shui also knew that it was something precious, but its uses were very limited. As of now, King Shui only knew that it could be used for refining the beast taming pellet. There were not many people who would choose to take it directly, since doing so would bring about great harm to one's body. King Shui had found these from the cart holding various medicinal herbs that had been sent to Yi clan. Those had been kept by the Eastern Palace aristocrat clan and thus Yi Guyan made him keep it for his own use. Therefore, he didn't stand on ceremony and took some of them. Out of the medicinal herbs, there was some violent spirit grass. Brother Shui, how is it? Can you refine it? King Bei looked at King Shui and asked, her eyes filled with anticipation. I can. I'll bring you guys to tame demonic beasts in a while. King Shui smiled and said. Oh, that's great. King Bei cried out happily. Every cultivator yearned to have a powerful demonic beast of their own to be their partner in battles. They would also not have to fret and it would also be less troublesome for their travels. There were just too many benefits to having their own demonic beast. Squeak squeak. A clear squeal came from outside. One with an extremely strong penetrating impact. Stunned, King Shui broke into a happier smile. Let's go. Let's go take a look at Luin Luin's demonic beasts. King Bei and the others had long wanted to go, but was afraid that they would disturb Luin Luin and her demonic beasts. Now, with King Shui saying that they could go, all of them naturally followed behind him. Luin Luin was in the King clan's backyard, which had been set aside for cultivation. Other than a large arena, there was only a pavilion and a pond. The rest of the area was empty, but there was a layer of grass that seemed to be specially grown. It was very densely grown and was similar to the lawn from King Shui's previous life. However, this was slightly taller. Luin Luin was standing a distance away, surrounded by ten silvery white earth devouring mice. However, compared to the previous time, they had grown to become two times bigger than before. Now, each of them were two feet long, appearing to be very round with a metallic feel. Their limbs were very short and they were extremely agile. King Shui's hair also stood up when he looked at these earth-devouring mice. To be honest, King Shui also felt that it would be a bit hard for him to deal with these ten little creatures. Before he left, there was one earth-devouring mouse which was already martial saint level, but now, 
it had become a grade 5 martial saint. King Shui was speechless. Luan Luan would need at least one month to become an elementary martial saint, but now, she already had martial saint demonic beasts and there was more than one of them. Amongst the other nine, five of them were now peak grade 4 martial saints, while the remaining four were also grade 4 martial saints. King Shui wasn't the only one who was stunned, even Luan Luan was. Although she wasn't clear how strong the earth-devouring mice were, she knew that they were extremely powerful. With her heart of seven orifices, her spiritual sense was very powerful and she could sense how terrifying these ten earth-devouring mice were. She recalled that King Shui had told her to give the medicinal pill to her most precious demonic beasts. It seemed that they were too precious. Seeing that there were still thirty of them, she took out one without hesitation and fed it to the towering heavenly fire armored rock bear. This was the first powerful demonic beast which King Shui had given to her. King Shui and the other members of King Clan stood a distance away. Dai Chen, Ye Jiang and Wenren Wushuang, who were also martial saints, were also astonished as they stood there stunned on the spot. Earlier, they had felt that this last growth was unbelievably fast, but with King Shui as the first example of fast-paced growth, they could all accept this. However, this last ten plus demonic beasts, even just one of them was stronger than they were. Other than being surprised, they were also very happy. It was just that it was too sudden. Ye Jiang looked at Luin Luin, her heart throbbing once again. Maybe he would really be able to bring her and Luan Luan to the Lion King's Ridge. Ye Jiang knew how powerful it was to have the heart of seven orifices, but also knew that the heaven was jealous of great talents. The deadly flaw for people with the heart of seven orifices was their extremely short lifespans and that they would need to tame a large number of powerful demonic beasts. If there were any mistakes, the person could be put in a fatal situation. Luan Luan has found herself a good father. Ye A Jiang broke into a gratified smile. After taking the pill, not long after, red-colored flames started appearing on the heavenly fire armored rock bear's body, shining into the surroundings with a reddish glow. Its huge body was also gradually growing. Its height was already over 15 meters, but the growth gradually slowed down. So did the rate at which the body was swelling up. Now, the fiery red-colored skin appeared to be tough like rocks. After a short moment, the heavenly fire armored rock bear quieted down. Luin Luin took out another pill and gave it to him. The flames which had just calmed down once again started to burn. Roar. A huge beastly cry rang out. The heavenly fire armored rock bear abruptly shot up to 20 meters, and appeared to be extremely powerful. It was covered in flames, with a great domineering aura. It nicely advanced to be a grade 5 martial saint. Upon seeing King Shui and the others in the distance, Luin Luin let out a few cries before quickly running over to King Shui. Her beautiful face was covered with excitement and blushed from her agitation. Daddy, this pill is so amazing. In the future, these ten earth-devouring mice and the heavenly fire-armored rock bear will be your best partners. With them around, in the future, they'll be able to help you tame higher-level demonic beasts. However, the prerequisite is that you'll also need to level up your cultivation level. King Shui smiled and said, I know, I'll be able to become a martial saint in at most 50 days. Luan Luan smiled and said excitedly to King Shui, My daughter is doing an excellent job. King Shui smiled and stroked Luan Luan's head. King Shui also felt that this was unbelievable. She was only three when he first met her, but now, she had already grown up. The day passed by very quickly and it had already turned dark. 
Everyone had dinner together and it was a very lively and sumptuous meal. Looking at everything here, King Shui really felt very satisfied with what he had. The children went to sleep very early and thus Kang Hai Mingyu, Shi Qingjuang and Mingyu Gelu returned after dinner. King Shui sent them back. There was no need for him to return to the hall. Dai Chen and Dai King also returned to their rooms. During all this time, they had felt very uneasy. After all, the matter with the Baima aristocrat clan was like a thorn to them. Wenren Wushuang was also tired. In the end, when they left Shi Qingzhuang's room, there was only King Shui and Huan Lu Li left behind. King Shui, I'm heading back to rest as well. I'm so sleepy. I haven't had a good sleep for the past few days. Huoyan Lu Li looked at King Shui and said and then opened the door to her room. All of them stayed here this this great manner. It was very lively and all the rooms along the corridor were where they stayed. Huoyan Lu Li had yet to close the door when King Shui entered in a flash. You rascal! Huoyan Lu Li mumbled, her face turning red. King Shui grinned and closed the door before carrying the charming lady toward the bed. Huoyan Lu Li let out a soft cry and buried her face into King Shui's arms. Her beautiful body was feeling very hot and soon lit up the flames in King Shui. Little demoness, your body is heating up. King Shui blew into Huoyan Lu Li's ears and said, smiling. Wasn't this all because of you? What's because of me? King Shui placed Huoyan Lu Li on the bed, before gradually pressing his body down on those towering peaks and teased. I've missed you. Huoyan Lu Li's long eyes squinted and very quickly, were filled with a layer of mist. Slightly curved, they drew in King Shui's soul. King Shui's hands moved around her body and their bodies met each other in all nakedness. Her pure white skin, her perfect curves and her peaks caused King Shui's blood vessels to expand very quickly. Very quickly, the two of them were overwhelmed by feelings and sounds of ecstasy. King Shui, give me a child. Huoyan Lu Li hugged King Shui tightly, trembling furiously as she said. When it quieted down in the room, it was already late into the night. Huoyan Lu Li entered a deep sleep with a satisfied smile on her face. King Shui planned to get up after lying down for a short while. A Beauty's Bed, A Hero's Tomb, Chapter 790, The Wondrous Use of the Saintly Hands. King Shui woke up early in the morning and walked straight to the backyard. He could sense someone at the backyard even before he had the chance to go outside. The sky had just brightened up slightly. No one in the King residence would be up this early. King Shui woke up much earlier than usual. Huoyan Lu Li was still asleep after he had opened his eyes. When he got closer, he quickly activated his spiritual sense and expanded it towards the backyard. Through his spiritual sense, he could see a woman's form demonstrating her swordplay. It was Wenren Wushuang. It was still barely bright in the morning and the air was filled with the moisture of the morning mist. He stood from a blind spot and watched Wenren Wushuang prancing around in a steady posture. I see, she has been very hard working. King Shui smiled as he continued his observation of the woman practicing diligently. She had an extraordinary talent, but that didn't mean she could neglect her dedication to continue her cultivation for power. When he first met her, she was just a Xianxian martial warrior. At that time, he had thought that being a Xianxian martial warrior was just a dream that seemed practically unreachable. Back then, Yu Donghao was the only Xianxian martial warrior in the Hundred Mile City, albeit a crippled Xianxian martial warrior. Wenren Wushuang was the first person he met whom he had considered a powerful Xianxian martial warrior. When he thought about it now, 
he realized that most of his encounters in life were mostly tied with Wenren Wushuang. The most profound thing in life would be the relationship between two human beings. Fate could bring two people together from being a couple of strangers to two people on intimate terms with each other. Both of them had experienced quite a number of obstacles together. There were definitely moments of sadness as well as moments of happiness throughout their journey. Now it seemed that this was the best ending they could ever ask for. King Shui still remembered quite clearly what he said before he had left for the southern viewing continent. He had told Wenren Wushuang that she was his woman. She agreed and said the same thing to him too. After a while, Wenren Wushuang stopped her swordplay and turned around, catching King Shui looking at her at the far corner. She was stunned for a while, then regained her composure as she walked closer to him. You are up early. Wenren Wushuang blushed when she saw King Shui. She remembered what happened yesterday during their first meeting after he had came back from the southern viewing continent. The man in front of her had become bolder by the minute. Him, even now you are still hard working. King Shui held her by her delicate hands and led her inside the courtyard through the pathway of green grasses. I don't want to be tossed so far away from you," said Wenren Wushuang in a delicate voice. There was a hint of stubbornness in her soft voice. King Shui was quite touched by her words, because he knew exactly what she meant. For a woman to state such a bold statement, she had made clear of her intentions to King Shui, she had decided to follow him wherever he would go. I'm here so you don't have to work so hard. I will always help you in any way I can. King Shui replied with a chuckle. I fear that you will resent me for being a burden and then toss me away one day. Wenren Wushuang let out a soft giggle. Silly woman, am I that feeble to you? King Shui let out a stifled chuckle, speechless at her foolish thoughts. He then gently grabbed both her hands and faced her waiting for her reply. No, you are a good man. Wenren Wushuang allowed King Shui to hold her delicate hands as she gave him a reply. I like how you are now. You have become more relaxed. King Shui was pleased to see that Wenren Wushuang had learned how to relax herself. Ever since her elder sister, Wenren Wagu, had passed away, she had rarely allowed herself a time of peacefulness or to be cheerful. Thanks, I have decided to live better. Elder sister wouldn't want me to become sad for the rest of my life either. King Shui was paying attention to her rosy lips and her snow-white teeth as she continued to speak to him. He glanced at her pink tongue next, unconsciously moving forward to her lips and kissed her. When she saw King Shui moving closer to her, she flustered and lowered her head quickly. She felt his breath closer to her face and before she could think of what to do next, her lips were then locked onto his. The delicate fragrance and the exquisite texture of her lips caused King Shui to embrace her suddenly. Before she could react, King Shui's tongue had extended and slithered into her mouth. King Shui continued to suck on her tongue until she had ran out of breath before releasing her from his embrace. He let out a smile as he looked at the shy woman in front of him. There was an indescribable satisfaction within his heart. He promised himself to give her all the happiness in the world and never let her go for the rest of his life. Wenren Wushuang kept her head lowered even after she was released from his embrace. Her ears were visibly red from her shyness. It was attractive and enthralling. You were very beautiful, teased King Shui as he lifted up Wenren Wushuang's chin. Ah, get over yourself. Don't leer at me like some kind of playboy. Wenren Wushuang gently pushed away King Shui's hand. The subtle red on her face had already faded away. Don't you feel good about it? King Shui looked at Wenren Wushuang with a teasing smile. What do you mean, feel good? 
Wenren Wushuang halted her words when she realized what King Shui was talking about, which caused her to clench her fist together and hit King Shui angrily. Wushuang. What? When she saw an immediate change of serious expression on King Shui's face, Wenren Wushuang gave a quick reply as she waited for him to speak. I want another kiss. Go to hell. Wenren Wushuang shot an angry stare at King Shui before she continued, I'm tired. I'm going back to rest. As she began walking away, she let out a soft giggle and blinked sweetly at King Shui. She was quite flirtatious and attractive, in addition to her elegance, which could enchant any man she desired. After she had left, King Shui began his morning training with the reluctance to part with the lips that he had tasted earlier. Wenren Wushuang had become alone ever since her elder sister had passed away. She had no known blood-related family in this world, but she had gained a family that loved her as much as a blood relative would. After spending so many years in the King Clan, she had considered the members of the King Clan as the most important people in her life. Tai Chi Fist. Back Connecting Fist. After a while, the members of the King Clan began to arrive in a continuous stream. Most of the members who gathered around were of the third generation of the King Clan. The ladies would sometimes practice their martial arts with them, but sometimes they would stay at their own courtyard and practice on their own. Mingyu Gelu was a regular with the members of the King Clan, but lately she had to skip her practice with them because she needed to focus on taking care of her child. After King Shui had finished his morning practice, he glanced over to King Yu and saw him drowned in his own thoughts. But a few moments later, he would continue his practice on the tiger form. King Shui's eyes lit up and saw an opportunity to flash across beside King Yu, who was in the middle of demonstrating his tiger form. When King Shui had shifted towards King Yu, he quickly struck a tiger laceration move at King Yu with a force slightly greater than he could handle. At first, King Yu was shocked by the sudden apparition, but calmed down when he realized that it was actually King Shui himself shifting to his side. King Yu knew quite well of King Shui's good intentions, so when he saw the attack laid unto him, he knew that King Shui was trying to assess his battle techniques or to give him some useful pointers. King Yu infused all his might onto his tiger form without restraint. He knew King Shui would not hurt him, so he decided to counter his attack to the best of his ability without any concern of actually hurting King Shui. Saintly Hands One of King Shui's palm had successfully blocked all of King Yu's attacks while the other had occasionally struck a little bit of his ancient strengthening technique into King Yu's body. The points on the body that he had struck were mostly acupuncture points that he had intended to seal. Chengling Acupoint. Taik Acupoint. King Shui had practically memorized every meridian of the human body to a terrifying level, the flow of each meridian, their behavior, the structure of the nerve branches. So with that knowledge, he continued to penetrate a bit of the key of the ancient strengthening technique with the saintly hands into King Yu's body while slowly blocking some of the unnecessary nerves temporarily. The body was like a river. If the smaller branches had been blocked, the water would gradually be forced to flow towards the main river. Not only would the water level increase, the speed of the water flow would become faster and stronger. This was the theory that King Shui had gone with, hoping to assist King Yu in a breakthrough to the realm of martial king. The members of King Clan had better aptitude for martial arts than common folks, but were still inferior when compared to those of a genius. However, it was barely enough for the King Clan to stand out among other clans, despite having consumed medicinal pills and items that were able to increase their cultivation base by a greater amount. Still, King Shui was content. It would take a few more generations to continuously change the structure of their genes. 
he was able to optimize the structure of the genes for his generation, albeit slowly. Changing entirely would be strictly impossible. King Yu and King Bei were the two lowest graded martial warriors in the King clan. With the help of King Shui's guidance and the consumption of a large amount of medicinal pills, King Bei was able to reach the grade 2 martial king level. King Yu, on the other hand, was a step away from becoming a martial king. Of course, both of them could not be compared with those of a true supreme clan with their current status. A subtle red light gradually enveloped King Yu's complexion. His attack power continued to increase to an extraordinary amount. The other members of King Clan stopped to watch King Shui striking and blocking with King Yu at the same time. It was quite obvious what was happening right now, but they still had a hard time comprehending the sudden situation between two members of King Clan. King Yu, Use all your power to attack me. If you want a breakthrough, you must strive forward. King Shui said calmly without stopping his movements. His words had a magical effect on King Yu. Because in the next moment, King Yu's aura had increased exponentially to a greater level, causing his eyes to glow with a faint red glint. Power was everything in the world of the Nine Continents. There might be a step difference between a peak of Xianxin and an elementary martial king, but the difference was one of heaven and earth, the vast disparity was undeniable. Once a Xianxin warrior was able to break through to the elementary martial king, the treatment and conduct by the public opinion would change significantly. Most importantly, one could become confident and superior due to the increase in power as an elementary martial king thus paving a path towards the next level with hope and aspiration. If a martial warrior ceased to cultivate, then the martial warrior would cease to exist. Shield attack. The key from the ancient strengthening technique had sealed the less critical parts of the body for the time being to allow the power of the meridians to reach the pinnacle, thus allowing the key to attempt the breakthrough of the barrier forcefully. At the same time, King Shui had infused the force of the shield attack with King Yu's power and targeted the impact on the barrier. Failed. The barrier had only been shaken slightly by the force but did not break. But it was a sign of a good start. King Shui had thought that the method would be effective because King Yu had reached the peak of his current cultivation. Only King Shui could perform this method due to the ability of his saintly hands to transform the raw power to some sort of spiritual key, which was a conventional method for people of different elements. Otherwise, if he had used a technique of different element on someone with dissimilar element, it would definitely end up as a failure. Shield attack. Failed. King Shui persisted on using the same method on King Yu. After a period of time when King Yu's power had reached a pinnacle, he would infuse the force of the shield attack with King Yu's power to pierce through the barrier. Despite the succession of failures for the twentieth time, the barrier was beginning to show signs of crumbling after being shaken continuously. The barrier might be able to break successfully after three more attempts. King Yu was drenched in a puddle of sweat after attempting to break the barrier continuously with a bit of effort by King Shui. A cloud of red mist began to form on the surface layer around his body, mixing in with the profuse production of his own sweat. King Yu, try your best to endure it. You will reach a breakthrough soon. If you can endure this, then you will become a martial king warrior. If you can't, you will keep on being a Xianxian martial warrior forever. If you can endure this, then I will bring you to travel around the world of the Nine Continents. Both of King Shui's hands hadn't had a moment of rest since he had started tackling King Yu's meridian points. Just then, King Shui took out three golden needles and inserted them into the area around King Yu's chest. Ah! King Yu let out a loud howl as his body seemed to experience a growth spurt, making him significantly taller. 
King Yu dashed forward and attacked King Shui, who allowed himself to be attacked without the intention to evade or defend himself. At the same time, he performed another shield attack and infused its force into King Yu's body. Pu, a sound much like an exploded watermelon rang out in the air. A faint glow of blue light began to emit from King Yu's body, which signified the starting of the insane absorption of energy that flowed continuously into his body. Chapter 791, Seventh Level of Soul Shake Bell, A Valuable Treasure. Elementary Martial King was ten times stronger than a peak Xianxian Martial Warrior. This was no difference for the promotion of each cultivation stage, Hushan, Xianxian, Martial King and Martial Saint, as a cultivator would always gain ten times the power after breaking through to the next cultivation stage. The benefit was irresistible, but it would be extremely difficult and costly for a cultivator to reach a breakthrough. Ha ha ha! King Yu erupted in laughter after he had been saturated with an abundance of energy from the surroundings. Not only had his wounds completely healed, the increase of his power had made him seem more masculine as well. I have reached a breakthrough, brother King Shui. King Yu's eyes shone with a fire of excitement as well as the display of a modest yet unreserved love between two brothers. King Shui was undeniably happy for King Yu. There was no need for words of gratitude between a family as it would be deemed disrespectful towards each other. The feelings of gratitude should always be kept inside the heart instead. There was a reason why parents would never say words of gratitude towards their children, but would do anything to protect them in dire situations, and why true lovers would die for each other, it was because of love a form of extreme affection that could overpower a person beyond comprehension. The love of a family was priceless. The only one thing King Shui would never sacrifice was the love for his family, which was why he would always cherish each member of the King clan for eternity. Romance and friendship would eventually be on the same level of as family love when they had reached the highest level of affection. Try to stabilize your power in the meantime, don't rush for another boost to your power too quickly. King Shui patted on King Yu's shoulder as he gave advice. King Yu was now half a head taller than King Shui. Both him and King Zi were now the tallest members of the King clan. Okay, I understand. King Yu was almost carried away in a moment of excitement. After a week had passed, Kang Wuya, Fei Wuji and Bai Gui had finally made it back to the Heavenly Palace. They sighed a breath of relief when they saw that the Heavenly Palace had completed its restoration. Having witnessed King Shui's ability to destroy the entire Eastern Palace aristocrat clan, they had no concern about the potential subjugation of the Baima aristocrat clan on the Heavenly Palace. With Fei Wuji's personal matters solved, Elder Ji organized a grand feast in the Heavenly Palace as a celebration of the defeat of the Eastern Palace aristocrat clan. He had also approved a three-day holiday for everyone in the Heavenly Palace as they continued to celebrate with great food and tasty wine, hoping that the late old ancestor would be able to rest in peace with this final closure. Everyone felt cheerful as they celebrated with a gleeful heart. To be honest, King Shui wasn't worried at all. Luin Luin had finally become of great assistance to King Shui, which was what she had aimed to achieve. He could rest assured knowing that he wouldn't be fighting alone in future battles anymore. King Shui could still remember what she said to him after her demonic beasts had a breakthrough. Am I good enough to help daddy now? When she finally had King Shui's approval, Luin Luin hugged him immediately with a happy expression. She kept on saying that King Shui wouldn't have to be very tired most of the time and that he wouldn't have to try extremely hard to protect the whole family by himself. Whenever he thought about that conversion with Luin Luin, he would feel a pang in his heart. All this time, she knew what he had done for his family. 
She couldn't say it even though she could clearly see how much effort he had put on to make himself stronger for everyone's sake. Luin Luin kept those thoughts in her heart, until one day when she had finally become powerful enough to assist her father in the battle, she expressed her feelings to King Shui, hoping to share the burden he had to protect the King clan. Three days had passed by so quickly. The days of calmness would always go by in the blink of an eye. King Shui had been home for more than half a month already, but the Baima aristocrat clan hasn't shown up to look for him. He didn't ponder over it too much as he had been filling his days playing with his children. It was a period of happy and blissful moments. King Shui held King Yan in his arms while Shi Qingjuang played with her as they walked around the heavenly palace mountain together. The little girl's giggles echoed in the air as she continued to do so in a distinctive laugh. King Shui took a glance at his daughter before he looked back at Shi Qingjuang. He still couldn't believe that he had a daughter with a cold woman like her. King Shui recalled the first time he had met her in the King village many years ago. She had a fiery red cavalier uniform underneath the cold exterior of her overwhelming beauty. At that time, King Shui would never have thought that he would end up with her like this one day. What are you thinking about? Smiling all weirdly like that? Asked Shi Qingjuang when she saw a cheeky expression on his face. I was thinking about the first time I met you in the King village. Back then, I didn't think we would have a daughter like this one day. King Shui looked contently at King Yan in his arms before he turned to look at Shi Qingjuang with a smile. Shi Qingjuang was also smiling when she heard those words. She extended her hands and gently rubbed her daughter's cheeks. King Shui was showing a satisfied smile on his face when she turned to look at him. Ever since she had given birth to her daughter, she realized that she was now living a more substantial life than before. Thinking about home, King Shui asked in a casual manner. Shi Qingjuang was stunned by his question. She seemed confused for a while, as if she was waiting for King Shui to continue the conversation. If possible, let's go back to the King village this coming New Year's Day. That way, you can go back and visit your home. King Shui continued. Really? Shi Qingjuang looked at King Shui with a shocked expression. Of course. After things are settled here, we can go back immediately. When has your husband ever lied to you? King Shui chuckled. That's great. King Shui, you are wonderful. Shi Qingjuang showed a joyful smile as she grinned. She had missed her grandfather dearly. If she could go back, then she could finally introduce her daughter to her grandfather formally. When it was already afternoon, King Shui went into the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal straight away. He had no choice but to enter the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal during the day to continue his cultivation. At night, he would be busy as he had planned to spend his time accompanying either Kang Hai Mingyu or Huoyan Lu Li. The realm of the Violet Jade Immortal that used to feel boundless seemed more compact than before. He had gained quite a few demonic beasts and some had even grown larger, occupying the space inside the realm. King Shui now wished that the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal could increase in size as soon as possible so that it wouldn't seem too crowded. Speaking of which, the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal hadn't been upgraded for a very long time after the last breakthrough to the sixth level. King Shui couldn't quite feel the next breakthrough coming up. He would only be able to sense it when the moment of breakthrough had approached. He pondered for a while, knowing that the breakthrough could not be forced. It was best to allow this sort of stuff approach in a natural way. In any case, the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal was of a heaven-defying treasure, or to be precise, the rarest and most valuable treasure he had ever owned. 
He took out the violet soul shake bell that that had already increased by two levels since the last time he took it out to glance at it. Those who took a glimpse at the bell would think that this was a valuable treasure based on the shocking appearance of the color that exuded the aura of utmost pureness. Exquisite and magnificent. Yet King Shui didn't manage to use it once in such a long time even during the time he had clashed with a group of wild demonic beasts. Back then, he decided against using it due to its ineffectiveness over the, the countless demonic beasts. The soul shake bell would not be of any help even if he had used it that time. He continued to temper the soul shake bell every day in the same manner, even to this day. The violet color of the soul shake bell gleamed in an enchanting light that was faint and gentle. After he was done tempering the soul shake bell for the day, the bell suddenly shook in an abnormal manner in King Shui's hand. The violet light enveloped the entire bell, slightly increasing it from the size of a fist to the size of an infant's head. The soul shake bell felt more solid and heavier with added quality to its luster, making it seem like the violet was an embodiment of the bell itself, instead of just a color of the appearance. The soul shake bell had been upgraded. King Shui stared blankly at the soul shake bell that had just increased in size. The appearance of the bell remained the same, except for the minor change in the color as well as the size itself. He didn't expect an upgrade to happen so soon, much less after he had finished tempering it today. King Shui couldn't wait any longer and used the heavenly vision technique to analyze the reformed soul shake bell. The seventh level of the soul shake bell could be used against demonic beasts that were no more than ten in number. The bell would emit a terrifying sound that would frighten those who heard it. There would be a 30% chance of causing the demonic beasts to flee in frenzy and a 20% of driving the targeted beasts into absolute madness and attack everything around them disregarding whether they were friends or foes. There would also be a 10% chance of causing the targeted beasts to die instantly, while ignoring the ranks or levels of the targets. However, some special demonic beasts may be able to decrease the success rate of the soul shake bell. This bell could be used once per 15 minutes. King Shui was still dumbfounded by what he saw. Even though the effect of the soul shake bell ability did not change, there were other minor changes to the number of targets and the success rate, maximum 10 targets and increase in success rates. This bell was essentially the beast Tamar's kryptonite. Of course, when an artifact had become stronger, the limitation of use would be enforced. Once per 15 minutes wasn't a big issue for King Shui. He could use it again after tossing it into the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal for a breath of time. With that in mind, there was essentially no problem if he were to face a powerful demonic beast in the future. He wouldn't have to worry for his opponent's demonic beast anymore. Moreover, the soul shake bell could now store a greater amount of power, so King Shui wouldn't need to worry about replenishing the power after a few uses. Suddenly, the thought about the supreme sect, the Lion King's Ridge, popped into his mind. Most of their members were beast tamers with demonic beasts largely hailing from northern sacred Lu continent. The majority of the beast tamers out there were considered amateurs, but those with extraordinary talents, including some beast tamers and the beast tamer clans, were not far behind in number. The Lion King's Ridge was the best among the beast tamer clans in the world. Did God just send a preparation for him to take over the Lion King's Ridge one day? Nevertheless, King Shui continued to temper the second-level demon binding ropes and the third-level black jade poisonous spiderweb next. He wasn't particularly insistent on their respective upgrades right now, especially the spiderweb, because he wanted to cultivate the toxicity of the poison to a proper level first before using the web during the battle. If he could temper the spider web to the next level, 
he might be able to strengthen the poison infused in it as well. The black jade poisonous spiderweb was obviously poisonous in nature. The greater the level of the spiderweb, the higher the toxicity of the poison would be, perhaps a few times stronger than the previous level. King Shui had a hunch that if the black jade poisonous spiderweb was able to break through to the seventh level, then it would be able to display a power on par with the five-colored poison. He decided to temper the spider web sufficiently every single day until it had accumulated to the point of a breakthrough. Thousand Hammer Technique Sword of Sixth Wave Hidden Weapon Technique Another half a month had passed. Ironically, when King Shui had almost forgotten the existence of the Baima aristocrat clan, they finally showed up again in the Heavenly Palace. King Shui was playing with King Yin in the courtyard when one of the disciples of the Heavenly Palace came to report of their arrival. Patriarch, the people from the Baima aristocrat clan had arrived at the Heavenly Palace. They have requested a meeting with you. A young disciple swiftly gave a report to King Shui. How many are there? Where are they at? King Shui picked up King Yin and asked the young disciple of the Heavenly Palace. They are at the square in the mountain peak. There are about ten of them in total. Hmm. Understood. You may go back now. King Shui smiled, allowing the disciple to go back to the Heavenly Palace swiftly. Yin Air, go play with your mother. Daddy will come back soon and play with you. Okay. King Shui put down King Yin and knelt on his knees to speak with the little girl. King Yin was still too young to be able to understand his words. He didn't intend to make her understand either. As he was still talking to King Yin, Kang Hai Mingyu was already walking in his direction. He assumed that the others had already received the news as well. King Shui, go. Be careful. Kang Hai Mingyu picked up the little girl and bid King Shui to stay cautious. All right. Don't worry. You can rest assured that your husband will do just fine. King Shui replied with a smile and planted a kiss on King Yin's cheek. He then gave a peck on Kang Hai Mingyu's cheek as well, almost overwhelming her with mixed emotions. Daddy, I want to go with you. Luin Luin stepped forward and expressed her intention. She smiled and greeted Kang Hai Mingyu before reaching out her hand to touch King Yin's small cheeks. After that she went up to King Shui and held him by his arm. Then let's go. King Shui wanted to refuse her request, but thought about for a moment before replying to her with a rejection. Luin Luin had made up her mind to fight and she would be fighting with him in the future battles. He agreed to let her come along so she would be able to gain some experience if a fight were to break out between him and the members of the Baima aristocrat clan. Chapter 792. Old Man's Concerns, Conflict, Opposing Each Other Heads On. Mingyu, then we'll go over first and take a look. King Shui said to Kang Hai Mingyu before he left. Him, be careful. When things are settled, come back earlier and inform everyone. Kang Hai Mingyu smiled and said while carrying Qin Yin. Her elegant and beautiful appearance was something that still left King Shui heads over heels for her. All right, Luin Luin, let's go and take a look. King Shui waved to Kang Hai Mingyu and then said to Luin Luin. Him, aunt, we'll head over first. Luin Luin smiled and said to Kang Hai Mingyu. Okay, King Shui, take good care of Luin Luin. Him, don't worry. Come, let daddy bring you along. With that, King Shui grabbed Luin Luin's wrist and leaped up while Luin Luin stepped on his foot as they flew toward Heavenly Palace's public square. Luin Luin was about to reach Martial Saint level. It was a pity that one would not be able to fly even if they were just a little bit away from attaining the Martial Saint level. Flying was an ability Martial Saints had. There were many people at the public square, but there were no hostile auras around. 
When he saw where Elder Ji was, King Shui flew over directly. Patriarch is here. Patriarch is here. Many of Heavenly Palace's disciples could not hold themselves back and cheered. It was heartfelt admiration that everyone felt. Even more so, it was a trust in him, as they entrusted themselves to his hands. Elder Ji. King Shui didn't look at the people from the other side, but greeted Elder Ji first. King Shui, these are people from Bima aristocrat clan. They kept saying that they want to meet you and this is the third time that they've come. Elder Ji smiled and said. King Shui turned to look at the opposite side. There were four extremely old men, four who were slightly younger, as well as a younger male and female pair who seemed to be in their thirties. The ones in the lead were the four oldest men. Two of them appeared very tall and powerful. Although they looked very old, they stood very upright and exuded a dominating aura. The other two were slighter shorter, having a clean appearance, giving off a knowledgeable feeling. The younger male and female pair stood in the middle. The guy was wearing snow-white long clothes and his handsome face exuding softness. Such a disposition had a lethal attraction to some ladies. And the young lady next to him. On his first look, King Shui thought of an expression. No matter how pretty a lady was, she would eventually be left with nothing but a pile of bones. This lady was the most coquettish lady he had ever met. Her almond-shaped eyes were covered with a layer of mist and her neck was long and sexy. Her body was extremely curvy and many would covet her. Matched with her slender waist, out of everyone King Shui had met before, this was a lady who was able to best exploit her body to its full potential. A lady like this did not require any disposition. She would only need to rely on her body. It might be because the heavens are fair, that King Shui didn't notice any disposition on her. At most, she could only be said to have a bit of elegance, but this should be because she was brought up in a well-to-do family. When King Shui was looking at her, that lady blinked her misty almond-shaped eyes not less than three times. As for what it meant, only she herself knew. This kind of woman would be attractive to any man, but she was more suited to be in a brothel. While it was good to enjoy a good time with people like her, as time passed, her charm would be lost. This was unlike how it was for women with character, where one would find more and more of their charms as time passes. The other four behind them who looked slightly aged had half of their hair in white. However, their appearances seemed to be middle-aged at most. When King Shui was checking him out, they were doing the same to him. They felt that Heavenly Palace's patriarch was too young. However, they didn't feel much about it, thinking that it was because there was no one who was strong that the job would be left to a young and ignorant lad. This was Green Cloud Continent and there were no strong experts here. However, their attention was still on this young man. They were trying to see if there was something unique about him. After all, it was rumored that Zuoshi clan had died in his hands. They were very familiar with Zuoshi clan as back then, they had escaped here after fighting with their clan for Huayang City. After so many years, their clan was forced out as well and they were here to look for Zuoshi clan, hoping to be able to join forces and fight back. However, they were not expecting Zuoshi clan to have been wiped out. They did not know if this news was good or bad for them. They still had some confidence to convince Zuoshi clan, but to convince Heavenly Palace, who had wiped out Zuoshi clan, to head to Huayang City with them then, it was practically impossible. This was their plan when they first came here. They didn't dare to be rash against them since they had the power to wipe out Zuoshi clan. Moreover, after staying in Green Cloud Continent for half a year, they realized that the place was much better than Central Continent. Therefore, their ambition to return to Central Continent had gradually dimmed. 
This place was very suitable for a clan like theirs. Unlike how it was in Central Continent, where those with power would be able to gain more and it was dangerous for those without. Why have the few of you been trying to look for me? King Shui smiled and asked. Your heavenly palace is patriarch. Out of the four old men in the lead, a clean-looking old man walked out and said, smiling. Yes, you guys are. King Shui kept his eyes on their actions and silently observed their level. These people were not as strong as Zuoshi clan's old ancestor, nor were they as powerful as Eastern Palace aristocrat clan's old ancestor. However, these few old men had the level of slightly over four stars. Even the slightly old men were at about three stars. And the young man and lady couple, were the same as Dai Chen, a grade five martial saint. King Shui could not help but take a few more looks. The guy had pretty good potential and the same went for the lady. However, King Shui could sense, through his heavenly vision technique, that the martial technique the lady cultivated was yin in nature, and was one that replenished one's yin energy through yang energy, slightly better than a martial technique which required her to absorb yang energy from the male during sexual intercourse. This martial technique would require her to absorb the yang energy from guys, turn the energy into yin energy and from there, raise her cultivation level. So she was such a person. King Shui lamented over the thought of how many guys had fallen prey to her. But looking at how coquettish this lady was, there must have been plenty of people who immediately died after intercourse with her. She was like the peony in the idiom. If one were to die under the peony flower, one would be amorous, even as a ghost. A Chinese idiom that has the meaning that even if one were to die for a beautiful lady, it would be worth it. King Shui didn't have much thought over duo cultivation techniques and duo cultivation couples. Most people would choose a duo cultivation partner and they would basically be considered a married couple, where no matter what happened, usually the lady would follow the guy. Although there was equality in the world of the nine continents, King Shui still felt that it was about the same as how it was in his previous life. It was likely because ladies tended to be weaker than guys in general in the area of cultivation and thus it gradually led to having the guys to call the shots. Therefore, it could only be said that the equality was more than how it was for his previous life. When a man could have several wives, it showed that there wasn't equality. There was no absolute equality, no matter where the place was. In the books or some records in the world of the nine continents, there were places where the status of women was higher than men. In those places, there were fewer ladies and many men. Moreover, the legacy they held was different and thus the social status changed. That girl next to you was the one who had killed someone from our Bima clan. The old man said as he looked at King Shui calmly not missing out on any hint of fluctuation to his facial expressions. When King Shui saw the old man's reaction, he laughed. She is my daughter. If she has killed someone from your clan, it's because the person deserved to die. You guys should be clearer than me over what people from your Bima clan have done. To think that you guys have come knocking on the door even though I didn't go over to demand an explanation. King Shui's tone was very calm, but the words he chose were astonishing. Although the people in Heavenly Palace knew that the other party was doing this intentionally, they had not expected King Shui's reply to be so threatening. However, King Shui felt that the other party was clear over the entire situation. Moreover, they knew well what their own intentions were. When dealing with such people, the more polite you are, the more they would feel that you are shrinking back. Therefore, he might as well push them into showing all their cards. Ha ha ha, it's truly a case of the rise of a promising youngster. To think that you can remain so arrogant after having killed someone. 
The elegant-looking elder was not angered but broke into a laugh instead. However, his eyes had not left King Shui's gaze. Let's just cut to the chase. Why is there a need to be hypocritical? There's no outsiders here. We Heavenly Palace are well aware of what people we have around us, and I'm sure you guys are also clear about how your people are like. Just like how we understand a little about the people from your clan. Let's just talk and get to the point. King Shui smiled and said, looking at the other party in complete disdain. Young man, I can't see through you clearly, so I don't wish to take any risks. I'm really curious over how you were able to wipe out Zuoshi clan. The old man was not angered by King Shui's words and he continued to say calmly. Do you believe that I'd be able to kill you instantly right now? King Shui said softly as he looked at the old man. His tone was so gentle that many found it hard to believe. The elegant-looking old man was also stunned by King Shui's words. However, he regained his composure quickly. Young man, don't just rely on blind courage. Think through things before you take action. When King Shui heard the old man's words, he smiled. The old man had already shrunk back. King Shui knew well what his words had meant, telling him that they had more people. Even if he could defeat the few of them alone, would he be able to defeat all of them? Getting him to think before he takes any action was to get him to think about himself and the people behind them, to see if everything was worth it. The fact that I can remain alive to this day, means that I'm not someone who depends blindly on my courage. But you guys have been standing on high ground for far too long. As time passes, your brains have also turned dull. King Shui said without showing any respect. King Shui felt that he didn't have to stand on ceremony with them. These people were very careful, but were still mostly arrogant. This was also why it was normal for them to be forced out of the central continent. However, after they came over, they still didn't know any better and it seemed that they'd probably only be able to realize their folly after they died. Young man, don't push it too far. Baima aristocrat clan has never been scared of anyone. The old man's voice was louder now as he said to King Clan with gritted teeth. Across the nine continents, Green Cloud Continent is the weakest and the poorest. There's no way that you guys would be willing to move if you had not been forced out. King Shui smiled as he said to the old man. The old man was stunned for a while, thinking of how Zuoshi clan had been wiped out by this young man. He wondered if King Shui also knew about their clan. He had not expected that the young man would point it out where it hurts, causing him to be unable to rebut. He felt that King Shui had probably heard it from Zuoshi clan. So what? After coming to Green Cloud Continent, we're the strongest here. The old man said with a powerful disposition as he looked at King Shui. Zuoshi clan had said the same thing back then. Refugees know not how to treasure others' acceptance and are still thinking of calling the shots around here. Rather than think of how to fight back to return to Central Continent, you're trying to boss people around here. Don't you think that you guys deserve to die? King Clan said without a flinch as he looked toward them. Chapter 793. Ruthlessness is the mark of a great man. A dense layer of perspiration broke out on the face of that old man. King Shui's words were light and explosive thunder, ringing in his heart. People who could reach his level were all of great intelligence, but sometimes, a momentary weakness of the heart could cause their consciousness to waver, and thus they would subconsciously shrink back in face of trouble, especially when they were unable to break through the trouble. Just like what the clan Baima aristocrat clan were up against. They had only thought of staying in Green Cloud Continent as they felt that it was very hard to return back to Huayang City. Their sense of superiority that they felt while they were staying here caused them to be restless again. 
They felt that they must let other people sense how exceptional their clan was in a weak place like this. Now, being verbally shot down by King Shui caused him to feel great fury and he glared at King Shui. Third brother, don't talk crap with them. Those who kill people from our Bima aristocrat clan must pay the price for it. A burly-looking old man next to the elegant old man saw how the latter had been showing his weakness time and time again and could not help but speak. Moreover, when they came over, the clan head had instructed him that although they needed to get the facts straight, they must get back by my aristocrat clan's pride. To be honest, none of them believed that a young man had wiped out Zuoshi clan single-handedly. They suspected that Heavenly Palace might have received other help, and the reason they've dropped by so many times was so that they could find out what the level of the people supporting them was. Back then, the fact that they could drive Zuoshi clan away showed that their abilities were much stronger than Zuoshi clan. Therefore, they were not really scared of the powers behind King Shui. However, they still wanted to understand the situation since knowing the enemies well provided higher chances of victory. A big clan like theirs could not afford any little mistakes, which was why the elegant-looking man had put down his pride like this. You guys can actually do whatever you want to do, but why are you finding such a ridiculous excuse for yourselves? Could it be that you guys are also thinking that this is something that you shouldn't be doing? King Shui smiled and looked at them. From the start to now, there had been no change to his expression. Hong Chang, don't be spouting rubbish. The elegant-looking old man said to the burly-looking one, before they understood all the trump cards the other party had, they should not be going all out recklessly. Moreover, the other party was still wearing a confident expression. The old man could feel the confidence King Shui had through his observations, which was why he chose to take a step back once again. Let me say one more thing today. Your Bima aristocrat clan can't make it. Don't be infuriated. I don't wish to kill anyone. Go back and tell your clan head not to joke around with the lives of an entire clan. King Shui looked at the elegant-looking old man and said. He was now very sure that this old man was the leader in this group. Third grandpa, you've been given a scare by this lad. Could it be that you feel that he is stronger than you? Just then, the young man in the middle spoke out slowly, but his gaze was still fixed on King Shui. The old man didn't say anything. He had the feeling that the young man they were facing was far from a match for him, but yet, he kept having the feeling that there was a beast hidden in King Shui's body. Could you let us visit that strong expert? The old man said softly. It's not convenient. If there's no other matter, please return. Remember what I've said. King Shui knew that the strong expert they were referring to was the one who had wiped out Tsuoshi clan. Third brother, I think there's no strong expert at all. We aren't even sure if Tsuoshi clan was wiped out by this lad. Baima Hongchang frowned and spoke out again. No matter who was the one to do it, they're still related to Heavenly Palace. The elegant-looking old man frowned and said. Then third brother is thinking of leaving just like this. After waiting for so long, we're leaving when he has appeared. Are we not going to do what the clan head had instructed us to do? Baima Hongchang looked at the other old man and said. It might be because I'm old now but I feel that we shouldn't be fighting him. We have no grievances against him. As for reputation, it's something we can do without. Then we're going to leave it just like that when Tung Yuan has been killed by them. Many people have seen what our Baima aristocrat clan has done. Baima Hongchang looked at the elegant-looking old man and shouted. Even the rest of the people were looking at the latter. Tung Yuan was always one with a bad conduct. He deserved it. The old man sighed and said. Third brother, that's my grandson, my grandson. He's been killed, 
A member of our Bima aristocrat clan has been killed. Didn't he merely tease a lady? I want her to go accompany Tung Yuan in his death. Bima Hongchang bellowed, appearing to be extremely agitated. In the end, he suddenly thought of pouncing toward Luan Luan. You're courting death. With a low bellow, King Shui stepped to stand in front of Luan Luan. The Thunder God and Big Dipper sword which he had prepared earlier were now in his hands and Baima Hongchang's hammer was already right in front of King Shui. Ding! The Thunder God blocked the hammer while his fiery golden eyes and Emperor's key had hit the opponent before the hammer had come. He then unleashed Sword of the Sixth Wave with his Big Dipper sword. Since he had attacked, he'd not show leniency. Baima Hongchang was merely at three stars after he had been weakened. The difference between King Shui's sword of sixth wave was a whole of difference with his sword of fifth wave and against opponents of a similar level to him. It was basically an instant kill. Boom boom boom. King Shui was at three stars to begin with but with the sword of sixth wave, Baima Hongchang was sent flying by King Shui's impact. Spewing out fresh blood and staring with wide-opened eyes, he died just like that, his internal organs entirely shattered. This was how domineering wave essence was. Opponents of a similar level would be killed instantaneously. Everyone was shocked to see a cultivator of four-star level being killed instantly. The old man had not expected the outcome to be like this. He had wanted to stop Baima Hongchang, but then again, he also wanted to see the abilities of this young patriarch from the Heavenly Palace. In fact, when King Shui unleashed his attacks, the old man was astonished by King Shui's aura. Not only was it pressuring, the impact it hit out with was like the endlessness of the raging river. Since the fight had started, King Shui would show no leniency. He was not one who would choose to eradicate the roots of evil, but neither did he wish to let go of a person who could have the ability to retaliate in the future. It would just be looking for trouble for both himself and his family. Roar! A deep deafening tiger's roar came out from King Shui. Diamond gigantic elephant, 10,000 poisonous violet sable, jade emperor queen bee, gold silver colored butterflies. All of them came out. When he saw the demonic beasts next to King Shui, the old man's face twitched. Now, he seemed to be able to believe that King Shui had wiped out Zuoshi clan alone. However, what should he do now? Seeing that the other party had called out his demonic beasts, it was clear that things would not be able to end like that today. Moreover, Baima clan would not let go of this issue either. They could only fight head on now. However, he kept feeling that something was amiss. To think that he dares to be inflicting harm, kill him. Since when has our Baima aristocrat clan been bullied like this? The expression of the young man in the middle was very unnatural. This time around, he had come to see Baima aristocrat clan kill others, not to be killed. The old man's instant death showed him that things were not looking good. The lady next to him had already turned pale as she looked toward the surroundings, feeling uneasy. The four old men were brothers with a close bond and had grown up together. They had never been separated across hundreds of years, even when they got married and eventually had their children and grandchildren. Seeing that one of them was instantly killed on the spot, even the elegant-looking old man who was called Third Brother had now drawn out his longsword. Things had now gone out of control and even if he had to die, he would need to fight to the very end. This was an inner impulse, to push on even if he knew that what that awaited was death. Moreover, they felt that they had the ability to crush Heavenly Palace. When the battle started, everyone else had retreated quickly. Luin Luin did not retreat but called out her heavenly fire armored rock bear and the ten earth devouring mice. She didn't step up but stood not far away, 
with the demonic beasts protecting her. Having powerful demonic beasts made her feel much more relaxed. She even left only three of the earth devouring mice and the heavenly fire armored rock bear next to her while sending the others to help King Shui. Although the heavenly fire armored rock bear's level was not very high, its monstrous defense allowed it to withstand the attacks of a three star strong expert. The person who makes the first move gets the advantage. Since he decided to leave no leniency, then he'd need to kill all of them here. These people had their eyes set on Heavenly Palace and leaving him alive would just pose a threat to Heavenly Palace in the future. In fact, King Shui had also always believed in one theory, ruthlessness is the mark of a great man. Mighty Elephant Stomp King Shui stood on the diamond gigantic elephant and launched out a mighty elephant stomp dispersing the impact of the nine people who remained. The thunderous beast used a violet lightning strike to keep the elegant-looking old man where he was. There was no need for King Shui to head over himself. He shot a silver needle through the old man's forehead, penetrating his brain. The silver needed held a violent destructive force and destroyed the brain. The old man died on the spot. Another old man was poisoned by the Jade Emperor Queen Bee. It might be because the old man's spirit energy was far too weak compared to his abilities. Moreover, the Jade Emperor Queen Bee was now very powerful. The old man's energy was being depleted at a rapid rate. Moreover, with King Shui having weakened him earlier, he couldn't stand a fight. And just then, Seven earth-devouring mice suddenly appeared at his feet. In just a moment, there was nothing left but a pool of blood. This was the first time King Shui had seen the earth-devouring mice in action. They were quick as light, extremely elusive, had a terrifying gnaw and unrivaled speed. All mouse-typed demonic beasts had poison of some sort, and if one was bitten, they would tend to be infected and their body would be destroyed. A earth-devouring mouse went through the old man's body directly. In the blink of an eye three out of the ten people had died, and they were from amongst the four who were the strongest here. The countenance of the remaining people turned grim. They couldn't understand why they could not feel that this young man was very strong but yet. He was a powerful beast tamer with terrifying demonic beasts. Diamond Sword Key. The diamond gigantic elephant unleashed its ultimate killing attack toward the last powerful old man. Boom. Instantaneous diamond evasion. Ferocious diamond attack. With his attacks powered up again, the attack with a strength of five and a half stars killed that old man immediately. In just the time taken for slightly more than one breath, this group of people was settled. Luin Luin's earth devouring mice had settled the other people, even that coquettish looking lady. King Shui looked at the excited Luin Luin and felt that this lass was really one who liked to fight. In the future, the lass name would definitely be widely known across the nine continents. Chapter 794. Post battle, this battle was of utmost importance. The battle ended after only the space of a few breaths. King Shui's sword of sixth wave had completely eliminated his opponents this time. The moment the sixth wave was executed, it would instantly kill opponents of a similar level on the spot. The sixth wave was much more formidable compared to the fifth wave. The fifth wave was a critical point. For a person of the same strength as the wielder, enduring the fifth wave was already the limit. One would even require the protection of external equipment to be just barely withstand the fifth wave. The sixth wave not only had an additional wave of attack, but also its power was much higher than before. It was already almost unbearable before, so now, this one strike was definitely fatal. Wave force, was very powerful, but it was also one of the most difficult cultivation arts to cultivate. 
To be able to unleash the third wave was already considered an achievement. Without any absolutely heaven-defying defensive skills, people who met with King Shui's sixth wave pretty much had no chance of survival unless their strength was much higher than his. On top of that, the thunderous beast's violet lightning strike had crippled one of them beforehand. The Jade Emperor Queen Bee's strength had also increased by quite a lot after its breakthrough. That elderly man had been pretty unlucky this time. The weaker one's spirit energy was, the more effective the Jade Emperor Queen Bee's poison killer sting would be. Furthermore, Luin Luin's earth devouring mice were also extremely formidable. They possessed shocking speed and were so terrifying that even King Shui was extremely surprised. As soon as she stepped into the martial saint realm, Luin Luin's flock of demonic beasts would be even more powerful. From the beginning to the end, the two young men and four elderly men didn't even get a chance to attack before getting killed on the spot. Very quickly, everything was cleared by the flames. Someone also tidied up the area. This was less about destroying evidence than just keeping the public square of the Heavenly Palace's main peak clean. King Shui, now that you have killed them, I'm guessing that we are about to battle the Bima aristocrat clan now. Elder Ji walked over and chuckled. These kinds of people will cause a disaster sooner or later if we leave them alone. This can be considered a warning to some people that the heavenly palace isn't just relying on luck. King Shui laughed leisurely. True, the Bima aristocrat clan's intentions for coming to the heavenly palace were nefarious. Such an ending is only befitting of them. Elder Ji agreed happily after thinking about it. King Shui had a feeling that, very soon, they would no longer be disregarded by the others, and that they also wouldn't need to yield to others either. They would no longer have to live cautiously and could at least vent their frustrations out now. He prayed his strength would break through soon, for Luin Luin to rise through the ranks, and for the rest of the King clan to improve rapidly and steadily. Other than that, the Heavenly Palace's strength had also been improving, especially considering that the ones who had stayed back in the last year were all elites. Although they had been improving very rapidly, it didn't seem possible that they would be able to become like those supreme sects in the span of a few years or decades. Perhaps he should say that they might never be able to do that. Even so, King Shui was still very hopeful. Even in the most supreme sects, not everyone in the sect would possess a strength above that of a peak martial saint. On the contrary, these sects still needed a large number of martial kings, peak martial kings and martial saints for protection. This battle had been a joy to King Shui. He was able to learn about the average strength of these aristocratic clans through this battle and also learned where he and the heavenly palace stood in comparison. It was essential for him to have gone through this battle and later, similar subsequent battles. If something like this happened once, it would surely happen again. They had to repeat the ending of the Zuoshi aristocrat clan again so that in the future, people who had ill intentions towards the heavenly palace would reconsider their choices carefully. Lady Luck would never stay by the side of the same person all the time, so the ending of the Bima aristocratic clan was destined to be a tragic. Then let us return first. Elder G, I will settle the issue with the Bima aristocrat clan. King Shui smiled at Elder G. All right, sure. Elder G waved his hand to show that he didn't mind. Lass, let's return to let them know that we are safe and sound. King Shui told Luin Luin who still seemed to be excited. All right, Luin Luin exclaimed in excitement. This was her first time being involved in a battle of this level. That hot-blooded and brutal scene was still deeply imprinted in her heart. She now had an idea on the preparation and methods of the battle experts. Speed is a crucial asset in war. Do things in one quick spurt of energy, 
like a hot knife slicing through the butter. She had also gained some knowledge in being a beast tamer. As a beast tamer, one should continuously adjust and synergize with the demonic beasts in order to achieve the most perfect control. She had observed how King Shui's thunderous beast had numbed the elderly man with its violet lightning strike right before King Shui had followed up with a silver needle that snatched the elderly man's life away. This was a cooperative move. She remembered the crimson dragon bow that King Shui had given her before, but she had never gotten a chance to use it. It seemed like she should practice with it more in the future as its decisive far-sighted use in a battle might instantly determine its outcome. Sometimes, things require precise judgment and prediction. If one could accurately predict, then a battle may be shortened and a decisive victory achieved. All this required experience and a keen sense of when to gamble. In a beast tamer's battle, the beast tamer usually stayed in the center, while being surrounded by the demonic beasts. The demonic beasts by their side were also their guardians. Other than ordering the demonic beasts around, the tamer could also perform some long-ranged attacks or study some other battle techniques, like poison arts. Although this battle had lasted for a very short time, it had made her understand the methods of battles and allowed her to observe how a true battle was fought. It had also awakened her battle spirit. Her strength in future battles would definitely advance by leaps and bounds, too. That was because she possessed the heart of seven orifices that no one else did. Bidding their farewell to everyone, King Shui and Luin Luin returned to the King residence in the Star Moon Hall. The moment they entered through the front door, the people of King Clan were all gathered in the front courtyard. Happy smiles broke across their faces when they saw that King Shui had returned. Although they had been pretty sure that nothing would happen to King Shui, they had still been worried. King Shui's appearance shocked them. It was too fast. King Shui and Luin Luin had come back way too early so their appearance both surprised and delighted the King clan members. They were aware that they had finished off their opponents because they had felt the terrifying mighty elephant stomp from earlier at the main peak. So there was only one possibility, the opponents were taken care of with a single blow. You've settled it, Yi A Jiang asked King Shui in shock. Yes I did but there should still be people coming from the opponent's side. King Shui looked at Ye Jiang. Daddy was so impressive. He took care of them all single-handedly. Luin Luin exclaimed in excitement. That's enough, lass. Our clan will rely on you very soon. King Shui chuckled. The real meaning behind his sentence was that she would be the leading figure of the next generation. She was extremely vital to the King clan. Daddy promised to bring me to battles and said that I will be of help to him. Luin Luin looked at King Shui excitedly. Ah Luin Luin is a good fighter now. I don't mind bringing you along to battles, but you must listen to me during battles. King Shui smiled at Luin Luin. Yes of course, you are daddy after all. Of course I will listen to you. Luin Luin giggled while latching onto King Shui's arm. Let's return to the big lounge. King Shui announced as he casually scooped up King Yin, who had run to his side. Daddy, I want to eat fish. Auntie snatched him all. King Yin complained with a pout. King Shui looked at the delicate small face of the little lass. He wanted to laugh so badly because she looked like she had been bullied. He uncontrollably gave her a big kiss. Daddy will make more for you later. Just wait for a little while more. The little lass was very intelligent. She was now able to understand some of the daily conversations and even knew that this man she called her daddy would fulfill any of her wishes. So she would look for King Shui every time she ran into something. King Shui understood that a child's world was very simple. In every child's heart, 
There was a father who was worthy of their greatest admiration. The father an omnipotent figure to them. So as long as anything happened, they'd always look for him and King Shui was doing his best in playing his role as a father well. Daddy is the best. The little lass wrapped her arms around King Shui's neck. Her sweet laughter was extremely melodious. Little lass, for somebody so young, you're already so good at pleasing others. King Shui laughed happily then looked at Kang Hai Mingyu, who was beside him. She's just like you, she pointed out softly while looking at King Shui. This lass is so clever. Of course she's like me. King Shui chuckled. Shameless. Lass, look at how thick-faced your daddy is. Kang Hai Mingyu laughed at King Yin, who was in King Shui's arms, and pinched her little nose. Daddy has a thick face. He's not afraid of the cold. King Yin pinched King Shui's face with her tiny hands and screamed happily. King Shui could only laugh along. The little child didn't know the real meaning. She only knew that anything thick would be warm. Kang Hai Mingyu praised her daughter's cleverness as she smiled. King Shui's desire was set ablaze by her elegant smile and her gorgeous face. When his gaze met with Kang Hai Mingyu, he gave her a look that she could understand. Her face unconsciously turned a faint red. She glared at King Shui with all her might. King Shui only laughed as he held King Yin. Kang Hai Mingyu, on the other hand, didn't dare to look at King Shui in the eyes. There were still other people around, but only two people could tell what was going on through their interactions. Huoyan Lu Li and Dai King. Many people gathered in the big lounge. On top of that, there were little children around, so the atmosphere was very relaxed. Other than King Shui, the most powerful people that were gathered here were all women who were related to King Shui. Some were even already his women. King Shui, are you waiting or going straight to the Baima aristocrat clan? Dai Chen came over and sat down beside King Shui. King Shui was sitting on a three-seat beast leather couch. Kang Hai Mingyu sat on his left while King Bei sat on his right. There was a gap between King Bei and King Shui, so Dai Chen was able to fit right in between of them. Dai Chen only realized that something was off after she took a seat. Only King Shui and she knew about the relationship between them. The two of them were already very intimate with each other. They had embraced and kissed each other already, but no outsiders knew that the two of them could basically be considered as being in a committed relationship. Perhaps she had done it subconsciously and only realized it after sitting down. A slightly awkward expression showed up on her face. When she saw the teasing look on King Shui's face, she angrily pinched him on his waist. Her action had obviously let everyone else know that she was actually King Shui's woman. Dai King had known about it, but Dai Chen had never allowed her to tell anyone, so the others had never been able to confirm it. After all, King Shui highly respected this woman. Their relationship was kept very privately to the point that it was impossible for others to tell, even though some had their suspicions. Dai Chen couldn't help but blush under everyone's gaze. King Shui, who was just beside her, only looked at her with a smile on his face. It was rare to see her being this shy. This had only happened a few times. Sister Chen, so you and brother Shui are. King Bei teased Dai Chen. Chapter 795. Preparation. Refining poison weapons. Jade Dragon Dagger as Weapon Core. Now that the others knew about Dai Chen and King Shui's relationship, they were very happy about it. King Bei had actually secretly given King Shui a thumb up. Both amusing and embarrassing King Shui. King Yu also looked at King Shui and secretly gave him a thumbs up as well. The other members of the King clan's third generation also congratulated King Shui. 
This was the difference between the King clan and other clans. King Shui could casually communicate with the King clan's third generation, and they were all close and comfortable around each other. In other clans, those of the younger generation would be fighting and scheming against each other, putting on fake personalities and viciously seeking opportunities to backstab others. Of course, Dai Chen could see the interactions between King Shui and the others. She gave King Shui an angry glare before exiting the room. Yet she didn't really seem to be very upset because she still smiled at the others. She was just feeling so awkward that she didn't know how to stay for any second longer. King Shui, hurry and go check up on Sister Chen. Kang Hai Mingyu urged him at the side. Brother Shui, hurry up and go. Even sister-in-law is asking you to go. King Bei chuckled. King Shui laughed mischievously then exited the room, excusing himself from the others. Regardless of the reason, he should go for the sake of saving Dai Chen's face. After all, this kind of thing was pretty embarrassing for her. King Shui walked out through the big lounge's door to the sound of everyone's laughter. He then continued in the direction of the rear courtyard because he had a hunch that Dai Chen would definitely be there. The moment he entered the rear courtyard, he spotted Dai Chen's silhouette not too far away. She stood as if between heaven and earth, fully dressed in snow white. Her extraordinary grace would make one feel as if she was very far from reach. Her out-of-this-world figure appeared to be a little lonely but really more hard to approach. King Shui shook his head. This was his innermost heart from his previous life acting up. He now could be considered a very confident person, but somewhere deep down inside, he still felt a humble insignificance. He would only exude a strong confidence when he was protecting the people by his side during battles. He still needed to break through. Only when his physical strength was powerful enough could he truly stand in front of them. King Shui was well aware that he only barely deserved to have everyone around him. Then again, deserving or not deserving in relationships didn't matter as long as the two people could be together harmoniously. Such thoughts only came to King Shui because his ladies were simply too outstanding each of them like a heavenly fairy that had descended to the mortal world. He quietly walked to her side and glanced at her to see if she was angry. Her face was still faintly tinted by red. You're angry, King Shui pointed out with a laugh. No, why would I be angry? Dai Chen glanced back at King Shui and gave him a small smile. I saw you go out and thought that you had gotten angry. King Shui smiled back at her. Are you afraid that I'd get angry or is it that you don't wish to see me angry? Dai Chen asked him softly. I can't bear to see you angry. King Shui said gently, as he pulled her jade-like hand. Dai Chen didn't resist and let King Shui pull her. She gave him a side glance. Although the times they spent together were relatively short, his figure in her heart was always so clear and distinct. She knew that she'd be involved with him for her the rest of her entire life. At first, she had only thought that this man was very unique. She was fond of his personality because he wasn't the least bit arrogant and willful like those disciples from aristocratic clans. Most importantly, there had been the wonderful dream among the sea of flowers that had happened twice. On top of that, during the second time, the wonderful dream among the sea of flowers was not real, yet it surpassed reality. Those feelings she felt were directly connected to her soul. She would never be able to forget them as long as she lived. Although they weren't really together in reality, a lot had happened between them and her heart was already with him. Otherwise she wouldn't allow him to bully her this way. You are mine, King Shui pulled Dai Chen as they slowly walked in the rear courtyard. His voice was soft yet certain. What are you talking about? Dai Chen huffed. 
Her melodious voice sent a shiver down King Shui's spine. He turned his head to the woman who was like an immortal that had descended to the mortal world. I still feel like I am dreaming. God is indeed caring towards me to let such a gorgeous woman like you fall in love with me. King Shui linked his hands with those of Dai Chen. He stood across her as he gazed into her eyes, enjoying the atmosphere around them. You are the best and most outstanding man I know. King Shui, I, Chen Er, like you. Dai Chen laughed softly, as if her words were imbued with magic. King Shui's confidence instantly swelled and his vanity greatly satisfied. He wasn't going to think about whether she was speaking the truth. He was greatly enjoying the moment and really liked what she had told him. As the saying goes, behind a successful man, there is a great woman. This woman had been a great influence on his present success and had even played a decisive role at times. The tales of storming the crown for a beauty, loving the beauties more than Jiang Shan, and setting fire to fool the feudal princes from his previous world had shown how influential a woman could be. These women could cause the downfall of a country and thus cause its people to suffer. If they could encourage their men to follow the right path, the ending of the stories may have been very different. Storming the crown for a beauty is a story about Wu Sangui who betrayed the ruling government of that time to the Manchus for Chen Yuanyuan, a famous courtesan in Suzhou. Loving the beauties more than Jiang Shan is a poem that was commonly used to mock political rulers who only cared about the beauties and neglected the affairs of their nation. Settling fire to fool the feudal princes is a story that is very similar to the boy who cried wolf. Except that in this story, King Yu of Western Zhou lit up the beacon to fool the feudal princes for the sake of making his concubine laugh. The story ended with a breach in his capital and his death, because the feudal princes no longer responded to the beacon, thinking that it was their king's joke. Stormed crowns for a femme. King Shui gently embraced her and felt very warm. He indulged in the warmth of her body and that feeling of soft ecstasy. However, she had made clear that she wouldn't allow him to touch her until after she broke through. King Shui had no idea to what level she wished to break through to. She didn't speak much due to the embarrassment from back then, so King Shui didn't ask any further because he knew the reason anyway. Sometimes, he just ached for her. He wanted her so badly because he loved her. Dai Chen gently wrapped her arms around King Shui's neck. Their bodies and their hearts were tightly pressed together. She could feel his strong heartbeats. How are you planning to take care of the Baima aristocrat clan? The two snuggled up to each other for a while before Dai Chen gently pushed King Shui away. There's no other way but to wipe him out. They will just become a potential threat if we let them stay. King Shui would be very decisive when it came to such things. So we're waiting for them to come. Dai Chen looked at him. Since nothing too alarming is happening, we shall just wait. They will come. King Shui had initially planned to leave for the Baima aristocrat clan. However, since nothing was happening right now, it was better to wait for them to come instead. Besides, if he missed the Baima aristocrat clan on his way there, the consequences would be too horrible to even contemplate. If he stayed here to wait for his opponents to come, Luin Luin would also be able to help him. King Shui estimated that dealing with the Baima aristocrat clan this time wouldn't be too much of an issue. Then again, not everything would always go as planned. He needed to have a fallback plan and to keep killing techniques with him. There were only three five-colored poison-tempered frosted iron balls and a few poison-tempered cold steel needles left. These were not enough. Since he still had some time, he decided that he ought to make some preparations. Unexpectedly, no one bothered the two of them when they were in the rear courtyard. 
They had been there for quite some time now. Dai Chen felt that it was about time to return, so she pulled King Shui towards the front courtyard. Anyways, King Shui was the person who had the final say about the Baima aristocrat clan. If there was going to be a battle, only King Shui and at most Luan Luan would fight. Dai Chen and the rest wouldn't be able to intervene now. Luan Luan was already the second highest ranked figure among the King clan now and she was elated about it. She knew she had been able to reach her current strength so soon because of King Shui and she was extremely grateful to be his daughter. Noontime came about very soon. Ever since King Shui's return, everyone basically took their meals together at the same time and then go off afterwards. King Shui was no different. He returned to his own bedroom and entered the realm of Violet Jade Immortal. He was about to prepare for the next battle. He had relied on poison and hidden weapons techniques to eliminate the Zuoshi aristocrat clan and the Eastern Palace aristocrat clan. On top of that, he had the bizarre primordial flames. If he only had his own physical strength to rely on, eliminating those clans would have basically been a pipe dream. Regardless of the methods, there wouldn't be any issues as long as he could win and survive. Poison using sects could be found in almost every city in the world of the nine continents and poison had thus gained a very important standing. After all, there were a countless number of unusual plants in the world of nine continents and the poisonous ones were definitely not few. This contributed to the large number of poison cultivators. The upgrade of the fifth wave to the sixth wave had allowed King Shui's strength to forge ahead tremendously. Any opponent weakened to about three stars could be instantly killed by the sword of sixth wave. With the help of the diamond gigantic elephant and the thunderous beast, King Shui had very terrifying hidden strength. Hidden weapons were King Shui's killing techniques. As long as his opponents were paralyzed by the thunderous beast, they basically had no chance of survival. King Shui was aware that he had powerful supplementary skills. However, he had a very difficult time breaking through with the ancient strengthening technique. Compared to the others, it seemed like he had yet to tap into this powerful body strengthening technique. He was looking forward to the seventh heavenly layer because he had a hunch that it would be a major turning point. King Shui wasn't in a hurry to cultivate, because he had to make his preparations first. The Baima aristocrat clan definitely had many people who were stronger than him. Still, his defense should be enough when he was under the state of the seven stars armor to last against them. During that time, he must have a killing technique ready. Poison weapon. King Shui thought it was time for him to make a poison weapon because he had the main ingredient now, the 10,000 years cold steel. The 10,000 years cold steel could be used as an ingredient to make a poison weapon because of the terrifying cold poison that it contained. If it could be enhanced through the right processes, it would be extremely formidable. He remembered the Jade Dragon Battle Saber and the Jade Dragon Dagger and quickly took the latter out. He realized that this Jade Dragon Dagger was very suitable to be used as a mold and could even be used as the poison weapon's core. He had no idea what material the Jade Dragon Dagger was made out of. It was about 13 inches long and two fingers wide. It could considered to be an unusually small dagger and for this exact reason, he decided to use it as a weapon core. Next, King Shui retrieved the five colored daily Li Python's poison that he had previously stored and started refining it. He was going to make this five colored poison even purer before strengthening it with the crystals produced by the crystal lions. He took out that big lump of 10,000 years cold steel. This could definitely be counted as a treasure. A 1,000 years cold steel was already considered to be quite a decent item. So the 10,000 years cold steel was basically on the same level as a moonstone.
Using the primordial flames, he began to smelt the fist-sized 10,000 years cold steel. He slowly melted and purified it. After smelting it for a round, King Shui continued to refine the poison. For the next few days, King Shui went through the same process. He didn't stop until the five-colored poison wasn't any weaker than those five-colored poison pearls he had gotten from the heavenly palace before. The poison had already almost achieved the right saturation and state. With the help of the crystals produced by the crystal lions, the poison was formed into poison pearls. This made King Shui extremely happy. 30 pearls. He was fairly satisfied with this amount. This was double the amount of five colored poison pearls he had previously gotten from the heavenly palace. Clenching his teeth, King Shui took out 15 of them. Since he already had the ingredients, he might as well make a terrifying poison weapon. Creating a poison weapon first required the core of the poison weapon to be refined. The core must be exceptionally poisonous. King Shui decided to take out 15 five-colored poison pearls to refine the poison weapon's core. This was King Shui's first time refining a poison weapon. He was a little excited and looked forward to the end result. He placed the Jade Dragon Dagger in the smelting vessel and started to slowly smelt it. King Shui didn't dare to be reckless. He wouldn't tolerate failure, despite this being his first attempt. Chapter 796, Weapon of Destruction Completed, Refining Poison. King Shui cautiously smelted the Jade Dragon Dagger to remove the impurities present in the material, thus forming a purer version of the dagger. Moreover, the poison could be absorbed better once the impurities had been removed completely. King Shui had also discovered that the Jade Dragon Dagger has a distinct, high temperature resistance, a property that could determine whether the weapon was of an excellent quality. The impurities contained within the dagger seemed quite L minor, as evidenced by the small amount of dirt particles leaking through the fire. After that, King Shui took 15 five-colored poison pearls and smelted them with the Jade Dragon Dagger until the dagger had completely submerged into the liquefied poison pearls. The Jade Dragon Dagger would require ample time to absorb the poisonous liquid effectively. Even though the process was halted, King Shui decided to use the remaining time to temper other poison weapons and valuable materials that he had been planning for a long time. He looked at the giant 10,000-year cold steel and took a portion of it to produce an abundance of cold steel needles and frosted iron balls. The 10,000-year cold steel was far more valuable than the 1,000 year cold steel as they were obviously not of the same level. However, because of the higher value of the 10,000, year cold steel, King Shui had thought that the frosted iron balls produced with the said cold steel would be exceptional sturdy. But to his dismay, he found it impossible to use hidden weapons to release the twin dragon explosion. The 10,000, Year cold steel could not be used to inflict impact damage for now due to the limitation of King Shui's current ability. On the other hand, the frosted iron balls and cold steel needles forged from a 1000 year cold steel were designed for single use only. Basically, after using them once, the weapons would cease to be effective, thus rendering them useless. However, the 10,000 year cold steel was different. It could be used multiple times as long as the weapon remained intact and could be retrieved. Despite that, the weapon would require replenishment of the poison to be able to use it again. This was the only drawback of the weapons forged from 10,000 year cold steel. The 10,000 year cold steel needles were as fine as the hair of an ox and as poisonous as the vicious snakes and scorpions. Refining 10,000 year cold steel was more laborious than refining 1,000 year cold steel. The time required to refine the 10,000 
year cold steel was lengthening as well. One refining session could yield about nine batches of needles, with one batch yielding about nine needles. Thus, one refining session could yield at least 81 needles in total. As long as King Shui had the materials required in his possession, the refining process would be swift. The 9-inch cold steel needles seemed like a small amount when he put him together. Nevertheless, he took five of the poison pearls from the remaining 15 five-colored poison pearls and smelted them with the cold steel needles. Then, with the same process as the jade dragon dagger, he allowed the poisonous needles to submerge into the poisonous liquid. All he had to do now was to wait patiently for the needles to absorb the toxins from the liquefied poison pearls completely. There were quite a lot of 10,000, year frosted iron balls produced as well. Luckily, these weapons could be used more than once. If they were to inherit the same singular use property of the 1,000, year cold steel, King Shui would definitely rage for quite a while. Three days had passed after he had finished forging the weapons. During his free time in the past three days, King Shui had studied the content of the poison scripture again. Frankly, it was all because of the poison scripture that King Shui was able to refine a variety of poison weapons and tamper with poisonous substances. He felt extremely grateful for the book. Otherwise, he wouldn't be alive until now. He would have died in the hands of the Zuoshi aristocrat clan. During the span of three days, the Jade Dragon Dagger had turned pitch black. The poisonous liquid around the dagger had vanished, most likely absorbed by the dagger itself. King Shui was satisfied after he had used his spiritual sense to analyze the reformed weapon. The most crucial part of a poison weapon was its core. The supreme core could become remarkably spiritualized after a period of time, as if forming a kind of bond with its user. The better the core, the better the weapons, armor and other artifacts would be. There was a rumor stating that the core of the divine weapons could communicate with the user telepathically. It was said that the core has a mind of its own. He ate some food, cultivated for a while and took a good rest. After King Shui got up from his rest, he went to check on the jade dragon dagger and discovered that it had completely absorbed the poisonous liquid. He proceeded to take the 10,000 year cold steel that had already been tempered and put the dagger into a mold that he had prepared earlier. Not long after that, he began smelting the 10,000 year cold steel into liquid form and proceeded to pour the liquefied cold steel into the mold, coating the entire jade dragon dagger. He had also prepared a sort of utensil nearby a slender piece of tube than could be inserted into the mold from above. Once in a while, the pitch black liquid would drip into the mold in a consistent manner. The liquid was formed from melting the remaining five colored poison pearls in his possession. The primordial flames continued to burn for the entire lengthy process. King Shui knew he couldn't be force an acceleration of the progress so he activated his spiritual sense and slowly closed his eyes. The 10,000-year cold steel continued to drip into the mold, which would take quite a long time for the process to finish. A day had passed, and then two days had passed. Finally, on the ninth day, the 10,000-year cold steel was left with the size of a human thumb. The density of the 10,000 year cold steel was abnormally high, yet the small lump of cold steel could still produce a generous amount of liquid after it had been melted. There was only a slight amount of liquefied poison pearls remaining as it continued to produce a drop into the mold after a brief period of time. In between the process, King Shui had already consumed the vital essence pills twice. If he didn't, he wouldn't be able to continue the refinement of the poison weapons, especially during the process where he was required to release the full power of the primordial flames. 
The constant production of the primordial flames was able to exhaust his energy very quickly. Fortunately for him, the yin-yang image and the key of the ancient strengthening technique were constantly in effect, otherwise he wouldn't able to go through the process with the vital essence pills alone. When the last drop of the 10,000-year cold steel had fallen, King Shui let out a sigh of relief. However, the process didn't stop there, as the liquefied five-colored poison pearls needed another hour to finish its last drop. But when it did, the entire dagger subsequently released a stream of thrilling black key, as well as an icy dark mist akin to a cloud of black smoke to the surrounding. That was the cold key released by the 10,000-year cold steel. The primordial flames continued to burn until the moment the cold steel had begun its infusion with the dagger completely. When the black key was released, it was an indication that the refinement was a success. All he needed to do now was to allow the 10,000-year cold steel and the toxins to infuse the jade dragon dagger completely. The poison weapon emitted a green-black color during the entire process of infusion. Despite the subtle green color emitted from the weapon, he could still see the color quite clearly. That was the color of the jade dragon dagger, meaning that it had been transformed into a core. Under these circumstances, it was normal for the jade dragon dagger to become the core as long as it contained an abundance of spiritual energy. It wasn't necessary for the core to contain poisonous substance, however. The Jade Dragon Dagger had already been transformed into a poisonous core after King Shui had tempered it earlier. He waited until the weapon had completely cooled down before he picked it up. The dagger seemed larger than before, measuring about one foot and three inches in length and three fingers wide. The whole structure of the weapon seemed like a broken three feet long green edge sword. It was cold to the touch, but soon King Shui was able to feel the warmth slowly creep from his arms to his whole body. At that moment, he felt that he would be able to master the usage of a dagger due to the excellent quality of the weapon. King Shui couldn't wait any longer and used his spiritual sense to analyze the weapon. Poison Dragon Dagger King Shui was shocked, but the name seemed appropriate the longer he thought about it. He continued below, but the description had only contained a few words. Piercing attack with a poisonous effect. He looked at the weapon with a perplexed expression. These few words were quite useless as he already had the knowledge that the attack would be poisonous to the touch. Even though he felt a little disappointed, he was still quite content with the end result of the refined weapon. He saw with his spiritual sense that the weapon was described to have a poisonous effect, which meant that the weapon must be quite lethal. That was all King Shui had ever wanted for the weapon. It was a weapon of destruction. Indeed, the poison dragon dagger was a weapon of destruction that could be used for a strategy of surprise or even as a tool for an alternative kill during a struggle with his opponent. King Shui could only depend on these hidden weapons during a battle with opponents that seemed far more powerful than he was. If he could break through to the seventh heavenly layer of the ancient strengthening technique, then he might be able to depend on his own ability to viciously slaughter his opponents. Utilizing poisons in a battle was actually one type of ability a martial warrior could cultivate. However, King Shui had been subconsciously rejecting that mindset, due to his preference for physical strength and power. King Shui was not a man who found pleasure in killing other people. However, some people deserved to be killed. Sometimes, killing was necessary in order to survive in this world. A true man should strive to kill, even though he was not a man who would preach death. However, as a martial warrior, killing was inevitable. The success of a martial warrior was built on the lives of his opponents, the strongest of all could only climb to the top through a mountain of corpses. King Shui would not slaughter innocent people either.
When he was faced with the Zuoshi aristocrat clan and the Eastern Palace aristocrat clan, he had only killed the powerful martial warriors that were deemed dangerous for both the King clan and the Heavenly Palace. Those who posed no threat to him were given the chance to flee. Human beings were born simple. They would eventually forget. The first generation may bear hatred in their hearts, but the subsequent generations would eventually forget about their ancestors' hatred. In most cases, people would choose to forget when they were faced with a situation where they could not overpower the other party. The Baima aristocrat clan was fated to be the stepping stones for both King Shui and the Heavenly Palace. These people would reap what they sowed and they would be the ones to bring about their own destruction. King Shui hated those who would bully the weak and fear the strong and the people from the Baima aristocrat clan were definitely those kinds. Because of that, he felt unobligated to be courteous towards the cowards of the Baima aristocrat clan. Otherwise, he would regret for eternity if he were to treat them differently than intended. He had finally completed forging his poison weapons. Despite noticing the increased development of his art of forging, he still wasn't able to achieve a breakthrough for this technique. The 10,000 year cold steel needles and 10,000 year frosted iron balls would require a few more days of poison infusion. However, with the existence of the realm of the violet jade immortal, time was of no concern so he had nothing to worry about. It was evening when King Shui came out of the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. The sun had already reached the horizon, illuminating the sky with a fiery red color. When he came out of his room, he could hear distinctive giggles outside the courtyard. It was the laughter of the twins, King Jun and King Yin. The ladies were also giggling in the middle of the courtyard with the kids. Kang Hai Ming Yu, Dai Chen and Dai King were being chased around by the two little kids. The dawn had cast long shadows from their silhouettes on the ground, which seemed quite harmonious to the given atmosphere. Daddy, King Yin ran towards King Shui when she saw him. She pounced immediately before she was able to reach to her father. Luckily, King Shui caught her before she got hurt or fell to the ground. The little girl wasn't afraid that she could fall to the ground. Instead, she giggled repeatedly while being cupped in King Shui's arm. King Jun had also ran towards King Shui, begging for a hug as well with arms wide opened when he saw his father hugging King Yin. King Shui bent down and lifted him up with the other arm before he went towards the ladies. The two little kids were constantly bickering with each other while clinging to his chest. King Shui didn't mind at all. He quite enjoyed this kind of blissful moment. Are you done with your refinement? Kang Hai Mingyu asked casually. Yeah, I'm free tonight to play with these two naughty kids chuckled King Shui as he looked at the children in his arms. Kang Hai Mingyu blushed an intense red. King Shui would always play with the children first before he would come to look for her. Good thing the twins had the habit of sleeping early. However, she never had a good sleep for half the night every time they had sex with each other. Days passed in a blink of an eye. He had already prepared what he could for the next battle with the Baima aristocrat clan. When he had the free time, he would guide the other members of the King clan in their training, as well as enjoying the freedom and happiness of his current life. At night, King Shui, I can't do this anymore. Kang Hai Mingyu held tightly onto the unwearied King Shui as she pleaded him to stop with heavy breath. He gazed at her irresistible elegance and beauty that had King Shui drowning in ecstasy. For a beauty like her to willingly make the most intimate love with him, it felt exceptionally wonderful. When their hearts were beating as one, King Shui felt that he was the happiest man on earth. At that moment, there was no envy for the immortals as he was filled with exuberant happiness. Mingyu, 
Tell me. Did that feel good? King Shui smiled coyly at Kang Hai Mingyu. Not telling. Kang Hai Mingyu chided as she blushed from shyness. In that case, King Shui smirked as he began to move his body provocatively. My dear, you air felt good, said Kang Hai Mingyu meekly as she buried her blushing face on King Shui's chest shyly. This had caused King Shui to fuel up his sexual desires once more, releasing all his passion on her again until she reached another climax. Chapter 797, The Eve of the Battle Things had calmed down after a session of love-making. King Shui embraced Kang Hai Mingyu in his arms, feeling satisfied as he desired nothing else but for this moment. He discarded all his thoughts and immersed himself in the present. He knew these moments were short-lived. After all, they had just finished having sex with each other. Despite the brief morbid outlook, he took pleasure in moments like this and had quite enjoyed his current life. He felt extremely calm and cozy while embracing his naked wife in his arms, feeling the warmth and comfort in his heart. Her skin was as white as snow and as smooth as jade. King Shui reached out and caressed her silky smooth skin, causing Kang Hai Mingyu to tremble slightly from the sensitivity of his touch. King Shui, no. Kang Hai Mingyu grabbed King Shui's hand and stopped him from caressing her further. I want to sleep while holding you in my arms. But that seems to have an opposite effect instead. King Shui allowed Kang Hai Mingyu to press her voluptuous breasts against his chest. Her tender and firm breasts were the perfect shape. He couldn't hold in his lust any longer and reached out to feel them gently in his hands. Essentially, King Shui did not have a good sleep last night. Kang Hai Mingyu didn't manage to get a decent sleep either. He could get some rest in the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal, while Kang Hai Mingyu could only get a good peaceful sleep when King Shui had gone to Huoyan Lu Li's room or to the other ladies' rooms for the night. Nonetheless, King Shui would still be in good condition even if he didn't manage to sleep for a few days. Moreover, he could always use the aroma concentration pill to gain steady progress for his cultivation even when he had gone to sleep. King Shui got up from the bed while Kang Hai Mingyu decided to sleep in for a bit longer. The sky had started getting bright when he went to the backyard for his morning practice. The familiar silhouette of a certain lady was absent today when he arrived to an empty backyard. Despite that, he continued with his cultivation. Tai Chi fist. Back connecting fist. A series of distinctive blasts rang out in the air. He could feel the abundance of power inside him, as well as the copious amount of the purest energy that he had absorbed from the surrounding atmosphere. The nature energy and the heavenly Dan from the upper Danshan began circulating after that. Ever since he had experienced an abnormal breakthrough to his powers that day, he didn't experience anything similar to that from there on. The heavenly Dan of Golden Sheen circulated slowly, while consistently regulated with the lower parts of the Danshan, which was still in the liquid state. King Shui had pondered about the possibility of the lower Danshan forming a core like the upper Danshan. During the first heavenly layer to the third heavenly layer of the ancient strengthening technique, the state of the lower Danshan was in a gaseous form. It was only until he had reached the fourth heavenly layer that the lower Danshan had transformed to liquid form, albeit maintaining the same form until now. However, the lower Danshan had since gained a greater density than it had during the gaseous form. The lower Danshan had gained the slight firmness of a gelatin, despite being in a liquid form. Because of that, King Shui had speculated that the lower Danshan would transform into a core when he had reached the seventh heavenly layer of the ancient strengthening technique. He had gained ten times the power of his physical strength during the fourth heavenly layer 
in which the ancient strengthening technique had just transformed from an elementary stage to an intermediate stage. Ever since then, King Shui had been hoping for the breakthrough to the seventh heavenly layer due to the ascension to the next stage. The breakthrough from the sixth heavenly layer to the seventh heavenly layer was essentially the ascension of the ancient strengthening technique from an intermediate stage to an expert stage. If that were to happen, he would gain a ten times increase to his power, at the very least. King Shui's blood boiled with excitement when he thought about the benefits that he could reap from the breakthrough of his ancient strengthening technique. If his powers were to increase ten times or more, then the final amount of his power would be. If that were the case, the Bima aristocrat clan, Eastern Palace aristocrat clan or other supreme aristocratic clans would seem like ants beneath him. However, the reality of the circumstance quickly came to his senses, as if it had slapped him across the face. He hadn't achieved the seventh heavenly layer yet and the Bima aristocrat clan were not ants either, King Shui was still expected to fight with everything he had. Moreover, breaking through the seventh heavenly layer would not be an easy feat. It would require a little bit of opportunity or perhaps a chock full of opportunity to be able to break through the seventh heavenly layer. He had thought about using the duo cultivation technique to achieve a breakthrough for his ancient strengthening technique. However, the duo cultivation technique would normally be aimed for the breakthrough of the realm of the violet immortal, not the other way around. The movement of his Tai Chi fist hadn't stopped ever since he had started, but his mind had already wandered away from his body. The first duo cultivation would always be more effective than the consequent attempts. He already had two suitable candidates in his mind to attempt the duo cultivation technique together, Wenren Wushuang and Dai Chen as both of them were women from the portraits of beauty. Despite the excellent candidates, King Shui still felt that this wasn't the time to attempt the technique just yet. From the past experience, after the realm of the violet jade immortal had a breakthrough, the ancient strengthening technique would follow behind and achieve a breakthrough as well. King Shui had a feeling that it would be the same for the consequent breakthroughs, so he decided that he would definitely upgrade the realm of the violet jade immortal to the seventh level first. Dai Chen wasn't quite suitable yet for the duo cultivation and Wenren Wushuang wasn't quite ready yet. With the exception of these two, there was no one else who would be suitable to perform the duo cultivation technique with King Shui. Even if he could perform the duo cultivation technique right now, the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal wouldn't necessarily reach a breakthrough to the seventh level that he had yearned for. There was nothing wrong for two people to be with each other if they were in a relationship. Wenren Wushuang had been alone all this time. So if she were to stay by King Shui's side, she might be able to feel more at ease with herself. However, the incident with her elder sister had cast a blight over her perspective of life. King Shui felt that he might be able to diffuse the blight in her heart if he were to spend more time with her in the future. The idea of using the duo cultivation technique to upgrade the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal was a bust for now. King Shui shook his head and decided to let the breakthrough happen naturally. With time and patience, the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal would reach the seventh level eventually. Clap clap. The sun had already risen to the sky. King Shui's silhouette shifted from being like a cunning rabbit, then to a stumpy giant bear and then to a posture of a python. He had been demonstrating various styles of Tai Chi fist giving off different vibes with from each form. The only thing that hadn't changed was his demeanor, calm, unperturbed, selflessness, stillness. King Shui tried his best to achieve the state of an unmoving mind. As King Shui continued his morning practice, the other members of King Clan began to gather in succession and strengthen their cultivation as well. When he was done, 
Some of the disciples from the third generation had already left, while some were preparing to leave. Everyone came to the backyard and practiced without ever disturbing his practice. King Shui would always finish cultivating his techniques a bit later than everyone else, because he needed to absorb the energy from the morning sun sufficiently. And because of that, breakfast in the King clan would be served a bit later as well. When he was preparing to leave the backyard, he caught a glimpse of his elder sister watching him nearby. He smiled and walked towards her while calling out, Sis. King Shui felt an abundance of sympathy towards his elder sister, despite not being able to spend more time with her. He didn't know how to compensate her, but she was lucky enough to have a mother by her side who loved her as much as he loved his elder sister. Both King Yi and King Shui had been thinking of ways to compensate the 20 years of loneliness King King had suffered. King Shui wanted to make her stronger, so that she could be happier. The reason she was suffering in the first place was the lack of strength on her part. King Shui, King King stepped forward and smoothed King Shui's wrinkled clothes as she flashed out a smile at him. King King was only a bit stronger than a Xianxin, but she was content with where she was. King Shui decided that he would help advance her strength, after he had settled the matters with the Baima aristocrat clan. He had the capability to do it, so he figured why not. King Shui and King King walked towards the front courtyard together. Her life was simple, yet she was happy and satisfied. King Shui had an impression that his elder sister was the quiet type. She seemed to maintain her calmness even after she had came back from the Yan clan. Sis, I haven't been able to help you these past few days since I was busy with my training. Do you have any wish I can fulfill? Asked King Shui with a smile. I wish you and mother safe and sound. I wish to keep everyone from harm and I wish we all can live happily together. King King revealed a smile of a blooming flower. What is your dream in life? King Shui continued with a gentler tone. I dream of becoming stronger just like you, said King King while maintaining a smile on her face. King Shui realized that she wanted to become like him and Luin Luin, to be able to fight together, not just watching from the sidelines. King King gazed at King Shui silently. He was the pillar of strength to both the King clan and the Heavenly Palace. He was a man who would carry the weight of his problems on his shoulders by himself. He fought the Yan clan alone, but he was lucky to have came out alive due to the handful of allies who had given him their assistance. Sis, I promise you, I will make you stronger than before. King Shui said in a serious tone but with the same gentle smile. King King was startled. She thought King Shui was only trying to comfort her, but when she saw the genuine expression on his face, she knew he was serious about what he said. However, she clearly knew her own situation, it would be a challenge for her to become stronger. It's all right, don't think too much. I'm here for you so you should be happy from now on. Remember to tell me anything if you are troubled. King Shui comforted King King who seemed to be deep in her thoughts. Okay, I will remember that. King King replied with a smile. All King Shui could think now was to find more alchemy recipes. He didn't have many to begin with, especially the ones that could boost one's ability. At first, he thought of asking for some alchemy recipes from Yuan Su, but he felt awkward about seeing her right now. She had confessed and he wasn't a person so thick-skinned as to ignore that either. Moreover, it would take some time to achieve the next alchemy recipe, of which he had no idea what kind it would be. In any case, once the matters with the Baima aristocrat clan had been settled, he would take King King and King Yu to tame some demonic beasts. If she were to have a demonic beast of her own, then she might cheer up and feel happier. Time passed in a blink of an eye. 
Autumn had gone and thus came winter. The leaves on the trees had withered. Soon another month had passed. Strangely, the Bima aristocrat clan hadn't showed up yet. The Heavenly Palace had already set up their own information system that was capable of receiving crucial news in the Green Cloud continent in a short amount of time. Information regarding other continents would be received as well, albeit slower than in Green Cloud continent. In other news, Luin Luin had finally achieved a breakthrough to Martial Saint, adding another Martial Saint warrior to the King Clan. Most importantly, Luin Luin was a member of the fourth generation, which meant that she had become the youngest martial saint in the King clan. The heart of seven orifices was indeed a wondrous artifact. Once she had become a martial saint, her powers were boosted to the terrifying amount of 180 countries of strength, which was stronger than when King Shui had just broken through the realm of a martial saint. Essentially, she could be regarded as a grade 1 martial saint with that level of strength. The breakthrough this time had increased her ability significantly, including her spiritual energy as well. To be concise, the breakthrough had an impact on her control over her demonic beasts. In other words, the number of demonic beasts she could tame, her ability to tame demonic beasts, was in correlation to the amount of spiritual energy she could contain. The stronger her spiritual energy was, the more the demonic beasts she could tame, thus strengthening her ability as well. Based on his sources, the Bima aristocrat clan had already started their journey to the Heavenly Palace, but would only reach the Heavenly Palace in about a week. By the time King Shui had received the news, there would have been four days left until their arrival. Numerous giant flying beasts soared through the sky in a swift motion. There were about five people on each flying beast, with the leading gigantic black crane carrying five elderly men on its back. These old men wore full clothing in black with the lining an image of a white horse. The flying beasts were of the dark crane species. These dark cranes were all peak martial saints with the ability to spout the yin flame towards their opponents. The yin flame was a terrifying and deadly flame that simply couldn't be doused with water. With this ability alone, the dark crane was deemed to be one of the most terrifying flying beasts in the world. The dark crane was also a flying beast of extraordinary speed. Old ancestor, you don't have to go personally for such a meager matter as this one. One of the old men on the leading dark crane said to the leader with a smile. Chapter 798. Dai Chen and Dai King, bewildered. Old ancestor, actually, there's no need for you to do anything about things like this. The elderly man on the dark crane smiled at the old man in front. Hong Chang and the others are in trouble. To be able to put them in trouble without any information leaking, this just goes to show that the enemies are really formidable. We know too little about Heavenly Palace and the rumored young man. I have been having a feeling that things aren't right. The elderly man's eyes slowly brightened up as he looked afar. Old ancestor, don't you think that you're overestimating the young man and the Heavenly Palace? The other old man chuckled. How far off is San Lang's strength compared to yours? Despite this, he still got into trouble. Hong Hai, do not ever underestimate any of your opponents. Even though Zuoshi clan isn't like us Bima clan, if they were really eliminated by one person, that person would definitely be someone we shouldn't underestimate because even I myself wouldn't dare to challenge Zuoshi clan alone. The old man said in a calm tone without any sign of emotions in his words. All right, old ancestor, so what's the plan this time? Baima Hunghai looked at the old man and asked in suspicion. We'll talk about it by then. There are times when fighting isn't the best solution. Judging from the old man's wise expression, it could be felt that he was reminiscing about something. King Shui. When King Shui heard someone calling out for him, 
He turned around and noticed Dai King approaching him from not so far away with a faint smile across her bewildering beautiful face. King Shui didn't exactly know why but he felt a bit panicked upon seeing her. The first time he met her was in that dreamland, a fantasy land similar to that of being in a dream among a sea of flowers, except the location of the fairyland was Furniture City in Southern City. It was only after that that he knew she was the protector of Sword Tower, Sword Demon Huang King. Huang King. This was her pseudonym. At the time when her sister was in the Heavenly Palace, she intentionally became the guard of Sword Tower to get close to her sister. Similarly, both King Shui and the Sword Tower also shared conflicting views with each other at that time. Hence slowly, there were some conflicts that occurred between them. Now, he became her brother-in-law. But she never addressed him as her brother-in-law. As for the reasons why, even she herself was unclear about it. Miss King. King Shui smiled. Why are you still calling me by that? It feels so distant. Dai King smiled. The alluring expression she showed on her face gave her a kind of unreal beauty similar to Dai Chen's faintly discernible aura. Well then, why don't you address me as your brother-in-law? In any case, everyone already knows about the relationship between your sister and I. King Shui chuckled at Dai King. Don't even think about it, you must address me as Sister King. If you don't like it, you can also wait until you become a famous person and a warrior who can topple over the world of the nine continents. Only then will I address you as my brother-in-law. Dai King winked and smiled. Her smile looked graceful, indistinct and a bit cunning, looking somewhat similar to Dai Chen's complexion except the traits that they shared were really different. It was a bit inferior to Dai Chen's in terms of looking extraordinary and a bit superior in terms of possessing an elegant and noble aura. I'm okay with you not addressing me as your brother-in-law, but don't you think that this is a bit disrespectful to your sister? King Shui couldn't help but tease her a bit as he saw her cunning face. As expected, Dai King's expression became really unnatural. She looked at King Shui. Even you are forcing me, King Shui, even you. King Shui never thought that Dai King would react so dramatically. In the past, she had been forced once by her dad to do so. It's just that King Shui didn't really care about this. Hence he let her address him any way she liked. Let alone she was also older than him. I'm just kidding, don't take it seriously. King Shui hurriedly responded. However, Dai King's eyes were a bit teary and she looked a bit frustrated. This made King Shui panic and he hurriedly said, Don't cry. Is me addressing you as Sister King not enough? People will think that I'm bullying you if you continue behaving like this. In actuality, King Shui was really not accustomed to seeing a girl frustrated. He quickly tried to comfort her. Unfortunately, he was totally not made to comfort girls. Hence, he hurriedly said something out of formality. You bully me all the time. When Dai King finished speaking, she hugged King Shui tightly. King Shui stunned. He wasn't actually happy that such a beautiful girl hugged him. On the contrary, he panicked. He kept both of his arms down and didn't dare to even move an inch. Sister King, I know that I'm wrong now. Please don't be mad. I'll promise you whatever you want. It'll be bad if others see this. King Shui begged for mercy. HRMP. It's not like you haven't hugged me before. Dai King responded grumpily. Regardless, she still let go of King Shui. She wasn't really sure why she hugged King Shui earlier. Now her face also looked really red. During the last time King Shui went to Central Continent with her, he had no choice but to hug her. Not only so, he even called her a stupid woman. He didn't know that what he did would actually leave such a deep impression in her heart. No one had ever neglected her, nor had there been any men who dared to hug her. 
Furthermore, no one had ever called her a stupid woman. However, King Shui had done all of these before. King Shui didn't do all of these to gain her attention. Of course, Dai King wasn't someone whose attention could be caught merely with these childish methods. The true reason was because King Shui was the man that Dai Chen looked up to. Added on the things which were mentioned previously also had a huge part to do with it as well as the good feelings that she had for King Shui. Naturally, it would pique her interest for him. In addition to that, she could feel that King Shui really didn't have any place for her in his heart. Humans were really weird. No matter what, they would often have a rebellious heart. For example, when a man met two women, these two women were really good friends. But one of the women fell for this man, so much so that she would throw away everything just to go for this man. The other woman on the other hand, she didn't have any feelings for this man. Under this kind of circumstances, it would be very easy for the man to develop feelings for the girl who didn't like him. This actually had a huge part to do with human psychology, to be rebellious. It might have been because those that were easy to get weren't precious and that the one that was relatively harder to attain would forever be superior, because they would never know how attaining them felt. King Shui was stunned by Dai King's words. He said helplessly, you also hugged me earlier too. So now, we're even. By the time King Shui finished speaking, he realized that things were really bad. Originally, he was only planning to joke around but he felt that things have gone worse. King Shui, am I really that bad? Do you really hate me that much? Dai King looked at King Shui. This time, tears started dropping down her snow-white skin. King Shui didn't know what to do. This time, he realized that he has really said the wrong thing. He panicked and immediately hugged her. Why would I hate you? So even an extreme beauty like you would be so uncertain with yourself. Do I look pretty? Dai King raised her head and asked King Shui. Pretty, really pretty extremely pretty. Then do you like me? Do not lie to me. Dai King looked at King Shui and asked. King Shui felt hurt when he saw tear stains on her face. He has a really soft heart. I like beautiful women. Then you like me. Dai King said gently. You are Chen's sister, of course I'll like you. King Shui smiled gently. Don't be so sloppy. I know you know what I mean. Dai King looked at King Shui without blinking. We're close relatives. All right Ching Er, don't go too far. King Shui patted her and said. It's as if this pat woke Dai King up from her dreams. Her face was scarlet red. She glared at King Shui grudgingly and quickly escaped. However, King Shui stood at the side in bewilderment. He felt really confused. At the moment, even if he has been more stupid, he would still be able to tell that Dai King had a thing for him. However, he already has Dai Chen. Even though Dai King looked really beautiful, it didn't necessarily mean that he would need to have her. Even if she had been one of the women on the portraits of beauty, a woman and a man would still need to develop feelings for them to be together. Feelings was something which had to be nurtured over time. However, King Shui didn't want to nurture it. This was because he felt that there were already enough women around him. He didn't have time for more. He didn't want to let his women down. In the end, love was still selfish. At the same time, it was also a wonderful thing. If he really ran into a woman, whom he was willing to sacrifice everything for, he might go after her. The things that Dai King was Dai Chen's sister, he didn't want to leave Dai Chen in an awkward spot. King Shui. King Shui's heart thumped as soon as he heard the voice. He looked at Dai Chen who was approaching him with an unnatural look. She still looked extraordinarily beautiful as before. She looked at King Shui with a gentle smile, making him feel uneasy. Ching'er likes you, Dai Chen said gently. 
Chen Er, you saw it. King Shui said with a bitter smile. Actually, I have already realized that since the time when we were in Dai Clan. Do you like Ching Er? Dai Chen smiled and looked at King Shui. Her eyes looked really natural and calm. King Shui looked at Dai Chen and panicked. Chen Er, you're my woman, you will forever be mine. When Dai Chen heard King Shui's words, she smiled. She looked at him and said gently, Ching Er has always enjoyed fighting over things with me since we were young for reasons unknown. As long as they're things that I like, she would fight with me over it. It's just that I had never expected her to do the same with you. Love is something that has to be agreed by both sides. Chen Er, you can't force it for things like this. King Shui had a feeling that Dai Chen was planning something. Hence, he hurriedly responded. What are you thinking about? King Shui, unless you leave me, I won't leave you. Do you really not like Ching Er? Dai Chen looked at King Shui and asked. I love you but I don't feel the same with her. King Shui shook his head and smiled. Dai Chen gently smiled and pulled King Shui. I'm saying, if you like Ching Er, I wouldn't mind. Now, King Shui really didn't know what Dai Chen meant. He looked at the extraordinary woman in front of him in bewilderment. Even at the time when King Shui hugged her, he still felt really distant from her. It was only at the time when he met Dai Chen at the dream among the sea of flowers that he felt like there were no secrets between them. King Shui, I'm leaving. Dai Chen's words made King Shui feel as if he just stepped on an explosive mine. He looked at Dai Chen in shock and for a moment, felt that his mind went blank. Don't be like that, King Shui, I won't leave you. After the things with Bima aristocratic clan is done, I'll be gone for a while but I'll come back. Dai Chen touched King Shui's lifeless face and said gently, Did you run into any troubles? Tell me, I'll come and help you. King Shui frenetically grabbed both of her arms. Don't worry King Shui, I'll tell you about it once the issues with Baima aristocratic clan is solved. All right. Dai Chen smiled. Despite this, King Shui could tell that she wasn't feeling that calm. All right, but if anything happens, you have to tell me. I mean, if you happen to run into any troubles. King Shui said seriously. I'll tell you everything. Dai Chen chuckled. Chapter 799. Great Perfection of Mighty Elephant Stomp, The Powerful Rock Form. Dai Chen's matter was akin to a rock pressing on King Shui's heart. This made Dai Chen feel as if she had done something wrong, that she shouldn't have said it so early to him. At least, she felt that they should talk about it after settling the Baima aristocratic family. King Shui thought about Dai King's previous behavior. Could it be that she knew that Dai Chen was about to leave? Rubbing his head, he carried a heavy heart as he entered the realm of the Violet Immortal. Cultivate. The 10,000-year cold steel needle and pearl had already been completely laced with poison. King Shui kept him appropriately away, as after all he still had to rely on them. Elephant Form. King Shui did not mind displaying the elephant form. However, there was a stifled frustration within his thoughts. This was all due to having heard the news that Dai Chen was about to leave. Ah, King Shui faced the heavens within the realm of the Violet Immortal and roared. He was not afraid of people hearing in this place. Furiously taking a step forward, mighty elephant stomp. This was a random empty space within the realm of the Violet Immortal. There were no medicinal herbs planted here. This had become a training ground for King Shui. This was added to his incomparable confidence with the realm of the Violet Immortal. With a strong and powerful, self-regenerative, power, as long as King Shui wanted to, it would quickly self-regenerate. If King Shui did not want to keep the poison nurturing pond, it would definitely change back to its original form. 
Everything here was under his full control. Bang! A gigantic cloud of black key exploded out, as an enormous chasm appeared within the realm of the Violet Immortal. The imposing grandeur felt extremely familiar to Lin Dong. Boundary of great perfection. Great perfection of the mighty elephant stomp. The next thing that happened was ecstasy to King Shui. Only by achieving the boundary of great perfection was he able to summon a trampling elephant. Wanting to prove his thought he immediately trampled on the air, summoning a trampling elephant out again. Seeing the image of a trampling elephant that looked similar to his diamond gigantic elephant trampling out, King Shui became so emotional he started to tremble. Finally he had achieved it. The mighty elephant stomp had achieved great perfection. The mighty elephant stomp was able to magnify ten times the user's base strength when at great perfection. However, since King Shui's base strength was at 3,100 counties, even with the mighty elephant stomp at great perfection, he could only display slightly more than three stars worth of power. It was difficult to put it to use in combat. However regardless of that this accidental breakthrough made King Shui feel happy and joyous. In the future, when he became stronger and his base strength increased, the might of the mighty elephant stop would also rise. Furthermore his current combat prowess had doubled. Regardless of whether it was able to be used in combat, finally breaking through was a matter to feel happy about. In addition, he still needed to work hard training and breakthrough in the other skills. Feeling happy, King Shui continued to display the mighty elephant stomp in mid-air within the realm of the Violet Immortal. The realm was very special. If not this small space would have ruptured and exploded due to the immense energies radiating within it. King Shui did not worry about that. Even the diamond gigantic elephant displaying the mighty elephant stomp did not lead to any trouble. The mighty elephant stomp displayed by it was stronger than his. Therefore, King Shui was not afraid that his strength would do any damage to the realm of the Violet Immortal. Explosive bangs resounded within it as King Shui continued to display the mighty elephant stomp. The firebird, diamond gigantic elephant, and the rest of the demonic beasts did not panic as they knew it was King Shui behind the ruckus. Although the intelligence of demonic beasts was not on the same level as humans, they were, were much smarter than the wild beasts in his previous life. After all, King Shui was able to establish some simple communication and mental exchanges with them. Although the might of the mighty elephant stomp was slightly lacking, King Shui was happy as he could train the next martial art within the nine animals mimicry, rock form. This was something that King Shui had been looking forward to for a very long time. After all, it was ranked above the elephant form. At least it shouldn't be weaker than it. Furthermore, this allowed for King Shui to faintly grasp onto something. The rock form was one of the last three forms. He had left the seventh, eighth and ninth heavenly layer for the ancient strengthening technique, while there was the seventh, eighth and ninth level for the realm of the violet immortal. This was also the same as the nine waves great golden Buddha palm. All of these seemed to have an invisible line of connection tying him together. If he could train in the rock form of the nine animals mimicry, was this a sign that he could already start to open a gap in the rest? This should be a very good start. Thinking that he should train the rock form, King Shui hurriedly entered his sea of consciousness. If he could train in the rock form now, and in addition achieve a small accomplishment in it, it might have a positive impact when he crossed blades with the Bima aristocratic family in the future. Ha ha, I've finally learned it. King Shui looked at the familiar picture lighting up and could not resist but to shout it out. That was a big golden rock that was spreading its wings and flying. Below it were two fighting skills that were drawn in green. The rest of them were in green and could not be seen clearly. 
This did not affect King Shui's state of mind. There was no need for more as if one were to train one technique to its finest one could also dominate the nine continents. However this was too difficult. Therefore it was always good to have more skills. Although the Bhima aristocratic family would rush here in three to four days, with the realm of the violet immortal, he had approximately half a year's worth of time. Therefore there was a possibility for him to achieve small accomplishment in the rock form by that time. Small success, large success, great perfection, these three boundaries. It was still relatively easy to achieve small success. If used properly, half a year's worth time was adequate for it. As for the previous forms that King Shui had learned, the time he took to achieve small accomplishment did not even take half a year. However, the large accomplish and great perfection boundaries not only required time, they required a strong comprehension of the form. King Shui set his gaze on the first combat move. The name was very simple. Great Rock Spreading Wings. After looking over a shot of it, King Shui was stunned. This was too powerful. Great Rock Spreading Wings. The special flying ability of the Great Rock. Capable of shooting its user 90,000 kilometers in the air. Small accomplishment. Increase movement and attacking speed by a fold. Large accomplishment. Increase movement and attacking speed by 500%. Great perfection. Increase movement and attacking speed by 1000%. Passive combat ability. Zero consumption. Powerful. Heaven defying. Only after looking over it three times did King Shui confirm that he had indeed made no mistakes in reading it. He knew that the Great Rock was extremely good at flying. However never did he think that it would actually have a percentage increase that was similar to the mighty elephant stomp of the elephant form. If he were to train it to great perfection, wouldn't it mean that his traveling and attacking speed would increase many fold? Furthermore, it was hard to gauge the increase in strength, so speed was considered power. However, once King Shui thought back about the mighty elephant stomp and how many years it had dragged on before he had managed to achieve great perfection, he knew that this rock form would not be easy to learn. This was King Shui's feeling. Nevertheless, he placed his goal on achieving small accomplishment first. As long as he could break through into that boundary, a fold increase in speed would be adequate for his strength to exceed his current strength. This was a result that was akin to consuming a gale pill. Feeling emotional, King Shui quietly made up his mind to try his best to achieve small accomplishment in it before the arrival of the Bhima aristocratic family. This kind of speed would completely increase his advantage and chances of victory. If his speed was absolutely fast enough, a single poison needle would be able to cripple all of his enemies. If his great rock spreading wings was estimated to be able to achieve that, King Shui knew that the difficulty of the large accomplishment of the rock form would at least be as difficult as the mighty elephant stomp. It was good to have something to strive for. This could also be considered a goal and was better than something that cannot be improved by training. King Shui did not wish to waste time. Hurriedly continuing to look below the green drawings, where the training methods were described. King Shui jumped away and proceeded to look at the next combat move. If the next one listed here was not a good combat move, he would temporarily put it aside for the time being and focus all of his time on learning the Great Rock Spreading Wings. Heart of the Great Rock. This was the name of the second combat move, before he hurriedly continued to read on. Heart of the Great Rock. A power technique requires a strong heart. Abilities that possess the heart of the Great Rock will increase the strength of the five elements and increase lethality of magic. Achieving small accomplishment would double lethality. Achieving large accomplishment would increase lethality by fivefold. Passive combat move. 
zero consumption. This time, King Shui was shocked till he gawked for a while. This rock form was really abnormal. The heart of the great rock was actually a combat move for demonic beasts. Although humans could also learn it, one would be required to know the corresponding magic attacks. For example, the primal chaos fireball that King Shui knew was considered a magical attack. A large portion of demonic beasts knew how to launch magical attacks. For example the firebird's nether fireball, the diamond gigantic elephant's diamond sword key, the thunderous beast's thunderbolt, the jade emperor queen bee's poison killer sting. All of these were magical attacks. In actual fact there were quite a few people within the nine continents that knew how to launch magical attacks, however, the might of their magical attacks was not large. There were many alchemists that used their flame of Xianxian to refine medicine. There was a relationship between the might of magic and spirit energy and also with the skills. For example, due to King Shui's skill and spirit energy, his primal chaos fireball was very strong. Therefore the importance of the Great Rock's heart was no less than the Great Rock spreading wings. Thinking about the multiple increases in might in the primal chaos fireball, King Shui realized that both the nine animals mimicry and the realm of the violet immortal seemed to have an intimate connection with himself. For example the Great Rock's heart. King Shui felt that there would be nobody that would thirst more for this combat technique. This is good, felt King Shui. If he trained in both of them together, anyone that breaks through would give him a substantial increase in combat prowess. Instantly King Shui felt his whole body surging with fighting spirit. No wasting any more time. King Shui immediately started on reading the Great Rock Spreading Wings and the Great Rock's Heart. He had a method used when starting to learn a new technique. He would definitely analyze and understand its intricacies before starting to practice the form. In this way, it was much easier to practice and was hard for any problems to arise. Understanding its intricacies and comprehending were two different things one could still train without comprehension. One might be able to break through during training. On the other hand, understanding its intricacies would allow for easier familiarity. King Shui spent her hour's worth of time on those pretty, short, descriptive writings before slowly retreating away from his consciousness. The day's worth of time had already passed within the realm of the Violet Immortal before King Shui started to slowly train. For the remaining time King Shui had naturally spent a large portion of it on learning the Great Rock Spreading Wings and the Great Rock's Heart. As for the other things, he spent a very small amount of time on them. King Shui's learning process was very fast. With so many years of training coupled with a pretty good comprehension ability, it was still possible for him to achieve his goals. However, achieving a small accomplishment would still require time. The hope of breaking through in half a year was very large. However it was not definite. Time passed slowly, day after day with King Shui continuously traveling to and fro from into the realm of the Violet Immortal. The fluttering of his figure was brimming with explosive power, as he dashed forward in a strange manner. It gave an indescribable feeling as if power and overbearingness were not in complete harmony. King Shui had already trained his great rock spreading wings to a very familiar degree. This was just the result of half a month. During this half a month, King Shui had split his time up properly. Every day he would only rest for two hours. This included the time he spent on eating. To him, this was adequate. For the rest of the ten hours, four of them would be used to train the Great Rock Spreading Wings, four of them would be used to train the Great Rock's Heart, while the remaining two would be used to train other skills. Chapter 800. Hard to guess what the person was thinking. Three days, 
rock spreading wings at the small success stage. Under such a situation, time passed by very quickly. Very soon, it was already time for King Shui to leave the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. However, he was very happy. Even though he had yet to reach a breakthrough to the small success stage for both the rock spreading wings and the heart of rock, he was already extremely familiar with both of them. King Shui was quite satisfied with his progress. Before it was time to leave the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal, King Shui had sufficient rest and thus would not rest after he had exited, but would do some other things. When he left his room, he saw Ye Jiang in the distance. King Shui. When Ye Jiang saw King Shui, she smiled and called out to him. King Shui smiled and walked over. Dai Chen gave the feeling of one who transcended the human world, while Ye Jiang gave one the feeling of spiritual secularism. Jiang. King Shui could now easily and casually call out her name, but his respect for her had not changed primarily because of Luin Luin. Now, she still needed to act the role of his wife. For Luin Luin, King Shui did not stop this, but he felt that it was very unfair toward her. It was nothing to him to have her as a wife in name but for her. The thought of marrying Ye Jiang had never crossed King Shui's mind, as he felt that it would be a form of blasphemy. It was because he was once her disciple and to King Shui, she was his master, even though she had not taught him much stuff. Ye Jiang smiled and looked at King Shui. You've come out. Come join me and let's go out for a walk. I can't ask for anything better. King Shui smiled and replied. Ye Jiang smiled and her eyes squinted slightly. The charm of that gaze was unrivaled, but it was good that King Shui's immunity toward beauties was now quite good. Moreover, this lady had been one he has been carefully caring for. However, he still fell into a momentary daze. Jiang, um, did you have any guy you liked before? After asking this question, King Shui realized that this seemed to be the second time he has asked this. No, Ye Jiang said outright before looking at King Shui, with a shadow of her smile. King Shui was stunned to discover that there was a hint of cuteness in her gaze. I feel that it was too unfair for you to be putting on an act with me as husband and wife. For Luin Luin, your sacrifice is too big. King Shui said, I don't feel like I've made any sacrifice. I'm very happy, Ye Jiang continued to reply calmly. Jiang, you've never thought of getting married and having your own children. You seem to like kids a lot too. Haven't you thought of having kids of your own? King Shui had no intentions of blasphemy, nor did he hold any evil thoughts. He just felt that if this were to continue, she would remain alone all her life. After all, they were just husband and wife in pretense. In the future, when he had even more kids, he might end up neglecting her at times. By that time, both Dai Chen and Wenren Wushuang would be his women and she might not feel at ease to be here. However, he felt a little uncomfortable at the thought of her belonging to another man. He didn't know why he had that thought either. Ye Jiang looked at King Shui's sincere expression and didn't know what she was feeling. She liked children but that didn't mean that she needs to have kids of her own. In King Clan, she does play with King Zun and Qin Yin very often and also carried King Ming and King Yan very often. She felt very happy with her current life. But when King Shui brought up the point of her having her own children, she just realized this issue. The heavy burden of vengeance she had been carrying had made her lose any thoughts of her getting married and having her own children. She had never considered this before, nor did she consider that she wanted to fall in love with another man. Although everything was very normal for her, she had subconsciously neglected this issue. Ye Jiang's silence made King Shui panic. However, 
Not long later, she smiled. Luin Luin is our daughter. Let's not talk about this first. Jiang, if you have a guy you like, you must tell me. Luin Luin has grown up and she'll always be our daughter. King Shui smiled and said. Ye Jiang shook her head. I won't have a guy I'll fall in love with. We can't separate either. Otherwise, Luin Luin will feel very upset. All right, then let's not split up. Not ever. I'll care for you like a woman I love the most. King Shui said softly. His sincere gaze made Yi A Jiang's heart throb. This line was very flirty, but she felt extremely touched. He had been treating her well for all these years, but seeing how more and more ladies were appearing next to him, each of them so outstanding, she suddenly realized one thing. He did not like her. She recalled how there were heartwarming moments between them and there were even times when her heart would throb. However, he had never shown her any obvious signs. What's wrong? Why would I be thinking of all this? Yi A Jiang blushed and she lowered her head slightly. King Shui saw Yi A Jiang's expression and thought that it was because of what he had said earlier. He quickly explained, I didn't mean it that way. To me, you're still my master. I don't have that intention at all. Hearing King Shui's explanation, Yi A Jiang sighed in her heart, but she still kept up a smile. It's fine. I understand. The two of them headed to the back of the mountain behind Heavenly Palace Mountain. Although Heavenly Palace had once been three feet into the ground, the mountain at the back was still the same as before. The familiar area that belonged to Gung Sun Janwu was no longer there. He wondered if that seductive looking lady was fine. The north wind blew, sending Yi A Jiang's dress fluttering slightly. When King Shui and Yi A Jiang were together, they didn't often share their thoughts. He didn't understand what Yi A Jiang was thinking, nor did he know what she wanted. The matter with heading to Lion King's Ridge as well. He had not gotten her to admit it herself. No matter how much he had powered up, she had never brought it up before. King Shui felt that it was because the gap he had with Lion King's Ridge was still too wide. Jiang, just wait a while more. It'll be soon. King Shui chose to sound very vague with his words. King Shui, promise me, don't think too much over my issues. The reason I told you was to let my heart feel at ease for a moment. I've never thought of realizing my own dreams. I've already buried it deep at the bottom of my heart. Yi A Jiang smiled and said. Haven't you seen Luan Luan's progress? Won't Luan Luan be able to do it in the future? King Shui seemed to have caught on to something and he looked at Yi A Jiang. Lion King's Ridge is a great sect in Wisteria Continent. It's impossible to seek for justice to be done. And Luin Luin still need a very, very long time. Moreover, it's just a hope. With her lifespan, it's difficult. Yi A Jiang shook her head. Although she was not that clear about the level of Lion King's Ridge, she had some idea of it. There were many powerful members in the sect and all of them were strong beast tamers. Lion King's Ridge might have the heart of seven orifices, but it's not possible for her to be able to reach the same level in just a day or two. She still need to come across a great opportunity. How terrifying is Lion King's Ridge? Jiang, you know about it, right? King Shui frowned and looked at Yi A Jiang. I'm not sure and I can't say it clearly either. You'll know when you get stronger. Yi A Jiang seemed to have wanted to say more but she didn't. Breakthrough, I must have a breakthrough. King Shui told himself. In 10 years, he must be able to reach a height he was satisfied with in 10 years. He would then be able to know how deep the waters in the world of the nine continents were. You're still carrying the moonstone I gave you. Yi A Jiang looked at the silver chain around King Shui's neck and that faint view of that stone. She could tell at one look that it was what she had given to him back then. With his abilities now, 
he could carry along stones that were of much higher quality than the one she had given him. But seeing how he was still carrying the one she had given him, she didn't know what she was feeling. This stone had saved my life before, had given me a great encounter, and this was also something you had given me. King Shui looked at the moonstone and said happily, Am I that important? Ye Zhang smiled and looked at King Shui. She might not know why she had asked this question, nor did she know what kind of answer she would like to hear. She had once told him not to call her master and to have him treat her like a lady, a lady like any other around him. It was just that he seemed to have forgotten about it. To be honest, she was very lonely and had wanted a friend whom she could share her heartfelt thoughts with. She had even thought of forgetting her past to start a new life, find a suitable man to live with. However, this seemed to be very difficult. The things that had happened had forced her to where she was right now and she could not draw herself out of it. Important, very important. King Shui was saying the truth, but he didn't know how to reply. This was why he repeated his answer twice, in order to emphasize the importance of what he had said. Compared to them, Yi e Jiang smiled. The same. You're the mother to my child. I've honestly treated you like the mother to my child. King Shui looked at Yi e Jiang and said gently. Really? Yi e Jiang smiled and asked. Of course it's the truth. King Shui affirmed. Then you must treat me better in the future. Treat me like one of your women. Yi e Jiang smiled faintly and said. King Shui nodded mechanically but didn't know the true meaning behind those words. Two days passed by very quickly. King Shui was moving about non-stop in the realm of the violet jade immortal. His eyes shut tight, his legs stepping about at rapid speed and his upright and long silhouette dashed about elusively. That speed seemed to be even faster than when he had taken the gale pellet. Ha ha ha! To think that the rock spreading wings at the small success stage could already bring me such effects. King Shui came to an abrupt stop and laughed out loud. He was too happy. Now, King Shui was at the stage of solidifying his progress. He had just made the breakthrough and thus needed more time to familiarize himself with it before continuing to work hard to cultivate the heart of rock. It was because the heart of rock was about to reach a breakthrough too. King Shui hoped that he would be able to attain it as soon as possible. It had been about five months. It was perfectly normal to be using this amount of time. The difficulty to reach the small success stage was the smallest and therefore he would be able to reach a breakthrough for most martial arts to this stage. It was different for the large success stage where the difficulty was higher. It was not something that one could attain just by working hard. However, even though the difficulty was higher, so was the prowess. The difference between the prowess of the large success stage and the small success stage was like the gap between that of heaven and earth. Sitting down, cross-legged, King Shui controlled the flames in his hands. The grey-coloured flames now were still flames that were one foot long. However, compared to before, there seemed to be a little more violence in its power. The primordial flames continued to shrink slightly. While it was quiet, anyone would be able to sense that the flames held a terrifying power. This was the changes to the primordial flames after cultivating the Heart of Rock. Chapter 801 the arrival of Bima aristocrat clan, battle, the powerful petal rain under the skies. He controlled the primordial flames in his hands until he ran out of the key of strengthening technique. It was then did King Shui sat down to rest and recover as he contemplated over what had not been done properly and why had the heart of rock not reached the small success stage. King Shui had not managed to bring it to the small success stage even when it was time for him to exit from the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. 
This made him feel a little helpless since the people from Bima aristocrat clan should be coming today. It was already past one o'clock in the morning and King Shui had used up all the time he had in the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. It was a pity that he still wasn't able to bring the Heart of Rock to the small success stage. However, he could still sense that the primordial flame ball's prowess had increased by quite a lot. Of course, it was still far from comparable to if he had achieved the breakthrough and had its prowess increased to become two times stronger. Although he was just a tad away from the small success stage, the increment to its power was only at 20%, but if he were to reach the small success stage, it would be two times as strong as before. Exiting the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal, King Shui laid on the bed. It was already starting to turn bright out. It was already about seven o'clock in the morning. He pushed open the door and left the room. When he went to the backyard, he noticed that there were already quite a number of them. Those who stood closer to King Shui greeted him and then continued with their training. Although the morning sun had not risen fully, there was already a hint of red in the east. King Shui knew that it would not take long for the sun to rise up and he started to practice his Tai Chi. After breakfast, no one spoke, but the atmosphere was clearly different. King Shui knew that it was because the Bima aristocrat clan was coming. He smiled and said to the other, no need to be nervous, it'll be fine. Bima aristocrat clan is after all, a great aristocrat clan. The people coming this time would definitely be stronger than before. King Shui, you must be careful. We can't help you much. King Luo smiled and said helplessly. Grandfather, there's no need for you to worry. Your grandson has the confidence to deal with this. King Shui smiled and said casually. After the meal, everyone went back to their own stuff, but none of them left the residence. Although they appeared very relaxed, no one was actually feeling so. King Shui looked at the sky and then suddenly leaped up to look into the far distance, waiting for the Bima aristocrat clan to come. He hoped to be able to get this settled as soon as possible. After this event, King Shui felt that he would really be able to relax for quite a bit of time. He planned to use this break to slow down and strengthen his martial techniques. Time passed by very slowly. King Shui was not anxious but just looked into the distance calmly. When he saw a few black dots flying toward them, he immediately went forth. He hoped that they could at least not fight above King Residence, or even, not above Heavenly Palace. However, he couldn't leave too far away either. Daddy, Luin Luin shouted at King Shui stepping in the air to stand next to him. She was already a martial saint and now, standing next to him, her excited face appeared to be slightly flushed. Luin Luin, hold on to this. King Shui passed a few gale pellet to her and then called out for the diamond gigantic elephant. He let her sit on the diamond gigantic elephant and also had the 10,000 poisonous violet sable sit next to her. Lass, later on, no matter what happens, don't come down. King Shui also stood on the elephant and said, Him, Daddy, can I call out my earth devouring mice and heavenly fire armored rock bear? Luin Luin asked excitedly, Of course you can. You need to rely on them in the future. King Shui smiled and said before looking at the large black bird which was closing in. Dark Crane. After seeing clearly what the opponent's demonic beast was, King Shui did not say anything but rook out the soul shake bell which had already leveled. After giving it some thought, he decided to use it later. After all, things would not be able to end peacefully between them and since that was the case, he might as well take action first. Luin Luin, call out your demonic beasts. Later on, wait for my signal and just attack. King Shui said to Luin Luin. Him, 
Luan Luan excitedly called out her demonic beasts. The five large dark crane got increasingly closer and the people on top of them also came within sight. Almost all of them were elderly and even those who were Yuzhe were not that much younger themselves and were over a hundred years old. They really think very highly of themselves. These should be the best elites of the Baima aristocrat clan. When King Shui saw their setup, he immediately unleashed his killing intent at full powers. When King Shui saw these people, he was not worried in the least. He was fully prepared. And other than the old man in the lead, who might be a little tricky to handle, he had the means to settle the others within a short period of time. Ning. King Shui called out the firebird and then fed it a gale pellet. He held Luin Luin's wrist and in an instant, appeared on the firebird's back. It's better to stay on the firebird, it's safer here. Feed it one of that pill I gave you earlier once every 15 minutes. Remember, don't come down. You just need to command you earth-devouring mice to work together with me. I'll listen to what daddy says. Luin Luin hugged King Shui and said happily, softly patting Luin Luin on the head, King Shui returned to be back on the diamond gigantic elephant. By then, the other group had already stopped 200 meters away. Cultivators had great vision and hearing. Moreover, those large flying demonic beasts took up quite a large space in the air. Right now, both parties were staring at each other. King Shui had seen him earlier. The old man in the lead was a little tricky to deal with but he didn't feel as strong as the old man with the dragon-headed cane. And although the others were strong as well, to the current King Shui, they were nothing. Baima Chufeng looked at the young man and his pupils contracted. He felt that this person was extremely dangerous. And when his gaze landed on the girl on the firebird, he could tell with one glance that Luin Luin was very young and that she was a martial saint. Elementary martial saint. Although she was only an elementary martial saint, the old man felt that she was another demonical existence like that young man. She had over ten demonic beasts around her. Each of them had the level of a grade four martial saint or higher. Most importantly, they were earth-devouring mice. Get to it. The old man suddenly let out a loud bellow and five dark crane immediately flew toward King Shui. King Shui didn't expect this old man to be so decisive and to be so vicious. Thankfully, he was prepared and with two whistles, the firebird quickly retreated. At the same time, King Shui shook his soul shake bell toward the five large dark crane. King Shui had great confidence in the soul shake bell. Almost the same moment he had shook it, the diamond gigantic elephant unleashed a mighty elephant stomp. Instantaneous diamond evasion. King Shui looked at the effects of his attacks. Out of the five dark crane, one died on the spot, one escaped, one went into frenzy, attacked the people around it and was slammed dead by the old man. Another old man who had been caught unaware had his head smashed by its sharp claws. When King Shui retreated, he saw them scattering out and then grouping back together and charging toward King Shui. At this moment, King Shui threw out the most deadly area attack he had with his hidden weapons. Petal rain under the skies. The pitch black 10,000 years cold steel needles shot out with a loud wailing voice. King Shui was the most confident with his hidden weapon attacks. To dare to challenge a great aristocrat clan, what he could rely on was his poison and hidden weapons. The solitary rapid fist which King Shui had picked up very very long ago was targeted toward having flexible hands and was the foundations for King Shui's hidden weapons. It was also because of this skill that he was able to have such success in his hidden weapon today. 14. When King Shui unleashed the petal rain under the skies, 
the 24 people from the other side split into two batches by the mighty elephant stomp, with six on one side and 18 on another. The target for his petal rain under the skies was the group of 18. 14 of them died on the spot. Although this result was within King Shui's expectation, King Shui secretly felt very happy to be able to wipe out over half of them. This was sufficient to leave a shadow in their hearts. Although the other party was quite stunned by this outcome, they quickly spread out. They did not have much knowledge of such hidden weapons, but still knew a thing or two about them, especially one that covered such a large area. The poison on the hidden weapons were definitely extremely precious, and when they had spread out, it wouldn't be possible for him to use the same technique on every single person. Their guess was right. However, this was what King Shui wanted, for them to be separated. This would give him more opportunities. Since the fight had started, there was no need for them hide anymore. He quickly called out the thunderous beast and brought out the thunder god and the big dipper sword. Just then, the old man in the lead had charged forth. Everything till now happened in just an instant. Seven star armored vest. Vajra subdues demons. Fiery golden eyes. Emperor's key. King Shui no longer had the time to use the heavenly talisman, but these were sufficient. And now, with the state of one with elephant, he unleashed the combination sword technique with the Big Dipper sword. Boom! King Shui, together with the diamond gigantic elephant, was sent flying backward. What had made King Shui happy was that the level of this elder was not comparable to Eastern Palace Aristocrat Clan's old ancestor, at least, not when he was holding the dragon-headed cane. Although he was pushed back, after the old man's abilities were weakened, King Shui's seven-star armored vest was fully able to withstand the attack. As long as he could withstand the attacks, it would not be scary to be faced off against him. It was only now that King Shui had seen the old man's weapons. It was a huge scythe. He had a black gold devil's scythe and evil dragon tooth in the realm of the violet jade immortal, but there was no one around him who uses a scythe. He had thus decided to leave them aside for him to refine weapons in the future. This huge scythe was very similar to the black gold devil's scythe and was even more like the scythe of the death god. The moment he came into contact with it, King Shui could sense a huge throwback trembling force from it. It was another good item. This trembling force could, in a way, increase the elderly's prowess by quite abbot. If not for this trembling force, King Shui would not have to be sent flying and he wouldn't feel any pressure in the slightest. Art of Pursuing After another collision, King Shui used the art of pursuing and leaped up from the diamond gigantic elephant's back. While in midair, he took a gale pellet and his speed increased tremendously. Speed was power. Speed could counter everything. Violet lightning strike. Right now, the thunderous beast next to King Shui paralyzed an elder with a violet lightning strike. Luin Luin immediately commanded her earth-devouring mice to swarm up. Just then, the remaining eight people dashed toward Luin Luin. However, the heavenly fire-armored rock bear let out a huge bellow. A spread of pure red flames landed quickly like rain, stopping the old men in their tracks. Fiery Meteor Shower Chapter 802 Bai Ma Chufeng, A Very Easy Battle Fiery Meteor Shower Although the heavenly fire-armored rock bear wasn't too strong or at least not strong enough for these people, they still didn't dare to get a taste of those falling fireballs with their own bodies. Even when King Shui was in the middle of a battle, he would still constantly monitor Luin Luin's movements closely. He had put away Thunderous Beast after it had unleashed Thunderbolt on a few elderly men. With their speed reduced a little and King Shui's weakening effect, 
The entire battle seemed to have fallen very easily into his control. It did seem very simple, but it was because King Shui had cultivated for very long time to achieve such outcome. If it was converted to the time within the realm of Violet Jade Immortal, the days he spent on cultivation would be too overwhelmingly long. On top of that, his cultivation arts were wide-ranging and profound. It was no coincidence for King Shui to have the achievement he had today. Everything was the outcome of King Shui's hard work. The Baima aristocrat clan was inferior to the Eastern Palace aristocrat clan. However, what they didn't know was that King Shui had eliminated the Eastern Palace clan solely by himself. If they did, they wouldn't dare to provoke him no matter how courageous they were. Baima Chu Feng, the old ancestor from the Baima aristocrat clan, was really regretting this right now. It was a disgrace that there were already casualties in the Baima aristocrat clan. The moment he laid his eyes on the youth, he had already sensed killing intent and the potential danger lurking within the youth. This was why he had decided to strike first without the slightest hesitation. But he had no idea if it was a wise decision or a mistake. The decision he had made was spilt water that could not be taken back. He had no other choice but to fight until his death today. Luin Luin sat on the back of Firebird. Firebird would constantly breathe out powerful nether balls. King Shui had also ordered the diamond gigantic elephant to stay beside Firebird and perform a mighty elephant stomp from time to time. This was quite destructive. Luin Luin had the crimson dragon bow that King Shui had given to her before in her hands. She would shoot at the few elderly men from time to time without much expectation as her attacks were all dodged by them. Old and useless. Not only that, you've made such bad decisions. I wonder how you will face your ancestors. King Shui snorted coldly as he shot out a 1000 years frosted iron ball from his hand. Meteor smash. The moment he forced the old man to fall back, he suddenly dashed towards the remaining few elderly men while yelling out to Luin Luin to watch out. A grey flame suddenly materialized in between his hands and quickly formed into a fireball. He then unleashed it towards his opponents. The diamond gigantic elephant performed a diamond sword key followed by instantaneous diamond evasion before it dashed towards the elderly man who had been locked on. The rest attempted to attack the diamond gigantic elephant. However, King Shui's primordial flame ball had already caught up to them. Boom! The elderly men that had been locked on were powerless to resist and were sent flying by diamond gigantic elephants attack. On top of that the primordial flame balls that had been scattered collided against each other right at this moment. The diamond gigantic elephant had already left long ago. The disintegrated primordial flame balls scattered in all directions. Although the opponents had scurried backwards, two unfortunate elderly men's necks were scorched and they died instantly on the spot. One of the elderly men who moved backwards got into trouble with Luin Luin's seven earth devouring mice instead. The pitiful elderly man's eyes widened in fright. Although he struggled with all his might, it was difficult for his weakened strength to resist the attacks of the earth-devouring mice. Baima Chufeng was so pissed that he almost vomited blood. He abandoned King Shui and rushed towards Luin Luin. King Shui was already on his guard. There was no way he'd let him do as he wished. Two primordial flame balls were sent to block Baima Chufeng's way. The opponent evaded them and pressed onwards. Three ten thousand cold steel needles arranged in a triangular formation were shot out towards the elderly man. At this moment, he was already standing in between the elderly man and Luin Luin as he calmly sent out a descending heaven's talisman. It was a descending heaven's talisman with perfect accuracy, only that the effect wasn't really that impressive. 
There were only six elderly men left, including this old ancestor of the Baima aristocrat clan. King Shui was less pressured. This clan was powerless in the face of five-colored poison. If his opponents could withstand his five-colored poison, he would really not have any chance in winning. Evildoer. You are an evildoer. Baima Chufeng shouted loudly. By now he had witnessed the consequences of the Baima clan and was shouting unwillingly. What comes around, goes around. You should be aware of this. King Shui told the old man in a cold voice. To think that you actually used poison this way. I have miscalculated. Baima Chufeng's words were pale and weak. Some poison in the world of the nine continents were gaseous, but they had a spreading process. People with stronger strength would be able to evade because the more poisonous poison were usually vibrant in color, unless they couldn't move. As long as a peak martial saint cultivator could move, he would be able to evade this with no difficulty. Other than that, trying to poison a martial saint through their respiratory tract was basically futile because they were able to hold their breath. Most poison cultivators applied poison on their weapons, some also used hidden weapons like King Shui did. With their decent speed and force, people naturally taught themselves about how to handle hidden weapons. But he had never seen anyone who used hidden weapons in such a tricky and sinister way like King Shui. It was natural for the old man of this age to have witnessed a lot of similar martial techniques. But the difference between those and the poison weapons that this young man had used were as different as the light of the firefly and the bright moon. He'd evade King Shui's hidden weapons if he could. If he couldn't, he'd deflect them with a weapon, but would quickly pull back. Fortunately the things that his opponent shot out would lose him power after resisting a few times. But even so, this gave him a very bad headache because it made him feel as if he was unable to exert the strength in his body. The earth-devouring mice were also putting on the terrifying performance. With their extremely formidable endurance, absurd sped and their corroding bite, they were able to take away one peak martial saint cultivator's life. The heavenly fire armored rock bear served as a shield in the middle. The remaining four peak martial saint cultivators were utterly tied down by the firebird, diamond gigantic elephant as well as Luin Luin's ten earth devouring mice and the heavenly fire armored rock bear. King Shui breathed a sigh of relief. The odds of winning were already decided between him and the Baima aristocrat clan. He knew he must win, otherwise everything would be over for the heavenly palace and king clan. After they pulled apart from each other once again, the elderly man looked at King Shui and brandished the gigantic sickle in his hands. Nay, a loud and clear neigh of a horse rang out. King Shui's pupils contracted as he stared at the mythical beast beside the elderly man. Its entire body was snow white and was about ten meters long. It had the exact appearance of a white horse that King Shui was familiar with, only that this white horse was fully covered with snow white scales and had a violet horn of about two meters long on its head. What was that? A pegasus? Or a unicorn? King Shui was clueless about this creature. It had the strength of about one star, which was considerably powerful. What was the relationship between this creature and the Baima aristocrat clan? This was a white horse right? Just when King Shui was still clueless about this mythical beast of one star, that, white horse, let out a clear and loud neigh. A faint glow appeared on the Baima aristocrat clan's old ancestor as it gradually became apparent, enveloping the elderly man in its protection. Baima protection. TL note. Baima also means white horse. Die, brat. The elderly man brandished the sickle in his hands as he once again rushed towards King Shui. King Shui abruptly shot out a 10,000 years frosted iron ball. On top of it, 
It was launched out with his full strength, while he locked onto his opponent. Bang! Out of King Shui's expectation, the Baima aristocrat clan's old ancestor, actually made no efforts to dodge and he instead endured this attack. What made King Shui more surprised was that his attack was steadily resisted by the white glow on the elderly man's body. Sweat instantly formed on King Shui's forehead. What could this be? An invincible state? Or was there a limit to that layer of protection? If this rendered his hidden weapons techniques and poison ineffective, not only him, but Luan Luan would also be in danger. For a moment, King Shui was as anxious as an ant on a hot pan. He was resisting his opponent's attacks and trying to think up of something at the same time. If his opponent actually cast this protection, then he would definitely have a killing technique. Ha ha ha! Let's see if you have any more tricks up your sleeves today. No need to hold back. The elderly man laughed maniacally as he once again dashed towards King Shui. The gigantic sickle in his hands swept towards King Shui leaving a trail of black flames. King Shui squinted and the field of his vision narrowed. At the abrupt wave of his right hand, a 10,000 years cold steel needle was violently shot outwards and flew towards the elderly man's sickle. King Shui wiped the trace of blood at the corner of his mouth, but a smile broke across his face instead. It seemed like the halo on his opponent's body was not invincible after all. It just had an extremely formidable resistance. The 10,000 years cold steel needle that was as fine as an ox hair from earlier had actually managed to penetrate an inch into the halo. It was a pity that it wasn't able to make a contact with the opponent's body. Nevertheless, this outcome had shocked the elderly man and also allowed King Shui to breathe a sigh of relief. That needle pierce from just now had caused the halo to quiver slightly. This had let King Shui know that he still had some hope. If it was an invincible state, it'd really be over for him today. King Shui's 10,000 years cold steel needles shot out continuously at different spots. He wanted to find out the weak spot. If he could smash it, then perhaps this layer of protection would collapse. Baima Chufeng seemed to have also realized King Shui's plan. His sickle movements quickened as he closed in aggressively. He wasn't going to let King Shui have any opportunity. Seeing how the elderly man didn't really seem to be in a hurry, King Shui knew that this protection should last for only a short time. He summoned the thunderous beast. Without realizing it, enough time had passed. Violet lightning strike. As soon as thunderous beast was summoned, it dashed in the direction of Luin Luin. As soon as Luin Luin saw the thunderous beast, she knew that her chance was here. Another elderly man was killed by her earth devouring mice with the help of violet lightning strike. King Shui didn't put away the thunderous beast for now this time. He had him continuously attack the remaining three peak martial saint elderly men with its thunderbolt. They weren't able to evade the thunderbolt. At first, they didn't really feel anything. But then they gradually realized that not only their reflexes were getting slower, but also their movements. Unfortunately by the time they had realized this, it was already too late. Mighty Elephant Stomp. The earth-devouring mice also dashed towards the elderly man who had tried to escape by himself. With the great disparity between their speeds, the earth-devouring mice was like a group of terrifying devils to them. The old man watched heart achingly as the Baima aristocrat clan's backbone died one by one with great sadness and sorrow. He turned his head around and locked onto King Shui. The gigantic black sickle in his hands gleamed with an odd silvery white as it hacked towards King Shui. King Shui clenched his jaws. The Big Dipper sword in his hands suddenly vanished as a jet black dagger of about a foot long manifested in its place. Divinity Protection. 
King Shui neither evade nor ran as he let his opponent's sickle land on his shoulder. He waited until it sank into his flesh, before casting the divinity protection technique. The Bima aristocrat clan's old man was also shocked because his attack was evadable. Yet he had no idea why this youth didn't evade. Just when he was shocked, King Shui made his move. At the same time, the elderly man realized that his sickle actually didn't split this brat in half, but was instead deflected. He was alarmed as he shouted, Damn! Inwardly, Bima Chu Feng had quite a lot of faith in this Bima protection. But he didn't know why he was still extremely panicky right now. He simply couldn't shake off the feeling that something terrible was going to happen this time. Poison Dragon Dagger. Extremely poisonous and extremely sharp. The Poison Dragon Dagger in his hand pierced quickly forward. On top of that, it was the Sword of Sixth Wave technique. The old man suddenly felt the Bima protection waver as the waves of energy rushed forth towards him. In that moment, he clearly felt it. He was going to be finished. Chapter 803. Triumphant Victory. A series of wave essence were shot out towards Bima Chufeng. The sixth wave that was shot out abruptly had pierced through the old man. However, it wasn't enough to kill him just yet. King Shui was confounded for a bit. His strength was nearly drained, but he couldn't afford to let this chance by pass by. This was an unmissable opportunity that he had stumbled upon while using the divinity protection on himself. At the same time, the old man shot a vicious stare with a malevolent expression, gripping the scythe and swung it towards King Shui. King Shui was forced to retreat quickly afterwards. As King Shui's thunder god clashed with the old man's scythe, a force of utter rage circulated throughout his body. He was enraged but had no other way to counter Bai Ma Chu Feng's attack. Just as he was about to give up, an enormous power suddenly rose up from his body. The force of rebirth. Break. The compelling force flowed instantaneously into the poison dragon dagger on his hand, then he quickly used his ultimate trump card. Critical damage. Bang! Thump! Despite being knocked backwards by Bai Ma Chu Feng, he allowed a himself satisfied smile as he watched an expression of disbelief slowly emerging from the old man's face. Bai Ma Chu Feng wobbled for a while before he collapsed to the ground. The battle had ended with a total of 25 corpses from the Bima aristocrat clan in under the span of 15 minutes or so. King Shui looked up to the sky with a triumphant smile. It was hard to believe that he had actually won without a hitch. Daddy, we won. Luan Luan jumped onto him gleefully. King Shui hugged his zestful daughter as she jumped into his arms. After all, this was her first time witnessing such battle of high adrenaline. King Shui released his embrace from Luin Luin and said, Go back home and tell everyone the good news. I will take care of this mess in the meantime. All right, Daddy. Luin Luin replied in a happy tone before she bid goodbye to King Shui and left. King Shui descended downwards and picked up some decent weapons and a few interspatial silk sachets. However, he was still confused about one thing. The white horse was nowhere to be found. King Shui had no idea whether it was a demonic beast that Bai Ma Chu Feng had tamed personally or a demonic beast passed down through generations of his clan. Most clans in the world of the Nine Continents had legacies passed down to the descendants, be it the bloodline, the battle skills or guardian beasts. However, this would all be possible under the premise that the, the person passing down the legacy must still be alive. King Shui felt that the legacy passed down to the Bima aristocrat clan was the white horse earlier. When the old man died, the white horse had vanished into thin air. It was just an assumption but the probability of that theory being the truth was quite high. 
Items passed down from generation to generation were typically things of value. The golden bloodlines and violet bloodlines, for example, had a certain chance of passing down to the descendants. Those who inherited such bloodlines would naturally inherit their benefits. Moreover, bloodlines could not be weakened, but they could still vanish from the world should the whole clan be annihilated. Not everyone would be privileged enough to inherit such bloodlines. Amongst ten descendants in a clan, only one would have the chance to inherit the golden bloodline or the violet bloodline. This would explain why aristocratic clans preferred to breed plenteous children and grandchildren, including illegitimate children. As long as they had inherited the precious bloodline, they would be welcome to the clan and be treated with great care and respect. Those with such a bloodline would be able to receive the greatest training and cultivation in the world. After a brief moment of delay, King Shui took his spoils of war and flew back home on his firebird. He couldn't see Luan Luan on his way back, so she must have already gone back to the king residence. King Shui wasn't in a hurry to open the old men's interspatial silk sachets for now. He wasn't particularly interested in them and now wasn't the best time to check their contents just yet. At the very least, the Bima aristocrat clan's old ancestor might have some valuable items inside his interspatial silk sachet. He was in a hurry to go home now, so he planned to open the sachets and check the items carefully after he had entered the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. He had killed 25 people from this battle and with the previous four who came last time, those may be the last few strongest members of the Bima aristocrat clan. They were considered a third-grade aristocratic clan anyway, despite being stronger than the Zuoshi aristocrat clan by a might. Nonetheless, a small difference could still pose a deadly threat. If the Zuoshi aristocrat clan were to challenge the Bima aristocrat clan, it would be normal for the Zuoshi aristocrat clan to lose the battle in this case. When King Shui came back home, it was still late in the morning just before midday. The entire King clan as well as the Heavenly Palace were filled with the atmosphere of celebration. The news of the Bima aristocrat clan's annihilation had traveled throughout the Green Cloud continent in a swift moment. That was the supreme aristocratic clan after all. Just like the Zuoshi aristocrat clan. Everyone in the Green Cloud continent had received the news as soon as the news had been spreaded, including the powerful aristocratic clans in every city of the Green Cloud continent. When the first news regarding the annihilation of the Zuoshi aristocrat clan had spread to every household, there were many who questioned King Shui's ability to defeat such powerful clan. They felt that Lady Luck was on his side when he had managed to destroy an entire clan. But Lady Luck would never bestow such fortune twice to the same man. King Shui couldn't be lucky all the time. So everyone was convinced of his power, as well as the strength of the Heavenly Palace when Bima aristocrat clan had been defeated. King Shui greeted everyone in the King clan with smiles before he went back to his room to wash his body. Cleaning himself after every bloody battle was an old habit of his. When he was done, it was almost afternoon. The King clan had started preparing a variety of delightful dishes as a celebratory feast for King Shui's and Luan Luan's victory. The delicious aroma of the food had traveled throughout the heavenly palace, causing many to salivate for a taste of the food. A number of beast carriages dashed along a wide path in a fast speed. Inside one of the carriages, a middle-aged man spoke to an old man who was closing his eyes, Eighth Lord, do you think the heavenly palace will kill us all? The old man who was being addressed as the Eighth Lord opened his clear yet mismatched eyes, exuding an air of wisdom and defiance through his expression. It was strange to have such eyes for an old man as he. Once we leave the green cloud continent, we will be fine. 
If we keep staying here, we might be killed any day. The old man didn't seem bitter, as if everything was normal. Then are we going to retaliate one day? The middle-aged man asked discreetly. Retaliate? What are you going to retaliate with? We are lucky to be able to keep the Bima clan alive at this point. The Eighth Lord sighed. This day has finally come. And just as I thought, our clan has been cut by a few generations. Eighth Lord spoke while he stared at the scenery outside the beast carriage, as if he was muttering to himself. Ah, does that mean you knew that this day would happen? The middle-aged man asked shockingly. I don't know, but I knew that this day would come sooner or later. Why did you say that? The middle-aged man was confused by the old man's words. The Bima family is corrupt, inside and out. Don't you think that death is imminent for the corrupt people in our clan? We have been obeying most of the ancestral rules of the clan, but we still face great danger despite good management. It's really difficult to survive like this. After being forced to the green cloud continent, not only has the Bima clan continued to grow without caution, the old ancestor had also intended to show his splendor. He has always been a wise man, so I have no idea why he would do something like that this time. The Eighth Lord shook his head. Then where are we going? Southern viewing continent. Forget about central continent. If they knew about our situation, we would be ridiculed further. The Eighth Lord remained calm as he relayed his plan. Then the future of the Bima aristocrat clan rests on Eighth Lord's hands said the middle-aged man softly. The Eighth Lord's frowns were slowly emerging on his forehead as he continued to remain silent after that. The martial warriors of the Green Cloud Continent had been discussing the incident with the Bima aristocrat clan for days. It was considered a serious matter, as everyone knew that the Green Cloud Continent was the weakest continent in the world of the Nine Continents. Any powerful aristocrat clan from other continents could easily conquer the entire Green Cloud continent by claiming the top position. However, they would not gain any benefits by doing so, unless they were forced out by their own continent with nowhere else to go. The supreme sects in the Green Cloud continent feared the supreme aristocratic clans from the other continents the most. In most cases, that would mean bad news, because if they were to step into their city, the most likely casualties of the invasion would be themselves. Heavenly Palace's abrupt rise in power was good news for the Green Cloud Continent. If the Heavenly Palace continued to show their capability in holding their position in the Green Cloud Continent, then the powerful clans from other continents would think twice about causing a fuss here. At the very least, the supreme aristocratic clans would finally take notice of the green cloud continent if they were to travel to the other continents. Each time some clan from the central continent stepped into the green cloud continent, the locals would become timid in fear that they would conquer their land due to their reputation for hosting powerful martial warriors in the central continent. If someone from the green cloud continent were to step into the central continent, however, no one would bat an eye, because martial warriors in Green Cloud Continent were generally weak. Despite the animated discussion about the clans and continents among the public, the King Clan, on the other hand, was in a celebratory mood as the atmosphere was bubbling with cheerfulness and lively noises. Even though King Shui was putting up a smile on his face, there was something else that had been bothering him even before the Bima aristocrat clan had arrived to start a fight. That something had to do with Dai Chen. A few days ago, Dai Chen told him that she was going to leave the King clan soon after the matters with the Bima aristocrat clan had been settled. Now that the battle had ended, she would be leaving soon but he didn't know exactly when that would happen. After lunch, King Shui quickly pulled Dai Chen by her hand and brought her out from the dining hall. 
She allowed him to do so while laughing at how nervous he was. Despite his tense gesture, she felt touched knowing how concerned he was about losing her. Before the Bima aristocrat clan had arrived to the Green Cloud continent, he wasn't all that jittery like he was now. She felt happy to know how much she meant to him now. I think it's time you should tell your beloved husband where you are planning to go. He sounded serious, but it wouldn't be King Shui if he didn't tease Dai Chen once in a while. Do you remember the master I told you before? She was also the previous Misty Hall Palace priestess. Dai Chen let out a smile. She didn't comment further on the husband part. Him. You did mention it before. Is she still alive? King Shui looked at Dai Chen shockingly. Yes. I'm leaving to meet my master this time. I will be training under her guidance for another few years. Dai Chen explained without haste. Chen, er, I have confidence that I can make you stronger than ever. Said King Shui gently as he gazed into Dai Chen's eyes. King Shui, listen to me. The technique I'm learning requires a breakthrough. I will be back soon after I achieve a my purpose. After that we'll be together again. Dai Chen said in a soft tone while lowering her head slightly. King Shui's heart jolted, which prompted him to hug her and began to kiss her red lips passionately. Dai Chen slowly reciprocated his kiss, probably because she would have to part with him soon. King Shui continued to embrace her while sliding his hands down her voluptuous body. As he was caught in the moment, he slid his hands upwards and grabbed her sensuous breasts. The smoothness and supple sensation had King Shui quivering with excitement. Dai Chen trembled from his touch, but did not attempt to stop him from continuing. She embraced him by his neck gently and moved her lips towards his ears, allowing him to kiss her neck. Then she whispered, Don't push your luck. All right, I'll listen to you. King Shui chuckled while giving her breasts the final gentle squeeze. This sensation was just like how he remembered from the time in the dream among the sea of flowers with Dai Chen. He could smell a whiff of sweet fragrance as he kissed her jade-like skin of her neck. King Shui could drown himself in the fragrance despite the subtle aroma. The scent was captivating and enticing to his senses, as if it was the best scent in the world. Chen, er, should I send you off by then? King Shui asked with a genuine smile. Master will come and pick me up, so don't worry. She has been treating me like her own daughter, so if she sought to cause me harm, she wouldn't have to wait until a decade later to do that to me. Even though King Shui was still skeptical about her master, he gave an assuring nod to Dai Chen. He vowed to meet her so-called master one day and make sure that Dai Chen would be safe no matter what. Chapter 804. Black Ember Flower, 10,000 Year Cold Ice. King Shui went back into the dining room with Dai Chen after the conversation ended. He decided to spend the next few days with her after knowing that she would be leaving in another two or three days. In the late afternoon, King Shui returned to his room and entered the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. The matters with the Bima aristocrat clan had already been settled. King Shui clearly knew that the remaining members of the Bima aristocrat clan would flee to other continents after the defeat of their old ancestor. He did not plan on completely annihilating their entire clan because they wouldn't be able to regain their prior level of power for another 500 years, if at all. For the rest of the week, he planned on making the preparations to refine batches of medicinal pills, stabilizing his own cultivation realm and guiding the members of the King Clan to further develop their powers. He excitedly looked at the score of interspatial silk sachets he had salvaged from the battle with the Bima aristocrat clan. At this rate, almost everyone in the King clan would have an interspatial silk sachet of his own. 
The interspatial silk sachet was almost exclusively a privilege of martial saints. Almost every martial saint in the wood possessed the incredibly resourceful item after breaking through to that level. When King Shui saw the numerous sachets in front of him, he had a feeling that every sachet would contain at least one item of value. At that point, he was overjoyed, as if he had unexpectedly struck a gold mine. A interspatial silk sachet could actually be used by any Xianxian martial warrior because the sachet didn't have any spiritual sense-based security methods to prevent others from utilizing it, it was solely made for the purpose of storing items. King Shui then picked up one of the interspatial silk sachets at random. As he opened the sachet, he could see mostly items of silver and gold, as well as a large amount of money. This was normal, he thought. Human beings would bring money with them wherever they went, regardless of whether they were martial warriors or commoners. There was also a fresh set of clothings and a bunch of bottled medicines that could heal wounds and aid in cultivation. In addition to that, there was also a collection of ores, and an uncountable number of minuscule items that seemed worthless in King Shui's eyes. The next few interspatial silk sachets were similar to the first one, but King Shui did find a set of interesting medicinal ingredients that were pre-arranged to form some sort of alchemical recipe. King Shui noted the set of ingredients inside his mind quietly with his eyes closed. He tried to analyze a variety of combinations with these ingredients and the end result that each combination would yield. If he theorized one combination would be a failure, then he would move on to the next combination. Luckily, there weren't many ingredients to begin with, so he was able to quickly pin down a set of probable combinations. After an hour, King Shui slowly opened his eyes. He ended up with a combination leading to an invigorative medicinal pill. King Shui took another glance into the silk sachet that contained dozens of valuable ingredients, all around 5,000 years old. After an hour of combining the ingredients together in his head, he had ended up with a medicinal pill with an invigorative ability, most likely in terms of temporarily boosting one's spiritual sense or energy. Despite the high possibility of said combination, it might be a different story once he actually began refining the pill. The chances of failure might be high too, even if he had already deduced that it was most probable combination of the ingredients. Moreover, he only had one set of ingredients, which meant that there wouldn't be another chance to refine the pill again if the first attempt failed. He kept the ingredients aside for now and continued to search the rest of the sachets. The remaining ones contained a bunch of useful items as well, like the cores, bones, muscles and skins of various demonic beasts. These items were considered some of the most valuable items found in the world of the nine continents. The cores and bones of the demonic beasts could be used to both refine medicines and forge equipment. The meat of demonic beasts was known to be savory and the skin of demonic beasts could be used to refine a type of battle armor, but for King Shui, he had been using it instead to draw talismans. Unfortunately, the skins were not from demonic beasts of the martial saint level, so he discarded them immediately. He probably could have sold them for money, but money was of no concern to him for now. And then, in the corner of his eyes, he saw two black ember flowers inside one of the sachets. King Shui exclaimed in surprise when he saw the two black flowers. He actually didn't expect the old men from the Baima aristocrat clan to possess the black ember flowers that he had been searching everywhere for a long time. Finally, he had obtained another ingredient for the Ren Meridian strengthening pellet. All he needed next were a few strange ingredients that, nonetheless, would still be nearly impossible to find on his own. If he could find the remaining four ingredients, 5,000 years 5 key sun grass, 5,000 years sky penetrating grass, 
eight immortals grass, and ice water of five thousand years, he would be able to proceed with the refinement of the Ren Meridian strengthening pellet. The recipe for the Du Meridian strengthening pellet was almost completed. King Shui had a feeling that there was an indescribable relationship between the Ren Meridian strengthening pellet and the Du Meridian strengthening pellet, but he couldn't figure out why for now. He had uncovered a lot of items from the silk sachets, but they were mostly quite uninteresting to look at. After he had rummaged through most of the sachets, he was left with the last three. King Shui didn't have high hopes for the remaining three as there wasn't anything different about them. Even though the black ember flowers were not incredibly valuable, they were enough to worth the effort of salvaging the silk sachets. In addition, he had also received quite an amount of medicinal ingredients that were about 3,000 to 5,000 years of age. Overall, the rewards were useful and good enough. Lo and behold, something worthwhile appeared, alchemy recipes. King Shui uncovered two alchemy recipes from the next silk sachet. He was delighted to see new recipes, as he hadn't found one in quite a long time. King Shui was almost jittering in excitement when he saw not only one, but two alchemy recipes stacked on top of each other. Skin tempering pellet alchemy recipe. Bone tempering pellet alchemy recipe. There wasn't a huge reaction on King Shui's face when he read the names of the recipes. These two recipes could strengthen his physical body, but he wasn't quite sure whether or not these medicines would prove to be effective for him. Skin Tempering Pellet Alchemy Recipe Diamond Fruit Endurance Pellet Five Elements Earth Fruit Muscles and Bones of a Martial Saint Demonic Beast the core of a martial saint demonic beast, and 3,000 years silvermoon grass. The skin tempering pellet could strengthen the tenacity of the consumer's skin by an abnormal amount, to the point that the skin would be impenetrable even with the sharpest sword or blade. The skin would be resistant to the corrosion of most poison as well. The pellet could only be consumed once a month, but no limitations were imposed to how many one could consume in a lifetime. King Shui began to feel a little bit excited. The recipe wasn't disappointing as it was specifically made to strengthen the tenacity of the skin, not the hardness of the skin. The bone tempering pellet might be closely related to the skin tempering pellet, so King Shui quickly read the next recipe. Bone tempering pellet alchemy recipe Diamond fruit, endurance pellet, five elements earth fruit, muscles from a martial saint demonic beast, bones from a peak martial saint demonic beast, blood from a peak martial saint demonic beast, the core from a peak martial saint demonic beast, and five thousand years snake bone herb. The bone tempering pellet could strengthen the intensity of the consumer's bones, allowing the bones to become rigid like metal. The tenacity of the bones would be increased as well, enabling the user to endure powerful external impacting forces. The pellet could be consumed once per month, and no limitations were imposed on how many one could consume in a lifetime. King Shui knew that both of the pellets were from the same category by observing the two alchemy recipes. The recipe for the skin tempering pellet required medicinal herbs that were mostly similar to those required for the bone tempering pellet. The bone tempering pellet, however, required ingredients of slightly higher quality, which made the bone tempering pellet a little bit superior to the skin tempering pellet. King Shui put away the alchemy recipes with a gleeful heart. He could refine both the skin tempering pellet and bone tempering pellet right away, because the ingredients required were all available inside the realm of the violet jade immortal. Unfortunately, the 3000 years silvermoon grass and the 5000 years snake bone herb were limited, so he might only be able to refine a handful of medicinal pills from one refining session. However, the bone tempering pellet could only be consumed once per month, 
so they could last King Shui for half a year. Both the skin tempering pellet and the bone tempering pellet seemed quite decent based on the value of the ingredients required. These ingredients were the muscles and bones from Martial Saint and Peak Martial Saint demonic beasts, the five elements earth fruit, as well as 3,000 years and 5,000 years medicinal herbs. He was able to get his hands on these two alchemy recipes that required ingredients that were already available in the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. The chances of this encounter were actually quite slim. The supreme aristocratic clans would probably have no problem concocting these medicinal pills right away. After all, they'd likely have an abundance of ingredients in their storages to make available. King Shui put the sachet down and picked up the last remaining sachet. When he saw the contents of the silk sachet, he knew this sachet had belonged to the late old ancestor of the Baima aristocrat clan. The space inside the silk sachet was quite vast, containing bountiful amounts of medicinal herbs, medicinal pills, ores, and other uncommon items. King Shui, however, was captivated by one particular object inside the sachet. A box. It was strange to see such an item that was commonly found inside a deity shrine, rather than some old man's interspatial silk sachet. King Shui was stunned. How was the old ancestor of the Baima aristocrat clan able to possess a box like this? He then laughed at his own inquiry. Not everyone who was able to retrieve such a box would be able to meet a deity of their own accord. Did he have some kind of rare treasure that could ignore any kind of suppressive forces? Or had he inherited the treasure from his ancestors? After pondering for a while, he pulled out the box from the sachet. He wanted to know whether the item inside the box was still there. The box was moderately sized. King Shui opened the box slowly with with a bit of anticipation. The items from the deity should be worth a fortune. 10,000 years cold ice. The azure blue ice stupefied King Shui. This was one of the magnificent items that he had spent a very long time looking for. The cold ice of more than 5,000 years had finally appeared in his hands. Despite being called an ice, the heat from sun and ordinary fire could never melt it. Only flames of abnormally high temperature would be able to melt the ice into puddles of water. The 10,000-year cold ice was approximately a cubic foot in size. On the side of the cold ice was a rolled portrait that King Shui was able to recognize in one glance. Another portrait of beauty. To be honest, King Shui was quite curious about the portraits of beauty. He had seen a lot of exceptionally beautiful women in his lifetime. Those who could be portrayed on the portraits of beauty were women of outstanding quality. He wanted to see who it was, but this time, he was genuinely curious, not because he wanted to gain anything from it. King Shui stopped himself before he delved into his thoughts too much. He took the rolled-up portrait and slowly opened it up. What he saw stunned him for a few moments. The woman in the portrait was wearing an azure blue dress. Her appearance was quite captivating, with firm bosoms that could excite any man protruding from her slender body. She seemed sultry and mature as she stood in the portrait with a posture of elegance and gracefulness. It was Lady Duanmu. Her aura of beauty was incomparable, and she would only have such an aura after experiencing various things in her lifetime. She was, in his opinion, a real woman. She was the woman in the portrait of beauty. King Shui didn't find this surprising as Lady Duanmu possessed both the appearance and demeanor of a true beauty. However, King Shui was in still disbelief. Because had he already had an intimate interaction with Lady Duanmu after knowing her for quite a while. There were currently six women King Shui personally knew who had appeared in the portraits of beauty. His wife Kang Hai Mingyu, his wife in name Ye Zhang, 
his sworn confidants Dai Chen and Wenren Wushuang, Hai Dongqing, who was currently in Cold Ice City, and Dai Qing, who seemed to have feelings for him. And now the seventh portrait of beauty was a woman he clearly knew, Lady Duanmu, Yu Ruyin. King Shui was perplexed by the discovery of this portrait of beauty. It seemed as if every woman who had appeared in the portraits of beauty would stir up some sort of relationship with King Shui. He recalled everything that had happened, and how these women were all connected to him in a way he didn't expect. Things had happened naturally, as if it had all been fated. Perhaps he was fated to have these women all for himself. King Shui was shocked by his own thoughts. But then, he recalled what Dai Chen had said to him before, King, Er likes you very much. I don't mind if you like King, Er too. Hai Dongqing, Lady Duanmu. King Shui remained dumbfounded for a good minute as he stared at the seventh portrait of beauty. That familiar appearance had been imprinted into his mind and circulated in his thoughts. She felt so near, yet so far. Behind the portrait were words that stated there were twelve portraits of beauty in total. He had already acquired seven of the portraits, but had the art maestro really painted twelve? The world of the nine continents was a vast place, but he had already acquired seven, more than half of the total. It was unbelievable, to be honest. Then, another thought ran through his mind. Did the portraits have anything to with his realm of the violet jade immortal? He cleared his mind quickly and started to cultivate the heart of rock quietly. Even though the matters with the Baima aristocrat clan were done, he remained steadfast in cultivating his technique without hesitation. As long as the rock spreading wings and the heart of rock could reach the large success stage, then his abilities would definitely reach a terrifying degree. Chapter 805, Heart of Rock at the Small Success Stage Heart of Rock. King Shui felt that he was just a little bit away from reaching the small success stage, but it was just hard to make a breakthrough and he felt quite depressed about this. When it was with the rock spreading wings, it was still considered easy, but this Heart of Rock was much more difficult. However, he felt that the rock combat skills that would follow next might be even more difficult. To a certain degree, having difficulty was a good thing. Amongst battle techniques, powerful techniques were not something which one could succeed in easily. Therefore, this was considered normal. Rock spreading wings, took him about five to six months to reach the small success stage, but it seemed like it would take him seven to eight months to reach the small success stage for the Heart of Rock. And this time around, King Shui felt that he was almost there. He should be able to reach the small success stage for the Heart of Rock in at most one day. He was full of anticipation for this moment's arrival. The prowess of the primordial flame balls which was going to be two times stronger than before was not something which could be undermined. That killing prowess could almost be a match for the five-colored poison. Feeling tired, King Shui decided to take a small break before refining medicinal pills. He had the alchemy recipes for the bone tempering pellet and skin tempering pellet and he had medicinal herbs on hand as well. Therefore, King Shui decided to give them a go. King Shui first sorted out the medicinal herbs before preparing them for easy access later. All medicinal herbs needed to be refined beforehand, otherwise, it would be more troublesome later and the success rate would also be lower. Most people would first refine them into powder. King Shui added them in bit by bit in turn. He activated his spiritual sense to control the primordial flames which were now very powerful. He had a powerful spiritual sense, extremely precious golden flint iron cauldron and most importantly, the primordial flames. When refining demon, fire could even take up 50% of the importance of the project. Many people tended to fail because of the lack of control on the fire. 
King Shui was considered to be quite lucky. This process of refining took him one day. High-grade medicinal pills took an exceptional amount of time to refine. If not because of that, they would not have been so expensive. However, King Shui was not concerned since he had the realm of the violet jade immortal. When that crisp sharp voice rang out, King Shui came to a stop happily. Every time he performed alchemy, he would feel proud of his heaven-defying success rate. This was the difference. What that alchemists were the most proud of was to see whose success rate in alchemy was higher. The more precious the medicinal pills, the lower the success rate and the harder it was to refine them. Each failure in attempting to refine precious medicinal pills was a great loss, and this was also why precious medicinal pills were so expensive. There were times where there might not even be a single success attempt out of ten tries. After fifteen minutes, King Shui opened the golden flint iron cauldron and a faint scent was released. It was not an exceptionally nice scent, but gave people the feeling that one would not feel sick of it no matter how long they were exposed to it. There were twelve greenish-brown colored medicinal pills in the golden flint iron cauldron, each of them glittering and translucent. Without a second thought, King Shui popped one into his mouth, while storing the remaining pills into a porcelain bottle. Very quickly, he sensed that the skin throughout his body was tightening up. It was as if something was tugging it. At the start, it felt very comfortable, but eventually, although it did not feel uncomfortable, he had the feeling that his skin felt very tight and tensed. This feeling continued for one whole hour. King Shui looked at his skin and did not notice any tremendous changes to it. However, through his spiritual sense, he could tell that there was stronger vitality to his skin and it was slightly tougher as well. Hmm. There's still effect. King Shui was very happy. Although the effect was not great, it was better than having none at all. Moreover, it was something which could be accumulated. He could take one once a month and there were no other restrictions. King Shui then moved on to refining the bone tempering pellet. Similarly, he took one right on the spot. He noticed that the strength of his bones had really increased a little as compared to before. King Shui's bones were very strong to begin with but he had not expected to still be able to strengthen it more, even if it was just a little that it was almost insignificant. King Shui did not refine the divine awakening pellet. He merely spent the rest of his time on his cultivation, waiting in anticipation for his breakthrough. When King Shui left the realm of the violet jade immortal, it was just turning dark outside. A tempting fragrance of food welcomed him the moment he stepped out and he knew that they were in the midst of preparing dinner. King Shui saw Qing Qing coming out from the kitchen. In King Residence, cooking was not done by the servants, but all women with time on their hands would help out, even Yi A Jiang, Dai Chen and the others. That was why sometimes King Shui would help him out in the kitchen, taking the chance to also see what these beautiful ladies looked like in the kitchen. King Shui, sister, let me give you some things. King Shui smiled and passed the remaining skin tempering pellet and bone tempering pellet to Qing Qing. What are these? Qing Qing asked. Take one of each every month. King Shui smiled and said. It's for increasing your cultivation. King Shui then continued to say. The medicinal herbs for the skin tempering pellet and bone tempering pellet were extremely precious, but the martial arts that King Shui cultivated were the best ones to temper one's body and thus the effect taking these pills had on him were almost insignificant. If the ancient strengthening technique had reached the seventh heavenly layer, King Shui feel that these pills would not have any effect on him. This was why he had given all of them to Qing Qing. Although it would not have much effect on him, the same did not go for Qing Qing. King Shui let Qing Qing go back to her room and take one of each while he went into the kitchen.
It was still relatively early and it would probably still be about another hour before dinner was ready. Recently, King Clan had been having their dinner later. This was also why King Shui told Ching Ching to head back to her room first to take the pills. There was King Yi and King Shui's two aunts in the kitchen, as well as King Bei, Dai King, Dai Chen and Kanghai Mingyu. The rest of the people were in the hall, some playing with the kids while others were chatting. Brother Shui. On seeing King Shui, King Bei called out happily. When the others saw him, they told him to head to the hall. Usually, guys would not enter the kitchen. However, he just smiled and said, I'll make some food for the kids. King Shui stood between Kang Hai Mingyu and Dai Chen. What he was making was crabs. It was good for the kids to have more seafood. They'll grow to become more intelligent. Kang Hai Mingyu and Dai Chen stood beside him and watched as he prepared it. Kang Hai Mingyu knew that King Clan was making it for King Zun and Qin Yin. The other two kids were still too young and could not eat them yet. But no matter what King Shui made, he would always save a portion for Luan Luan and Yu Chang. To him, the two of them were also kids. Each of the crabs he was making now were the size of two palms, and just one of them was sufficient for the younger kids to be full. Even Luan Luan and Yu Chang would be almost full with that. Ming Yu, in the past, did King Shui cook a lot of good food for you? Dai King walked over and smiled, asking to Kang Hai Ming Yu. Him, that's right. Kang Hai Ming Yu smiled and said. Hearing this, King Shui knew that he needed to make more portions. Now, he only dotes on the kids. Whatever we want to eat, we'll have to make it ourselves. Dai King grinned, seeming as if there was no implied meaning behind her words. That's right. In the past, he doted on me the most. But now, I don't even know where I stand as his younger sister. King Bei pouted and said. King Shui rubbed his head and answered helplessly with a smile. Everyone will have a share tonight. That night, King Shui did not need to go back to the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. After playing with the kids for a while, everyone went back. The kids had dozed off and King Shui left together with Dai Chen. Aren't you going to sleep? Seeing that King Shui had entered her room, Dai Chen asked. I am. I've decided to sleep here tonight. King Shui said shamelessly. King Shui. Dai Chen chided softly. I know. Don't worry. I won't eat you up. King Shui carried Dai Chen and headed for the bedroom. Ah, you rascal. Dai Chen pounded King Shui angrily as a flush of red appeared on her face. This lady, who was like a goddess from the heavens, gave King Shui a great mental impact. Although he could not really have sex with her, he could at least enjoy the mental impact he could feel when he was together with her. King Shui hugged Dai Chen as he sat on her bed. The bed was soft and comfortable, pure white with not a trace of dust. The entire room had a faint fragrance which was similar to the fragrance on Dai Chen. You're not allowed to touch me. In the future, I'll be yours. Dai Chen said softly. Both King Shui and Dai Chen were wearing thin nightwear. Under the moonlight, her beautiful figure was fully displayed. King Shui hugged Dai Chen and said with affirmation, Is your husband someone who can't hold it in? When you don't agree to it, I won't make you do something that you don't want. It's not that I'm not willing to. Can you give me a little time? Dai Chen hugged King Shui lightly and said, So, you're willing to do it with me? King Shui grinned. You rascal. Would you only be satisfied to have me say such obscene stuff? Dai Chen pounded King Shui angrily. That's not true. I just want you to say it only to me. Chen Er, don't you think that saying it will make it sound special? Between the two of us, if you're still so restrained, won't we lose out a lot of fun? 
there won't be the fun feelings a couple share when they're together. King Shui smiled and flipped over to be on top of Dai Chen. The thin night wear was not able to hide the beautiful sensations between them. There's no good guys in this world. Even you're like this. Dai Chen was not angry but she just chided, feeling embarrassed. The next afternoon, a huge flying beast stopped above Heavenly Palace. Five-headed golden eagle. The golden eagle was about a hundred meters in size and a glittery gold. What was weird was that it had five glittery gold heads. It was a five-fate golden eagle. A demonic beast's head usually represented how many lives the beast had. The legendary nine-headed snake king and nine-headed divine bug were said to each have nine lives. However, this wasn't something that was absolute. Ordinary demonic beasts usually had only one head and they would die with just one attack. However, for those with multiple heads, one would need to smash all of them completely. Even if one was still around, the beast would not be killed. And demonic beasts with multiple heads tended to be especially strong and one could only start attacking them from the head. This was also why it was said that the number of heads represented how many lives the beast had. If a person had the absolute power to crush them all in one go, then the beast would have only just one life. King Shui was stumped. Dai Chen's master should have left her for quite a while. Was her cultivation not strong enough to bring Dai Chen back to Dai Clan? Or was it because Dai Chen must find a guy she likes to bring her back? King Shui, I'm heading off. Many people from King Clan came out. They all knew that Dai Chen had to leave temporarily.